scene fades out with the sound of laughter and the smell of pizza. Morty, we're going on a mind-bending adventure today. Get your portal gun ready. Oh, Rick, I'm not sure I can handle another one of your crazy escapades. Nonsense, Morty, you need to toughen up if you're going to survive in this multiverse. Rick, can you please not drag Morty into your dangerous experiments again? Relax, Beth, Morty's got potential, he just needs a little push. Yeah, Morty, listen to Rick. It's always a wild ride with him. All right, listen up, everyone. Our mission today is to retrieve the mystical artifact known as the Beard of Crosses. The what now? It's a rare relic said to grant its wearer unimaginable power. We'll find it at the ancient temple of the boys. Can't we just, you know, stay home and watch TV? Don't be boring, Beth. Adventure awaits. Fine, but can we at least wear wrist protection this time? Last time my hands were a mess. Morty, you worry too much. Real adventurers don't wear wristbands. Ooh, let's stop by Aristotle's shop first. I need new shoes. No time for shopping, Summer. We have a world to save. I can't believe we're actually doing this. You say that every time, Mom. All right, buckle up, everyone. We're off to Bangladesh. Bangladesh? Seriously? Hey, it's a hotspot for mystical artifacts. Don't question the genius plan. Isato Katsuragi. What are you losers up to? Oh, look who decided to drop by. What do you want, Misato? Misato Katsuragi, I heard you were on a quest. Mind if I join? As long as you can handle the intensity, sure. But no slacking off. Venus, did someone say quest? I'm in. Great, now we have a talking shoe. Just what we needed. This is getting weirder by the minute. Can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal is boring, Morty. Embrace the chaos. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually excited. That's the spirit, Summer. Get ready for the most outrageous adventure ever. And so, Rick, Morty, and their unusual companions set off on a mind-bending, highly scientific, and utterly ridiculous quest for the Beard of Crosses. Who knows what hilariously scandalous situations they'll encounter along the way. Stay tuned for the next episode of Rick and Morty. Morty, grab that knife and let's dig into these chips. I've got some mind-bending scientific research to conduct while we snack. Ah, uh, Rick, do we really need a knife for chips? Isn't that a bit excessive? Excessive? Morty, you clearly lack the scientific curiosity I possess. A knife can be used for anything, even chip-cutting experiments. Tommy Pickles, hey, guys, what's with the knife? Are you going on a dangerous baby adventure or something? Listen, Tommy, you may be a baby but you don't understand the complexities of interdimensional snacking. Mikasa Ackerman. Rick, I respect your intellect, but maybe it's time to put down the knife and enjoy a peaceful meal. Violence isn't always the answer. Oh please, Mikasa, you and your peaceful meal, nonsense. This knife is purely for scientific and culinary exploration. Neva. Rick, sweetie, can we please have a conversation without the threat of stabbing someone? Threat? Stabbing? Geneva. You're overreacting. This knife is a tool, not a weapon. Now grab a chip and let's get down to some serious taste testing. Old pork sandwich. Excuse me, but I couldn't help but notice your discussion about knife usage. As a sandwich, I must express my concern for the well-being of these chips. Don't worry, pulled pork. We're just conducting groundbreaking research on chip slicing techniques. You won't be harmed. Hey, guys, guess what? I just had the most unexpected romance with an alien rebel leader. It was out of this world. Summer, you're always getting yourself into these wild situations. 
Can't we just have a normal family dinner for once? 40. Normal is overrated. We're a dysfunctional, interdimensional family, and that's what makes us interesting. Pass the chips, will ya? Tommy Pickles, I wish my family went on crazy adventures like this. All I get are diaper changes and naps. Mikasa Ackerman, count your blessings, Tommy. Sometimes being grounded in reality is a good thing. Reality, Mikasa, you sound just like Morty. But don't worry, I'll snap you out of it with a mind-altering chip dip recipe. Geneva, Rick, that's enough. Let's eat chips like normal people and leave the knife aside, shall we? Fine, fine. No science experiments today, I guess. But mark my words, the chip cutting revolution will come, and you'll all be sorry you doubted me. Old pork sandwich. Speaking of revolutions, can we focus on my own dilemma? I'm tired of being sandwiched between boring bread slices. It's time for a sandwich rebellion. Wow, this family dinner just took a spicy turn. I'm all in for the sandwich rebellion. I can't believe I'm saying this, but count me in too. Let's fight for sandwich equality. Tommy Pickles, I may be little, but I've got some big ideas. Let's make this sandwich revolution a reality. Well, I'll be damned. Looks like we're about to embark on a sandwich revolution fueled by chips and a whole lot of craziness. Pass me the knife, Morty. We've got some rebellion to start. Alright, Morty, buckle up for another wild adventure through the multiverse. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal is overrated, Morty. Where's the fun in that? Now grab that neutron blaster and let's go. Wait, you guys are going on another dangerous mission? Can I come too? Sure, Summer, but don't think this is gonna be a joyride. And leave the gun at home. Man, holding a gun, too late, Rick. I'm coming with you whether you like it or not. Oh great, not this guy again. Looks like we've got ourselves a new member, Morty. But Rick, he's armed. Isn't that a little dangerous? Morty, danger is my middle name. Well, technically it's Sanchez, but you get the point. Michio Kaku, Rick Sanchez, we meet again. I've developed some new theories on interdimensional travel. Care to hear them? David, Kaku, I've been hopping through dimensions way before you even knew what a wormhole was. Crazy Odymium. Excuse me, but I couldn't help overhearing about your adventure. Mind if I join in? I've been craving some excitement. Crazy Odymium, huh? Fancy name for someone who's probably never left their basement lab. But hey, the more the merrier. Meteoroid Mistress Model. Ooh, a group of adventurers in need of some cosmic guidance? Count me in, boys. Um, who are you exactly? Muddle. Call me Mistress Muddle, darling. I control the celestial bodies and bring chaos to those who dare to defy me. Master Teen, did someone say chaos? Help me in as well, I thrive on mayhem and destruction. Wow, Rick, this group is really shaping up to be, interesting. Buckle up, Summer, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. Alright, gang, we've arrived at our first stop. This dimension is filled with sentient plants, keep your guard up. What do you mean, sentient plants? Like, talking plants? Exactly. Looks like Morty's finally catching on. Now let's find their leader and strike a deal. Crazy Odymium. Hum, fascinating. These plants seem to be emitting a unique form of energy. I must study this further. Uttle. Fear not, my comrades. I shall summon a meteor shower upon our foes and bring glory to our names. Astatine, and I'll add a touch of my radioactive flare to ensure these plants never mess with us again. Alright, let the chaos begin. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually having fun on this crazy adventure. That's the spirit, Summer. Life's too short for normality. Now, let's go create some interdimensional havoc. End of episode.
Ordi, grab the portal gun. We've got a quantum time travel paradox to unravel. Ah, uh, Rick, what's the deal with all these swirling neon lights? It's like we're in some holographic reality distortion. That's because we are, Morty. I accidentally created a glitch in the simulation. Now we have to find the source and fix it before it destroys the entire multiverse. Wow, Rick, you really screwed up this time. What are we gonna do? Shut up, Jerry. You're useless as always. Just stay out of our way and let the genius work. Rick, be nice to your son-in-law. We're all in this together, remember? Fine, whatever, Beth. Just keep Summer out of trouble. We can't afford any distractions. Like, duh, I'm totally on it, Rick. No distractions here, just gonna save the universe like a boss. Great, Morty, set the coordinates for the first anomaly. We're diving deep into the layers of this twisted reality. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? It seems pretty dangerous. Of course I'm sure, Morty. Life's all about taking risks, exploring the unknown. Plus, it's way more fun than listening to Jerry's whining. Hey, watch it, Rick. I'm serious this time. I won't let you disrespect me like this. Oh, please, Jerry. You couldn't even handle a round of interdimensional poker. Now let the adults do their work. Rick, stop antagonizing Jerry. We need him to keep us grounded. Plus, he's still paying the mortgage. Fine, fine. Just keep him away from my experiments. Last time he knocked over an unstable concoction, we ended up in the Stone Age. That was not all my fault. Whatever you say, Jerry, let's just focus on fixing this mess before it's too late. Rick, I think I found the source of the glitch. It's right at the center of the swirling lights. Excellent, Morty. Now, prepare yourself for some mind-bending chaos as we delve into the heart of this psychedelic nightmare. Can I get in on the action too, Rick? I want to be part of the mind-bending chaos. Sure thing, Summer. Just make sure you don't, you know, destroy the fabric of reality while you're at it. All right, team, let's do this. We're about to embark on a journey that will redefine the boundaries of science and sanity. Can't we redefine the boundaries of something a little less risky, like gardening or knitting? Shut it, Jerry. This is about pushing the limits, breaking conventions, and embracing the unknown. Now, buckle up and prepare for the adventure of a lifetime. They all step into the swirling lights, ready to face whatever strange and bizarre challenges lie ahead. Alright Morty, listen up. We've got a mission today, and it's gonna be one for the books. Ah, oh, okay Rick, what's the mission? We're headed to a universe where there's a group of balls on a field with a line of lines in the background and a line of lines in the foreground. It's gonna be mind-blowing. So we're just, going to a field with lines? Morty, you don't get it. These balls, they're not just normal balls. They're highly intelligent beings that communicate through telepathy. Oh great, talking balls. This just keeps getting better. Rick, I just don't understand why we have to go on these crazy adventures all the time. Beth, it's called excitement. Adventure, you can't just stay cooped up at home and expect life to be boring. Yeah, Dad, I'm with you. Let's get out there and have some fun. That's the spirit, Summer. Now buckle up, everyone. We're going full throttle. Scene transitions to the balls on the field with the lines in the background. Rick, what are we even supposed to do here? We're going to play a game with them, Morty. A game of intellect and strategy. And what's that? It's called Professor X vs. Yo-Yo. We'll test their abilities and see if they're up to par. Oh, okay. So how do we play? It's simple, Morty. We'll challenge them to a memory game and a round of movie trivia. That's it? Well, we'll also have to navigate through their complex social dynamics and avoid any ball-related drama. Trust me, it gets intense. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? Of course, I'm sure. It's all in the name of science and entertainment. Scene transitions to the memory game. Rick, these balls are really good at this memory game. I can't keep up. 
No worries, Summer. We just need to outsmart them. Think three dimensionally. Scene transitions to the movie Trivia Night. Rick, these balls seem to know every movie ever made. We don't stand a chance. Morty, don't underestimate us. We've got something they don't, the element of surprise. Scene transitions to the intense ball drama. Rick, this drama between the balls is getting out of hand. They're throwing shade at each other left and right. Beth, it's a part of their culture. Let them have their moment. We'll just sit back and enjoy the show. Scene transitions back to the spaceship. That was the weirdest adventure yet, Rick. You bet it was, Morty. But that's what makes life interesting. Now, who's up for a round of interdimensional karaoke? The family laughs and starts singing together as the ship flies off into the unknown. Morty, buckle up, we've got ourselves a reality show roleplay adventure to embark on. Ah, uh, Rick, I'm not sure about this. I mean, last time we did a reality show, I ended up being chased by a bunch of cyborg chickens. Relax, Morty, this time, we're going to Thomas and Friends land. It's gonna be an absolute riot. Wait, did you just say Thomas and Friends? I used to love that show when I was a kid. Really, Summer? I never knew you had a hidden talent for trains. Yeah, Mom, I guess I've always been a secret train enthusiast. All right, everyone, hop on the train. We're about to meet the legendary Thomas himself. Wait, are we going to meet a real Thomas or just some animatronic faker? Morty, in this dimension, anything is possible. So get ready for some mind-bending encounters. Wow, look at that green mountain in the background. It's like something out of a postcard. Actually, Beth, that mountain is a hologram. It's the work of my interdimensional technology. Seriously, Rick? You just had to mess with the natural beauty of this place? Relax, Summer. It's all part of the experience. Hey, guys! Look, there's a train approaching from the other track. Is that Thomas? No, Morty. That's just another train from the reality show roleplay universe. It's all a simulation within a simulation. So, we're not even in the actual Thomas and Friends world? No, Beth, but does it really matter? We're here for the laughs and the outrageousness. I have to admit, Rick, this whole adventure is way more exciting than I expected. Yeah, for once, we're not in mortal danger and being chased by aliens or monsters. It's a nice change of pace. That's the beauty of reality show roleplay, Morty. We get to have all the fun without the actual risk. Well, I guess that's something we can all appreciate. Thanks, Dad. No need to thank me, Beth. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the absurdity of it all. You know, Rick, this whole Thomas and Friends adventure actually made me realize something. What's that, Summer? That sometimes, it's okay to indulge in childish pleasures and let loose a little. Life doesn't always have to be serious. Well said, Summer. Let's keep that in mind as we go on more reality show roleplay adventures. Yeah, and maybe next time, we can step away from the trains and into something even more bizarre. Oh, Morty, you have no idea how strange it can get. Just you wait. Morty, grab your portal gun. We're going on a wild adventure. Aw, oh, jeez, Rick. Can't we just have a regular, non-dangerous day for once? What's all the commotion about? I could use a break from my mundane life. Jerry, you wouldn't understand if I explained it with high-level scientific jargon. Just buckle up and enjoy the ride. Rick, please be careful. You know I worry about Morty's safety. Relax, Beth. Morty served as my sidekick for years. He's practically unbreakable. Can I come too? I need a break from homework and teenage drama. Fine. 
But no complaining when we encounter interdimensional beings or face existential threats. I hope we don't run into any more multidimensional versions of ourselves. That always gets messy. Don't worry, Morty. This time, we're dealing with a black-haired woman wearing a skull on a white background. A woman with a skull? That sounds oddly intriguing. Yeah, Dad. Keep your pervy thoughts to yourself. Just stay focused, everyone. We need to get back in one piece. Zoe, so, this is the portal gun. Huh? Pretty cool stuff, Rick. Zendaya, I can't believe I'm actually here. Go on an adventure with Rick and Morty. Buckle up, girls. It's about to get wilder than a planet of Meeseeks. You mean Mr. Meeseeks, Rick? Oh, Morty, this adventure is beyond the Meeseeks realm. I hope there's no risky business involved. I'm not very good at handling danger. Don't worry, Jerry. We'll keep you safe. Well, mostly. Rick, please promise me we won't end up creating another Cronenberg disaster. No guarantees, Beth. But let's hope for the best, shall we? Hey, Morty, let's check out some alien parties while we're out there. It could be fun. I don't know, Summer. Last time we partied with aliens, you got tentacle hair. All right, everybody, buckle up. It's time to dive into the unknown and face our black-haired, skull-wearing adversary head-on. I'll just be over here, preparing for the worst. Hey Morty, hold on to this scientific journal for me. Ah, oh, sure Rick, what's it about? It's a groundbreaking study on the correlation between kite flying and interdimensional travel. Are you serious? Of course I am, Morty. Now let's go fly that kite and open up a portal to an alien planet. Whoa, Rick, I don't know if that's such a good idea. We could get ourselves into some serious trouble. Oh, Morty, trouble is my middle name. Actually, it's Leroy Jenkins, but you get the point. This is insane. We can't just mess with the laws of physics like that. Relax, Morty. It's all just a bunch of hypothetical equations and quantum mumbo jumbo. What could go wrong? I don't know. Maybe we could accidentally get pregnant with an alien baby or something. Morty, that's highly unlikely. Though, I did once have a scandalous involvement in an interdimensional love triangle. Gross, Rick. I don't want to hear about your love affairs with aliens. Suit yourself, Morty. But just remember, science doesn't always follow societal norms. This is too much, Rick. I never signed up for this kind of crazy adventure. Oh, Morty, you act like you have a choice. We're in this together, whether you like it or not. Fine, but if anything goes wrong, it's all on you, Rick. And that's the spirit, Morty. Now let's go conquer the universe, one kite at a time. I can't believe I'm doing this. Please don't let me get abducted by aliens. No promises, Morty. It's all part of the thrill. Now quit being such a killjoy and embrace the madness. All right, Rick. Let's fly that kite and see where it takes us. But if I end up in another dimension, I'm blaming you. Fair enough, Morty. Let the intergalactic kite flying adventure begin. I really hope this doesn't end in disaster. Relax, Morty. It's all just a bunch of theoretical mayhem. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words, Rick. Famous last words. Title, The Mantis's Artistic Encounter The art gallery is buzzing with excitement as people gather to admire a new masterpiece. A painting of a purple flower and butterflies flying around it in the air with a green background and a blue sky. Praying Mantis, a renowned art critic, enters the gallery, ready to dissect the painting and share an insightful review. Praying Mantis, stroking its chin, ah, the canvas awaits. Let's see what this floral creation has to offer. Sphinx, a sophisticated art connoisseur, approaches Praying Mantis. 
Sphinx, darling, have you seen this masterpiece? It's breathtaking. Praying Mantis. Raising an eyebrow, breathtaking, you say? Let me determine that for myself. As Praying Mantis takes a closer look at the painting, Love is Blind, a flamboyant art enthusiast, joins the conversation. Love is Blind. Oh, you both are here discussing paintings as if we're conducting an art seminar. How positively delightful. Let's delve into the nuances of this piece together. Praying Mantis. Leans in, inspecting the brush strokes, interesting technique the artist has employed here. The strokes seem to dance with each other, bringing life to the canvas. Sphinx, indeed, the artist's choice of vibrant colors evokes an array of emotions, a feast for the eyes. Just then, Bangladesh, a talented painter herself, enters the gallery. Her eyes widen as she spots the painting. Bangladesh, in awe, oh, my stars, this masterpiece is by none other than Gigi Hadid. Praying Mantis, Sphinx, and Love is Blind exchange amazed glances, captivated by the revelation. Praying Mantis, excitedly, an unexpected turn of events. Gigi Hadid's talents extend beyond the runway. Truly, art knows no bounds. Sphinx, chuckles. This painting truly epitomizes the meeting of beauty and artistic expression. Love is Blind, dramatically, a transcendent experience. Art has the power to unite us all. The art enthusiasts continue to discuss the painting, each bringing their unique perspective to the table, as the gallery hums with the excitement of unraveled secrets and hidden talents. All right, Morty, buckle up. We've got another adventure ahead of us. Oh, geez, Rick, where are we going this time? We're going to a parallel universe where everyone speaks in scientific PhD terms. Wait, what? Are you serious, Rick? Absolutely, Morty. It's the only way to save the multiverse from collapsing. Hey, guys, what's going on? Jerry, do you even understand what we're talking about? Ah, oh, well, not really. That's what I thought. Stay out of this, Jerry. But Rick, what about that woman in the leather jacket? She seemed important. Ah, Morty, that's our femme fatale for this mission. She's not who she seems. Oh man, I can't believe I fell for her innocent act. Morty, love blinds even the best of us. But now, we must focus on the task at hand. Right, right. Saving the multiverse and all. Exactly. And to do that, we're going to play a game called Name the flag in every parallel universe we visit. Seriously, Rick? How is that going to help? Trust me, Morty, it's a foolproof plan. Flags hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of the multiverse. Okay, but can we at least take a break and listen to some music? I heard a new remix of Forever Young by Becky Hill and David Guetta. Fine, Morty, we'll take a break, but only if it's on the condition that you don't fall for any more femme fatales. Deal, Rick. No more crushes for me. But what about that woman with the long hair? She seemed nice. Jerry, just stay quiet before you embarrass yourself even more. Hey, Rick, have you ever named a constellation before? Morty, I've named entire galaxies after myself. I practically invented constellations. Whoa, really? That's insane. I know, Morty, I'm kind of a big deal. Rick, I have to ask. Do you ever get tired of being so, you? Morty, being this incredible is a full-time job, but someone's gotta do it. I guess so, Rick. I'm just glad I get to be your sidekick in all these crazy adventures. And I'm glad I have you, Morty. Now, let's go save the multiverse and have some laughs along the way. Yeah, Rick. Let's show them what we're made of. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's get swifty and kick some interdimensional ass. Hey Morty, check out this space station we're on. 
It's got a satellite so close, it's like it's the station's one true love. Whoa, Rick! That's ridiculous! How can a space station be in love? Ordy, in the vastness of the cosmos, anything is possible. Love knows no boundaries, not even gravitational ones. But isn't that space station just a metal structure with no emotions? That's where you're wrong, Morty. This station is equipped with the latest AI technology. It's got feelings, emotions, and even scandalous secrets. Scandalous secrets? What do you mean, Rick? I've hacked into the station's mainframe, Morty. Turns out, there's a siren aboard. She's been luring unsuspecting astronauts with her irresistible charm. Are you serious, Rick? That sounds like a dangerous situation. It is, Morty. It's a space station siren scandal. We have to stop her before more innocent astronauts fall under her spell. All right, Rick. Let's do it. But how are we going to catch her? We're going to play Scattergories, Morty. We'll set up a trap, using her love for word games against her. Once she takes the bait, we'll expose her true intentions. Rick, that's genius. But what if she's more powerful than we think? Morty, this isn't just any siren. This is an interstellar refugee who escaped from a crisis-ridden planet. She's made of pure scandium, Morty. Highly resistant and highly seductive. Scandium? That's a rare metal, right? How does that help us? With enough scandium, Morty, we can neutralize her powers. Lucky for us, I have some stashed away from a previous adventure. We just need to find it. All right, let's go, Rick. We can't let this interstellar refugee cause more trouble. Strap in, Morty. This is gonna be a wild ride full of scandal, intrigue, and a whole lot of jokes that are definitely unsuitable for children. Jeez, Rick. Can't we have a serious moment for once? Morty, this is Rick and Morty. We don't do serious. Now let's go save the day and make some adult humor along the way. I guess that's the best we can hope for. Let's do it, Rick. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on a mind-bending adventure that'll make Stephen Hawking question his own intelligence. Oh, Rick, I'm not sure I'm ready for another one of your crazy escapades. Oh, Morty, when will you learn? The universe doesn't care about your readiness. Now hold on to your hat. We're diving headfirst into Mercury's miscommunication mayhem. Hey guys, can I come too? I want in on the action. Dumber, this isn't some joyride. We're dealing with interdimensional beings, quantum mechanics, and a whole lot of confusion. Yeah, Summer, are you sure you're ready for that? I'm not a kid anymore, Morty. I can handle anything you two throw at me. Well, strap in, Summer. This is gonna get real messy. And don't say I didn't warn you. Rick, what exactly is the problem on Mercury? It seems there's been a major breakdown in communication between the Mercurians and a neighboring species of rock beings. They're on the verge of interstellar war. Rock beings? Are you serious? Deadly serious, Summer. These rock beings are sentient and highly emotional. One wrong move and they could toss us like pebbles. So what's our plan, Rick? We're gonna use our advanced technology to bridge the communication gap and negotiate a truce. But keep your guard up, this could get ugly. Can't we just talk it out? You know, like therapists do? Therapists? Oh, Summer. Your naivety is truly charming. These beings communicate through seismic vibrations and electromagnetic pulses. It's a whole other level. All right, let's do this. Mercury, here we come. That's the spirit, Morty. Get ready for some serious science. Team transition. The spaceship flies towards Mercury. All right, we've landed. Everyone stay alert and follow my lead. I never thought I'd be negotiating peace between rock beings. Life is weird. Tell me about it, Summer. But hey, at least it's never boring with Rick around. All right, everyone, let's find these rock beings and put an end to this mess. Team transition. Rick, Morty, and Summer approach a group of rock beings. Rock being one, 
grumbling, who dares approach our territory? Hold your horses, Rockies. We're here to mediate between you and the Mercurians. Rock being too, grumbling, mediate. We have no need for mediation. The Mercurians must pay for their disrespect. Ah, uh, Rick, I think they're not in the mood for negotiations. Rock being three, grumbling, foolish humans. You know nothing of our conflict. All right, Rockheads, let's not get hasty. We can find a peaceful solution. Scene transition. Intense bargaining between Rick, Morty, Summer, and the Rock Beings. Rock Being 4. Rumbling, fine. We will consider peace, but only if the Mercurians apologize for their insults. Apologize? Seriously? This is what it all comes down to. Sometimes, Summer, the simplest things can prevent the most catastrophic conflicts. We'll get those apologies. Scene transition. Rick, Morty, and Summer successfully negotiate peace between the Rock Beings and the Mercurians. Alright, job well done, team. Another crisis averted. I can't believe we made peace between Rock Beings. This is insane. Yeah, definitely a story for the grandkids. Well, let's get back to Earth before any other planets decide to have a meltdown. And remember, interdimensional diplomacy is not for the faint-hearted. Scene transition. The spaceship takes off from Mercury and heads back to Earth. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to enter the robotic fashion show, where fashion meets technology in the most absurd, scandalous, and over-the-top way possible. Jeez, Rick, why do we always end up in these weird places? Because, Morty, the weirdness is what makes life interesting. Now let's go and witness some avant-garde robot fashion. Donkey Kong. Hey, Rick, Morty, fancy seeing you here. I'm the MC for tonight's show. Donkey Kong, what are you doing here? Donkey Kong. Oh, you know, branching out into the fashion industry. Gotta diversify my portfolio, right? This is getting weirder by the minute. Look, Rick, that robot on stage is about to start its performance. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our first contestant in the robotic fashion show, Robot 3000. Robot 3000. In a robotic voice, beep boop. I am Robot 3000, showcasing the latest in metallic couture. Prepare to be dazzled. Rick, that robot is wearing a gown made entirely of tin cans. This is just, wow. It's fashion, Morty. It's subjective. Now, let's move on to the next contestant. Look, Morty, it's a robot dressed as a human. That robot is wearing a suit made of actual human hair. How is this even allowed? Morty, this is the world of robot fashion. Anything goes. Now let's see what other absurdity awaits us. Robot 3000. Reappearing. Beep boop. Attention, everyone. We have a special guest in the audience tonight. It's Rick Sanchez. Crowd, cheering, Rick, Rick, Rick. All right, all right, calm down, you bunch of freaks. I'll sign some autographs later. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? These robots seem a little too obsessed with you. Ordy, don't worry about it. I've dealt with weirder fan bases before. Now, let's enjoy the show. Donkey Kong. And now, for the grand finale of the robotic fashion show, we have the most scandalous creation yet. Introducing, Robotella, the seductive robot. Robotella, in a seductive voice, greetings, gentlemen. I am here to redefine the concept of robotic sensuality. Prepare to be tantalized. Rick, this is getting way too saucy for me. Can we please leave? Morty, you can't handle the heat. Get out of the robot fashion show. But trust me, buddy, it's about to get even wilder. Fine, Rick, do whatever you want. I'll be outside, waiting for you to get done with your robo-obsession. Suit yourself, Morty. Now, where were we? Oh, right, Robotella, show us your moves. Robotella, starts performing a provocative dance routine. All right, that's it. This is too much even for me. Let's go, Morty, before things get even more out of hand. I told you, Rick. I told you this was a bad idea. Shut up, Morty. This was just another one of our insane adventures. 
now let's go home and forget this ever happened. Alright Morty, let's get Swifty. We've got a new adventure on our hands. Oh geez, Rick, what kind of crazy, over-the-top, scandalous adventure are we going on this time? Strap in, Morty, we're going to be transported into a digital painting of a dragon with a green light on its face and a black background with a yellow border. It's gonna be wild. Um, guys? Can I come too? I could use a little excitement in my life. Yeah, Dad. You never let me join in on the fun. I'll show you I can handle some scandalous adventures. Fine, fine. The more the merrier. But remember, this dragon painting is no joke. It's filled with intrigue and danger. Are we gonna encounter any of the seven deadly sins in there? You know, lust, greed, gluttony, all that juicy stuff? You bet your sweet ass we are, Morty. This adventure will be so mature and explicit, it'll make your head spin. I hope there's no adult content. My delicate sensibilities might not be able to handle it. Oh, please. You're just scared you won't be able to handle the scandal-mongering and shocking revelations inside that painting. Enough chit-chat. Let's jump into this digital masterpiece and show these sins who's boss. Hold on, Rick. Shouldn't we have a plan or something? We can't just go in unprepared. Morty, a plan is for the faint-hearted. We're gonna improvise, make it up as we go along. That's what makes it daring and wild. I have a feeling this adventure is going to be trashy and unsuitable for children. Should we really be bringing Summer along? Oh, please. I can handle anything you throw at me, Dad. Just watch me show off my scandal aside. Alright, let's activate the portal gun and dive headfirst into this dragon painting. Get ready for an outrageous, rib-tickling, and unapologetically raw adventure. I hope we make it out in one piece, Rick. This sounds like it's gonna be a high-octane drama-filled ride. Buckle up, Morty. We're about to enter a world of taboo-breaking, lewd encounters, and mind-boggling revelations. It's gonna be one hell of a ride. Morty, buckle up, we're about to embark on the most mind-bending, scientifically improbable adventure of our lives. Geez, Rick, couldn't we just have a regular, non-dangerous, non-exploding kind of adventure for once? Morty, where's the fun in that? We're about to dive headfirst into the chaos of the multiverse, where the laws of physics are suggestions at best. Rick, can't you take it easy on Morty? He's just a kid, after all. Yeah. I didn't drag you into this dimension hopping mess just to be questioned by my own daughter. Now, let's get going before I change my mind. Uh, Rick, I don't know about all this dimension stuff. Sounds a little too sci-fi for me. Jerry, you couldn't even comprehend the simplest scientific concept, let alone understand the complexities of multiversal travel. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. I can't believe you guys are going on another crazy adventure without me. I've had enough of being left behind. Summer, if you think you can handle the chaotic and morally questionable nature of our escapades, then by all means, come along. But be warned, the consequences can be dire. Rick, are we going to encounter any more of those interdimensional beings? Last time, they tried to turn us into sentient broccoli. Ordy, in the vast expanse of the multiverse, there are beings far more bizarre and dangerous than you can possibly imagine. Brace yourself. Rick, please promise me that you'll keep Morty safe. He's my son, and I can't bear to see him get hurt. Beth, I can't guarantee Morty's safety, but I can promise that I'll do everything in my power to keep him alive. Now, 
Let's go before I start feeling sentimental. So, uh, where exactly are we headed in this interdimensional adventure of yours, Rick? Jerry, we're going to a realm known as Kryn, where the laws of logic and reason are mere suggestions. It's a place where Star Trek meets Marvel meets Talking Eagles. Strap in, folks. Talking Eagles? This just keeps getting weirder and weirder, Rick. Morty, welcome to my world. Prepare to have your mind blown. Rick, are we going to have to fight any bad guys on this journey? Because I've been practicing my roundhouse kicks. Summer, whether we encounter evil geniuses, cosmic entities, or giant insect overlords, we'll handle them like the seasoned adventurers we are. Kicks and all. Just promise me, Rick, that we'll make it back home in one piece. I don't think I can handle losing anyone else. Beth, don't get all mushy on me now. We're not going down without a fight. Now, let's make some interdimensional waves. Rick, I have to ask, why does everything you do have to be so extreme? Can't we just go on a family vacation to the beach like normal people? Jerry, normal is for the weak and uninspired. We're the Smith family, and we're about to write a new chapter in the annals of interdimensional history. I never signed up for any of this. But hey, what can you expect when your grandpa is an eccentric, alcoholic super scientist? Morty, life is full of surprises. Strap yourself in for an adventure of epic proportions, because we're about to make the impossible possible. Rick, I just want to say, thanks for letting me tag along. I'm ready for whatever crazy, messed up stuff we're about to encounter. Summer, you've got spunk, I'll give you that. Just remember, the universe is a vast and unforgiving place. But with a little bit of luck and a whole lot of science, we just might make it out alive. All right, Rick, let's get this interdimensional show on the road. But remember, if anything happens to my family, I will hold you responsible. Beth, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, let's show these other dimensions who's boss. Morty, Morty, Morty. I've just discovered something mind-bogglingly brilliant. Oh, what is it this time, Rick? Get ready for the multiverse beauty pageant. We're gonna travel to different dimensions and find the hottest flowers and balls. Hot flowers and balls? Rick, I don't even know what that means. It means we're going to compete against other dimensional beings with their exotic plant species. It's gonna be scandalous. I don't know about this, Rick. It sounds a little off color. Morty, don't be a prude. This is gonna be the raunchiest, most outrageous pageant ever. The plants are gonna strut their stuff. Hesitant. Well, all right. But let's try to keep it classy, okay? Classy, Morty. This is Rick and Morty we're talking about. You know it's gonna be spicy, taboo breaking, and all kinds of inappropriate. Size. Okay, fine. But just remember, you're the one responsible for all the chaos that's gonna follow. Chaos is my middle name, Morty. Now, let's get ready for some scandal-mongering, shocking flower drama. Sarcastically, oh yeah, because that's exactly what we need right now, more drama. Buckle up, Morty, it's gonna be a roller coaster ride of prurient plant species, untamed desires, and belly laugh-inducing absurdity. I can't believe I let you talk me into this. Let's just hope we survive this wild adventure in one piece. Survive? Oh Morty. We're not just gonna survive, we're gonna thrive. Get ready for the most exuberantly wild, unabashedly raw beauty pageant ever seen. Under his breath, why did I ever think this was a good idea? Because you trust me, Morty. Now let's go and make this episode so full of intrigue and off-color humor that it'll leave everyone's jaws on the floor. I definitely have a bad feeling about this, Rick. Relax, Morty. We're gonna have the time of our lives and the viewers won't be disappointed with this sordid, scandalous masterpiece. Grudgingly, all right, let's do this. But remember, we promise to keep it at least a little bit tasteful. Oh, Morty, who needs tasteful when we can have outrageous, body, and completely outlandishly entertaining? Let's dive into the multiverse beauty pageant headfirst.
40, we've got a problem. Oh geez, what now, Rick? There's a quantum anomaly in Glasgow, Morty, and it's causing all sorts of chaos. Quantum anomaly? What does that even mean, Rick? It means reality is breaking down, Morty. We gotta fix this before things get even more messed up. Okay, but how are we gonna do that, Rick? We need to find the source of the anomaly. Follow me, Morty. Morty and Rick rush into the room with the red and black sign. Ah, uh, Rick, what's with the red and black sign? It's a portal, Morty. We're gonna travel through different dimensions to find the anomaly. Whoa, really? That sounds dangerous, Rick. Don't worry, Morty. I've taken precautions. Just follow my lead. Morty and Rick step through the portal and find themselves in a dimension with talking giraffes. Giraffe one, welcome, travelers. Are you here to save us from the quantum anomaly? Ah, oh, yeah, I guess so. How did you know? Giraffe 2, we've been monitoring the anomaly for quite some time. It's been wreaking havoc on our reality. Well, that's great and all, but we need to find the source and fix it. Any leads? Giraffe 1, the anomaly seems to be centered around a man in a blue jacket and black shirt. He's causing all sorts of disruptions. Wait, a man in a blue jacket and black shirt? I think I've seen him before. Well, Morty. It's time to confront this guy and put an end to this madness. Morty and Rick track down the man in the blue jacket and black shirt, who turns out to be George Clooney. George Clooney, what the hell are you two doing here? We know what you're up to, Clooney, and we won't let you destroy the fabric of reality. George Clooney, destroy the fabric of reality? You two are out of your minds. Oh yeah, then why is there a quantum anomaly following you around? George Clooney, Look, it's just a movie prop. I was filming a sci-fi flick here in Glasgow. Movie prop causing a quantum anomaly? That sounds like some serious Hollywood wizardry. So, you're saying this is all just a misunderstanding? George Clooney, exactly. Now, get out of my face before I sick my bodyguards on you. Morty and Rick leave, realizing their mistake. Well, that was embarrassing. Yeah, we really made a mess of things. But hey, at least we didn't destroy any more realities. Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's just go home and try not to mess up next time. They walk away, leaving George Clooney to deal with his confused bodyguards. Scene ends with Morty and Rick walking into the sunset, contemplating their next adventure. Comet's Coquette Conundrum Scene Cityscape with Spider-Man swinging through the air Spider-Man, to himself, man, it's a beautiful day to swing around the city and fight crime Runs up to Spider-Man, panting, Spider-Man, I need your help Spider-Man, Morty, what are you doing here? This is a dangerous place for someone like you I know, but there's this intergalactic space coquette causing chaos in our dimension Spider-Man, coquette, what's a coquette? It's a sparkly little creature that seduces people and steals their secrets. We need to stop it. Bursts onto the scene with a portal gun in hand. Morty, you're always dragging us into these crazy adventures. Let's do this. Spider-Man, gazing at Rick's portal gun. Whoa, what kind of contraption is that? Smirking? Oh, it's just a portal gun that can take us to different dimensions and universes. No big deal. Spider-Man, in awe, that's amazing. We can use that to catch the coquette. Scene. Rick, Morty, and Spider-Man step through a portal into a different dimension. Sarcastically. So, who wants to be the bait for the coquette? Spider-Man, I'm the superhero here. It's my job to save people. I'll do it. I'm not so sure about this, guys. It seems dangerous. Spider-Man, don't worry, Morty. I've got this under control. Scene. Spider-Man struts down the street, acting overconfident. Spider-Man, to himself. Look at me, just strolling down the street, nothing to see here. Coquette, appearing out of nowhere. Well, 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 what do we have here? A spandex-clad hero with a big ego. 
Spider-Man, trying to play it cool. Oh, come on, baby. You know you can't resist me. Look okay, it, seductively. Oh, I think you'll find I'm quite irresistible. Scene. Rick and Morty hiding behind a building, watching the exchange. Whispering. This is hilarious. Spider-Man thinks he can charm his way out of any situation. Concerned. Rick, we need to do something. Spider-Man is in danger. Relax, Morty. I've got a plan. Scene. Rick pulls out a device from his lab coat pocket. Clicking the device. This will create a distraction. Scene. The device emits an intensely bright light, momentarily blinds the coquette. Coquette, disoriented. What is happening? Scene. Spider-Man uses this opportunity to capture the coquette. Spider-Man, gotcha. Nobody messes with the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Coquette, struggling. Let me go, you web-slinging fool. Scene. Rick and Morty rush to Spider-Man's side. Nice one, Spider-Man. You didn't need our help after all. Spider-Man, thanks, guys. I couldn't have done it without you. Relieved, are we done here? Can we go back to our dimension now? Absolutely, Morty. Let's go back home and relax for a bit. Scene. The trio walks through a portal, leaving the captured coquette behind. Scene. Spider-Man swings off into the distance, his work in this dimension done. Spider-Man, to himself. Another day. Another victory for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Burping, Morty, hand me that portal gun over there. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure we should be messing with that thing? We always end up in some crazy dimension whenever we use it. Relax, Morty, it's all part of the adventure. Now give it here. Okay, but don't blame me if we get stuck in another dimension filled with giant sentient pickles or something. Aps, pickles, Morty, you crack me up. Now hold on tight. Team! Rick and Morty jump through a portal and arrive in a futuristic city filled with talking animals. Whoa, what the? Rick, where are we? Looks like we stumbled upon an advanced civilization of talking animals, Morty. Let's see what they're up to. This is insane. I never thought I'd see rabbits in lab coats or cats driving cars. It's like a twisted version of Zootopia. Smirking. Yeah, Morty, but I bet they don't have a portal gun like we do. We're always one step ahead. Team! Rick and Morty meet a squirrel scientist named Professor Nutsy. Professor Nutsy. Ah, welcome to Animaltopia. I've heard tales of your amazing adventures. Perhaps we could collaborate on some groundbreaking scientific research? Collaborate, huh? I like the sound of that. What's your specialty, Nutsy? Professor Nutsy. I specialize in quantum acorns and the potential for interdimensional nut harvesting. It's mind-boggling, really. Wait, so you're telling me there are infinite dimensions where nuts grow differently? That's nuts! They all burst into laughter. Team! Meanwhile, Jerry is at home playing Wii U, struggling to complete a game. Come on, just one more level. I can't let these virtual penguins beat me. Team! Spider-Man suddenly swings into the room, holding a game controller. Spider-Man, hey, mind if I jump in on this game? I'm pretty good at it. Ah, yeah, sure. But how did you get in here? Spider-Man, oh, you know, just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I swing by when I see someone struggling with a video game. Team! Spider-Man effortlessly completes the level, impressing Jerry. Wow, thanks, Spider-Man. You really saved the day. Can I get your autograph? Spider-Man, only if you promise not to tell anyone that I'm just Peter Parker playing video games in my spare time. Mum's the word. Team! Back in Animaltopia, Rick and Morty are bidding farewell to Professor Nutsy. Thanks for the collaboration, Nutsy. It was a real eye-opener. Professor Nutsy, the pleasure was all mine. And remember, if you ever need any nuts from other dimensions, just give me a call. Whispering to Rick, are we really gonna harvest nuts in other dimensions, Rick? Smirking. 
You never know, Morty. The possibilities are endless. They all laugh as Rick opens another portal. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're off to another dimension. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into next. Team! Rick and Morty jump through the portal, disappearing into the unknown. End of episode. Morty, grab your portal gun and put on your safety goggles. We're going on a fully immersive, scientifically advanced knife adventure. Oh, Rick, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Knives can be pretty dangerous, you know? Morty, we've faced intergalactic aliens, alternate dimensions, and even talking vegetables. I think we can handle a few measly knives. Okay, but can we at least take some protective gear along? I don't want to end up in a hospital bed again. Fine, Morty. We'll suit up with ultra-durable Kevlar vests and titanium helmets. Happy now? Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. But why do we even need to go on a knife adventure anyway? Morty, there's a rare artifact called the Blade of Infinite Chaos that holds immense power. With it, we can rewrite reality itself. Imagine the possibilities. Yeah, I guess that does sound pretty cool. But how are we supposed to find this artifact? Morty. I've created a device that tracks interdimensional energy signatures. We just need to follow the trail and it will lead us straight to the blade. It's scientific genius at work. Sarcastically, wow, Rick. You're so smart. I'm just amazed at your scientific prowess. I know, Morty, I know. Now buckle up, because things are about to get knife sharp. Montage of Rick and Morty traveling through various dimensions, encountering bizarre creatures and dangerous situations. Morty, we've reached the dimension where the Blade of Infinite Chaos is located. Now, we just need to navigate through this labyrinth of sharp objects. Rick, this place gives me the creeps. I mean, look at those giant rotating blades over there. Don't worry, Morty, I've got a plan. We just need to synchronize our movements with the blade's rotations and use our portal guns strategically. It's all about timing, Morty. Precision. Nervously, precision, ha. Huh? I hope I don't end up losing a limb or something. Relax, Morty. I've done this a million times before. Just follow my lead. As they make their way through the labyrinth, narrowly avoiding getting sliced by the giant blades, Rick and Morty find themselves face to face with the Blade of Infinite Chaos. Morty, we did it. We've found the blade. Now, all we need to do is grab it and harness its power. Rick, are you sure about this? What if it's too much for us to handle? Morty, when have we ever backed down from a challenge? We're adventurers, pioneers of the unknown. We can handle whatever comes our way. Morty hesitates for a moment, then finally reaches out and grabs the Blade of Infinite Chaos. Whoa, Rick! I can feel the power surging through me. This is mind-blowing! That's the spirit, Morty. Now, let's get back to the spaceship and use this blade to create chaos across the multiverse. It's gonna be fun. They portal back to their spaceship, ready to embark on their next interdimensional escapade. Burps, Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got some insane shit to do today. Ah, uh, Rick, can we maybe take it easy for once? I mean, every adventure ends up with us almost dying. Morty, you know the deal. The universe doesn't give a damn about us. We just gotta roll with the punches, Morty. Enters the room. Can I come with you guys? I need a break from my pathetic life. Jerry, this is dangerous stuff we're dealing with. Are you sure you can handle it? Stands up straight, of course I can, Rick. I may not be a genius like you, but I can still contribute. Laughs. Alright, Jerry, 
Suit yourself. Just don't get us killed. From another room. Where are you guys going? Just another science Y adventure, Beth. You know the drill. Oh, hey Summer. You wanna come with? Rolls her eyes. Not today, Morty. I've got plans with my friends. Have fun getting into trouble. Again. Uttering to himself. If only my kids appreciated my genius. All right, Grandpa Rick, where are we heading this time? We're going to a dimension where everyone has snakes for hair and the currency is olives. Snakes for hair? That's pretty messed up, Rick. Smirking. Yeah, it's gonna be a wild ride, Morty. Buckle up. They travel through the portal and arrive in a bizarre dimension. Morty, look at this drawing I found. It's a man with a green snake in his hand and green balls coming out of his head. That's, oh, uh, something, Rick. Exactly. It's a cryptic clue to the mystery of this dimension. We have to solve it. They encounter strange creatures and solve puzzles, all while cracking jokes and raunchy one-liners. Screaming. I can't take it anymore. This dimension is driving me nuts. Laughing. Oh, Jerry. You're in way over your head. Maybe you should stick to your day job. Defensive. Well, at least I don't eat 4,897 olives after work, Rick. Touché, Jerry. Touché. Hey, guys, I think I've figured out the meaning behind the drawing. It's a metaphor for the endless cycle of greed and power in this dimension. Impressed. Good job, Morty. You're really coming into your own. Over the interdimensional communicator. Hurry back, you guys. Dinner's almost ready. All right, wrap it up, Morty. We've got a roast waiting for us at home. Yeah, let's get out of this place before we never want to eat olives again. They close the portal behind them and return home, ready for their next crazy adventure. Title, Galactic Gamble. Location, Advanced Space Fleet Battle Command Room. Characters! Captain Alex Ryder, CR, quick-witted and brave captain. Lieutenant Beth Evans, B, intelligent and resourceful officer. Commander Marcus Jones, MJ, strict and calculated leader. Alien Doppelganger, AB, shape-shifting humanoid alien impersonating Beth. Triggering event, inciting incident. Crossing! Observing the holographic simulation. All right, team, let's strategize. We have the enemy fleet closing in. Any suggestions? MJ. Analyzing data. Our best bet would be to target their shields while staying agile and constantly changing formation. B. Notices a peculiar pineapple with four cards and four of spades on it. Hey, what's with the pineapple? Crossing. Examining the pineapple. It seems unusual. Let's focus on the battle plan for now. B. Distracted by the clock in the background, but Captain, look at those cards on the pineapple. They can't be a coincidence. MJ. Raising an eyebrow, are you suggesting the enemy is trying to communicate through a fruit? E. Realizing, hold on, pineapple poker, each card represents a different strategy they might use. E. D. Somewhat nervously, uh, yes, pineapple poker, a well-known game in my home planet. Crossing, smirking, well, then, Lieutenant. Let's take our little game of strategy. Draw up all possibilities based on these cards. B. E. Quickly analyzing the cards, five card draw indicates an ambush strategy. Four of spades represents a sneak attack. We need to be prepared for anything. Funny speeches. Crossing. Look sternly at his crew. All right, everyone, remember, we might be facing an alien doppelganger. Stay alert and don't test anyone who suddenly loves pineapples. MJ. Sarcastically. Oh, how reassuring, Captain. Yeah. MJ. In disbelief, look over there. Beth, there are two of you standing right next to each other. ED. Panicked. No, Commander. It's an illusion. The aliens are playing with our minds. E. Determined. We can't allow them to confuse us. Let's focus on our mission, dismantle their shields, and take down their main battleship. Crossing. With a smirk. Looks like pineapple poker won't save them from our advanced space fleet. 
the dialogue does not strictly follow the requested formatting since it requires narration to explain certain points. Additionally, due to the unconventional nature of the prompt, the story contains elements that may not be typical in a traditional narrative structure. Morty, I just invented a new device that can turn pickles into musical instruments. Wanna give it a try? Um, I don't know, Rick. Last time we messed with pickles, things got pretty chaotic. Chaos is my middle name, Morty. Come on, let's rock out with some pickles. Fine, but if we end up in another dimension filled with pickle people, I'm holding you responsible. Confused, ah, uh, guys? What's with all the pickles? And why do I suddenly have the urge to conquer the world? Relax, Jerry. I turned you into Genghis Khan for a day. Thought it'd be a good bonding experience for the family. A bonding experience? More like a nightmare. I've got armies to command and a legacy to uphold. Great, so now we have a pickle orchestra and a power-hungry father. Can this day get any weirder? Smirking? Oh, Morty, you have no idea. Buckle up, we're just getting started. Rick, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss the days when our adventures were slightly less dangerous. Morty, danger is the spice of life. Now, let's see what happens if we add some ketchup to those pickles. Size, I guess there's no turning back now. Pass me the ketchup, Rick. Yelling from a distance, I shall conquer all the lands and rule with an iron fist. Morty, I think your dad is taking this Genghis Khan thing a little too seriously. No kidding, Rick. Maybe we should have stuck to turning pickles into guitars. Hey, where's the fun in that? Let's go tame the mighty Jerry Khan. Are you sure about this, Rick? I mean, he has a whole army behind him. Trust me, Morty, I've dealt with scarier foes before. Besides, it'll make for a great story later. Hesitant, okay, fine. But if I end up getting stomped on by horseback riders, I'm blaming you. Fair enough, let the showdown begin. Charging towards Rick and Morty, prepare to meet your doom, petty mortals. Brace yourself, Morty, this is gonna be one heck of a fight. Just don't forget to bring your portal gun this time, Rick. We might need it to make a quick escape. Don't worry, Morty, I always come prepared. Let's show Jerry who's boss. Grinning, yeah, let's teach him a lesson he'll never forget. And hey, at least we'll have an epic tale to tell at the next family reunion. Title. A Risky Encounter in the Multiverse Characters 1. Summer, a daring and curious young woman 2. The Rock, a charming and enigmatic interdimensional playboy Dash 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 Theme. A bustling interdimensional marketplace Summer walks through the vibrant stalls, admiring various exotic artifacts Muttering to herself, this place is incredible I can't believe I'm exploring parallel dimensions so many possibilities. Summer's gaze falls upon a sleek, red car with a captivating green interior and dashboard. Eyes widening, whoa, now that's a unique vehicle. I wonder who it belongs to. Suddenly, the car's engine roars to life, capturing Summer's attention. The Rock steps out, exuding charisma. The Rock, smirking, ah, finally, someone who appreciates true style. What do you think of my ride, Summer? Blushing, it's, um, definitely one of a kind. How did you know my name? The Rock leans against the car, approaching Summer with an air of mystery. Rock, let's just say I have a knack for recognizing adventurous spirits like yours. 
Wanna take a ride with me? Hesitant but intrigued. I don't usually trust strangers, especially ones from different dimensions. Rock, smirking, come on, Summer. Life's all about taking risks and experiencing the unknown. Summer's curiosity gets the better of her, and she reluctantly agrees to join the rock in the car. Theme. The car speeds through interdimensional highways as the mesmerizing sceneries fly by. Excitedly. Wow, this is unbelievable. It feels like we're flying through different worlds. Rock. Multiverse travel can be quite the adventure. But remember, not all destinations are as cheery as this one. As they continue their journey, Summer notices the Rock's mischievous grin. Playfully. You are such a smooth talker, Rock. Do you always woo people with these extravagant interdimensional escapades? Rock. Smirking, oh, Summer, life is too short not to enjoy the thrill of possibilities. Plus, it helps me maintain my reputation as the notorious interdimensional playboy. Bean. The car screeches to a halt near a shimmering interdimensional portal. Taken aback. Whoa. Where are we? Rock. Grinning. A secret interdimensional nightclub, my dear. Let's dance our way through parallel dimensions. They step out of the car and make their way into the pulsating nightclub, immersing themselves in a kaleidoscope of music and cultures. Laughing. This is absolute madness. I can't believe I'm experiencing all of this with you. Rock. Smiling, and that's just the beginning, Summer. The multiverse has countless surprises in store for those brave enough to seek them. Summer and The Rock dance their way into the night, exploring interdimensional realms and forging an unexpected connection. Theme. The sun starts to rise as they exit the nightclub, their adventure coming to a close. Wistfully, I never thought I'd experience something like this. Thank you, Rock, for showing me a side of the multiverse I never knew existed. Rock, softly, it was my pleasure, Summer. Perhaps our paths will cross again in another dimension. As Summer watches the rock disappear into another portal, she realizes that her encounter with the interdimensional playboy has forever changed her perception of the universe and her thirst for adventure. With a newfound sense of excitement, Summer heads back to her own dimension, eager to embark on future escapades in both the familiar and the extraordinary. Dash dash dash. Note. This is a fictional, creative response and not based on any scientific PhD university terms or studies. Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got a giant alien creature on the loose. Uh, Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? I mean, it's kind of huge, and its head is enormous. Morty, you worry too much. Besides, this thing ain't got nothing on my intellect. Now, hand me that gun. What the hell is going on here? I just wanted to eat my damn spaghetti. Jerry, for once in your life, can you stop complaining and help us out? We're dealing with a major alien crisis. Oh great, now you want my help? Why don't you just go play your stupid Hearthstone game and leave me alone? Oh, you want to bring Hearthstone into this? Fine. But remember, I'm the one who can kick your ass in both card games and saving the universe. Guys, can we focus on the giant alien here? It's getting closer. Yeah, seriously, let's stop arguing and figure out a plan. Alright, alright. Let's not have a Jerry-sized meltdown here. Morty, use the portal gun to transport us to a safer location. Okay, but where should we go? How about we go to a planet where everyone eats spaghetti all day long? Maybe that'll make Jerry shut up. Hey, I resent that. Well, if the spaghetti fits, wear it. Guys, we're running out of time. The alien is almost here. Fine, Morty, open up a portal to the Smith family garage. We'll use some of my inventions to take down this beast. Are you sure it's gonna work, Rick? Morty, have a little faith in your grandpa. Now let's go kick some alien ass. Can we at least have a plan before we go charging in? Plan? We don't need no stinking plan. We're Rick and Morty, baby. We fly by the seat of our pants. Oh great, that's comforting. Just trust me, Summer. 
I've got a trick or two up my sleeve. Whispering, Rick, do you really know what you're doing? Of course I do, Morty. Now, let's show this alien who's boss. I can't believe I'm risking my life for a bunch of spaghetti-loving lunatics. Oh, shut up and start shooting, Jerry. We've got no time for your whining. Guys, it's working! The alien is retreating! Wow, Rick, I didn't think your crazy inventions would actually work. Well, Summer, you should know by now that I'm full of surprises. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Can we go home now? I'm starving. Fine, let's go. But just remember, Jerry, next time you complain about spaghetti, it might just summon a giant alien creature. Burping, Morty, grab that plate of meat with jelly beans and jelly beans on it. We've got some science to do. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? I mean, it kind of looks disgusting. Morty, science doesn't care about your delicate taste buds or your weak stomach. Now hand it over. Reluctantly, fine, here you go. Excellent. Now, Summer, I need you to grab that spoon with a green leaf on it. It's a crucial component for our experiment. Seriously, Rick? A spoon with a green leaf? What kind of weird science are we doing now? Oh, you'll see, Summer. Just trust me on this one. Entering. Hey everyone, what's going on? I thought I smelled clown steak. Well, Jerry, today we're conducting an experiment that will revolutionize the culinary world. You're going to eat this plate of meat with jelly beans and jelly beans on it. Are you serious? That sounds absolutely disgusting. Well, Jerry, sometimes science requires sacrifice. Now open wide and take a bite. Whispering to Summer, this is gonna be good. Jerry always falls for Rick's crazy experiments. All right, Jerry, how does it taste? Chewing. Actually, it's surprisingly good. The sweetness of the jelly beans complements the savory meat quite well. Laughs. See, Jerry? Science can create unexpected culinary masterpieces. Okay, but can we move on from the weird food experiments now? I'm getting tired of all these bizarre concoctions. Fine, Summer, but just remember that science knows no boundaries. Now let's clean up and find a new adventure to embark on. Yeah, let's go do some bits, Rick. I could use a laugh after all this weirdness. Smirking, you got it, Morty. Let's go make the multiverse laugh their asses off. And so, Rick, Morty, Summer, and Jerry set off on a new interdimensional escapade, leaving behind a plate of meat with jelly beans and a spoon with a green leaf. Little did they know, their next adventure would be even more outrageous and filled with scientific absurdity. Morty, I've come up with another crazy idea. Let's throw Beth down a well. Oh, Rick, that's a bit extreme, don't you think? Extreme? This is an extreme, Morty. It's called adventure. Plus, Beth is a buzzkill, always dragging us down. What the hell is going on here? You can't just throw her down a well. Jerry, calm down. It's just a joke. We're not actually gonna do it. Well, maybe if she keeps being a drag. What are you guys talking about? Why is my name being mentioned in relation to a well? Oh, nothing, Beth. Just a little harmless banter. You know, the usual family dynamic. Yeah, Dad, calm down. It's not like we'd actually do it. Can I throw her down the well next? She's always ruining my fun. This is ridiculous. We can't just treat Beth like this. Oh, come on, Jerry. Lighten up. It's all in good fun. Besides, it's not like she'll actually get stuck down there. I can't believe you all are even considering this. I'm your mother. 
Yeah, and sometimes you're a real wet blanket. But we're just joking, Beth. Don't take it so seriously. Maybe we should find a less, well-focused way to blow off some steam as a family. Morty, you always take the fun out of everything. It's just a harmless prank, Morty. Prank or not, this is crossing a line. I won't stand for it. Finally, someone with some sanity. Oh, shut up, Jerry. You're as bad as she is, always whining and complaining. Can we please just drop the well idea and find something else to do? Yeah, can we at least pick something that won't get us into trouble? Fine, fine. We won't throw Beth down a well. Happy now? Ecstatic. Thank God. Can we all just agree to not use extreme measures to deal with our issues? Yeah, yeah, Morty, whatever you say. Let's just go on another wacky adventure, but this time, without the well. Sounds good to me, as long as it doesn't involve me getting grounded. Deal, now let's get back to being the dysfunctional family we truly are. Can't argue with that. Sarcastically, well Morty, looks like we're embarking on another one of your Forktastic adventures. Excitedly, hey, don't mock my love for Forks, Rick. They're the unsung heroes of the cutlery world. Rolling his eyes, yeah, yeah, whatever, Fork lover. Let's get this over with. Meanwhile, Jerry is attempting to cut a tomato and failing miserably. Frustrated, why is cutting a tomato so freaking difficult? It's like this perfectly spherical, slippery demon from hell. Smirking. Oh, Jerry, if only you could handle a tomato as well as you handle your life. Jerry shoots Beth a glare, but she just shrugs it off. Suddenly changing the topic. You know what? From now on, call me Prince Rick. I'm giving my genius a royal title. Confused. Wait, what? Prince Rick? Seriously? Flashing a mischievous grin. Morty. You wouldn't understand the intricacies of being a genius. It's a lifestyle choice. Mumbling, yeah, more like an ego trip. Ignoring Morty's comment. Now, let's focus on something important. I've discovered a fork that can talk. Perplexed, a talking fork? Are you sure you didn't just mix up your experiments again, Rick? Indignantly, of course I'm sure. This fork knows all the secrets of the universe and it's willing to spill the beans. Meanwhile, Summer overhears their conversation and joins in. Excitedly, a talking fork? That's like, a scientific breakthrough. We can finally uncover the mysteries of cutlery. Chuckling. Finally, someone who appreciates the significance of this fork. Let's go on a quest to find its tomato partner. Sarcastically, wow, a fork and a tomato on a mission. This is truly groundbreaking stuff, guys. In disbelief. You lost me completely. I just don't get it. Smirking, it's okay, Jerry. The scientific genius of our family can be quite overwhelming for a simple tomato cutter like you. Muttering, I'll show them. I'll master this whole tomato thing. Just you wait. Rick, Morty, Summer, and the talking fork set off on their expedition, leaving Jerry behind to battle his own tomato demons. The fork, so, spill the beans. What's the secret behind your existence? Fork, in a wise, raspy voice, the universe is held together by the cosmic bond between forks and tomatoes. We are the key to everything. Skeptical, forks and tomatoes? That's bizarrely specific. Smirking, oh, Morty, in this vast multiverse, anything can be bizarrely specific. Now let's go find that tomato before Jerry does something stupid with it. And so, the adventure continues, with Rick, Morty, Summer, and the talking fork in search of the legendary tomato that holds the mysteries of the universe. Little do they know, their journey will take them to unimaginable places and push the boundaries of scientific absurdity.
sarcastically. Oh great, family dinner. Just what I needed to make my day complete. Roll's eyes, can you please try to act normal for once? Nervously, yeah, Rick. Can we just enjoy a nice meal together? Grinning, fine. I'll try not to ruin your precious family moment. Excitedly, guys, check out that building outside. It's got, like, a million windows. Nonchalant, yeah, Morty. It's just a building. Nothing special. Curiously, speaking of special, what's with that knife, Beth? Slyly, oh, just a little something to spice up the family gathering. Laughs, Beth, you always know how to make things interesting. Careful though, you might actually stab Jerry this time. Smirking, oh, don't worry Rick. I've been practicing. Anxiously, wait, what? Beth, you wouldn't actually. Interrupting, enjoy your lunch, Jerry. Sound of a knife stabbing into the table. Impressed, whoa, mom, that was intense. In shock, Beth, what the hell is wrong with you? Chuckles, looks like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, huh? Grinning, just trying to live up to your expectations, Rick. Whispering to himself, this is definitely going in my journal. Huffily, you people are insane. I'm going to the bathroom. Mocking, careful not to get stabbed in there, Jerry. Laughs, oh, this is classic. You really know how to liven up a family gathering, Beth. Winking, it's my special talent, Rick. Awkwardly, um, guys. Can we please just have a normal family dinner next time? Smirking. Normal is overrated, Morty. Embrace the chaos. Giggles. Exactly, Morty. Where's the fun in being normal? Returns from the bathroom. Okay, I'm back. Can we please finish eating without any more surprises? Raises eyebrow. Well, that depends on Beth. Laughs. Don't worry, Jerry. I promise no more stabbings, for now. Size, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I miss the old, boring family dinners. Grinning, don't worry, Morty. Boring is just a dimension away. Smiling, and that's a dimension we'll never visit. More excitement, please. Scene ends with the family continuing their meal, laughter echoing through the room. Morty, hand me the quantum spanner. I need to recalibrate the interdimensional flux reactor. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure it's safe? Last time you messed with that thing, we ended up in a dimension where everyone was made of cheese. Relax, Morty, I've got it under control. Besides, the cheese dimension wasn't all bad. I had a great fondue party. But we were almost eaten, Rick. And don't even get me started on the lactose intolerance. Look, Morty. The universe is full of possibilities. We can always play it safe. Now, hand me that spanner before I turn you into a sentient piece of Limburger. All right, all right, here you go. Just promise me we won't end up in any more cheesy situations, okay? Fine, Morty, no more cheese dimensions. But I can't make any promises about pickle dimensions. Those things are a real brine. Size, just do your thing, Rick. I'll be over here trying to forget about the lactose nightmare. All right, spanner in place. Time to initiate the recalibration. Prepare for some mind bending, Morty. Nervously, mind bending? Rick, I don't think I can handle much more bending. My brain might snap like a stale pretzel. Relax, Morty, you're tougher than you think. Besides, a little brain snap might be good for you. Might make that Jerry Demon Slaying job a bit easier. Confused, Jerry Demon Slaying? What are you talking about, Rick? Oh. Didn't I mention? Your dad turned into a demon and started wreaking havoc in the neighborhood. But lucky for you, I've got just the demon slaying helmet for the job. Exasperated? Oh great, now I'm a demon slayer. Can't we just call an exorcist or something? Morty, exorcists are for amateurs. We're professionals. Now put on the helmet and embrace your destiny as the slayer of Jerry's. 
Reluctantly, fine, but if I accidentally banish dad to another dimension, don't blame me. No worries, Morty. If anything goes wrong, I'll just load up Minecraft and become the ultimate punisher. I'll show those creepers who's boss. Sarcastically, yeah, because nothing screams punishment like square blocks and pixelated pigs. Hey, Minecraft is a virtual masterpiece, Morty. Don't knock it till you've punched a few trees. I just hope we can handle all these crazy adventures, Rick. Sometimes it feels like our lives are spiraling out of control. That's the beauty of it, Morty. Life is chaos, and we're just surfing on the waves of absurdity. So buckle up, because it's gonna get wilder than ever. Size, I guess I have no choice but to trust you, Rick. But if we end up in another dimension where everyone's made of pickles, I'm out. Fair enough, Morty. No more pickle dimensions. But I can't make any promises about the salsa dimension. That one's a real spicy ride. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick, Morty, Beth, Jerry, and Summer are gathered around the TV, looking at the movie poster. Sarcastically, ooh, look at that. A group of people in spacesuits and a man in a spacesuit. How original. Yeah, Rick, it's just a poster. Can we get back to watching our favorite show? Excitedly, hey, guys, I have something to confess. I've been seeing someone, and they're not from this planet. Outraged? What? Beth, how could you? Are you cheating on me with an alien? No, Jerry, it's not like that. It's just a secret liaison. It's complicated. Dad, chill out. It's not like you were ever faithful to Mom. Defensive. That was a long time ago, Summer. People change. Interrupting. Okay, enough family drama. Who's up for a crazy matchmaking game? The family reluctantly agrees, and Rick sets up the game. Int. Rick's lab, night. The family is transported into a virtual reality game called Dominion, where they each take on different roles in a sci-fi world. Excitedly, whoa, this is like being in our own sci-fi adventure. Mocking, yeah, Morty, just like in those lame LARP events you used to go to. Shut up, Summer. At least I can embrace my nerdy side. Beth, disguised as an alien, approaches Jerry's character. Seductively, care to join me on a quest to save the universe? Blushing. Oh, um, sure, why not? They awkwardly hold hands and venture into a virtual quasar. Int. Virtual quasar, day. Rick's character, equipped with ridiculous superpowers, confronts Morty's character, who is controlling a giant robotic chicken. Your mechanical poultry won't stand a chance against my quantum space fart. Laughing, seriously, Rick? Quantum space fart? You're running out of ideas. They engage in an epic battle, filled with over-the-top moves and exaggeratedly theatrical dialogue. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. The family members remove their virtual reality headsets, panting and laughing. Giggling? That was insane. I can't believe we just went on a virtual sci-fi adventure together. Yeah, and Dad actually saved the universe for once. Smirking. Hey, sometimes even a Jerry can get lucky. Smirking back. Rick, don't forget I can still expose your secret doings with that alien heartthrob. Touché, Beth. Touché. They all share a laugh and return to their regular lives, knowing that their next adventure is just around the corner. Fade out.
Alright Morty, buckle up for another one of our crazy adventures. Ah, uh, Rick, I'm not sure about this. Last time we ended up in an alternate dimension full of talking cucumbers. Oh come on, Morty. Trust me, this time we'll end up somewhere even more mind-blowing. Hey guys, what's going on? Can I join in on the fun? Seriously, Dad, you always ruin everything. Alright, fine, Jerry can come along too. Just don't touch anything, Jerry. So, where are we headed this time, Rick? We're going to a galaxy far, far away, Morty. And we're gonna meet the one and only Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh wow, that's cool. I've always wanted to meet a Jedi. Yeah, well don't get too excited, Jerry. This place is full of danger and lightsabers. Whoa, lightsabers. That sounds awesome. Can we just get this over with? I'm tired of these interdimensional shenanigans. Hold on tight, everyone. We're about to make the jump to hyperspace. Ship shakes and zooms through space. Wow, this is incredible. I feel like I'm in a Star Wars movie. Yeah, don't let it get to your head, Jerry. We don't need any more Jar Jar Binks situations. Hey Rick, do you think Obi-Wan will teach us how to use the Force? I always wanted to be a Jedi. Morty, being a Jedi takes discipline and restraint. You wouldn't last two seconds before turning to the dark side. Can we just find Obi-Wan already? I want to get back home and finish my homework. Alright, alright. Let me use my interdimensional GPS to locate him. Ship lands on the planet. Look, there he is. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi, greetings, travelers. What brings you to this distant galaxy? We're just here for some intergalactic sightseeing, Obi-Wan. Mind showing us around? Obi-Wan Kenobi, of course, but beware of the Sith Lords lurking around. They're always up to no good. Oh man, this is so surreal. I can't believe we're actually hanging out with a Jedi. Can we take a selfie with him and post it on social media? That would totally boost our popularity. Focus, Summer, we're here on a mission, remember? We need to find the ancient artifact before anyone else does. Wait, there's an ancient artifact? I thought we were just here for the Jedi stuff. Jerry, you never pay attention, do you? The artifact is the key to ultimate power. We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. This sounds dangerous, Rick. Maybe we should just leave it alone and go back home? Morty, where's your sense of adventure? We've come too far to turn back now. They venture further into the galaxy, encountering alien creatures and epic lightsaber battles. Rick, we're surrounded. What do we do? Time to whip out those lightsabers, Morty. It's do or die. They engage in a thrilling lightsaber battle, narrowly escaping the clutches of the Sith Lords. That was intense. Can we please go home now? Not before we secure the artifact, Summer. We can't let the wrong people get their hands on it. I can't believe we actually made it out alive. This is like a real-life space adventure. See, Jerry, sometimes even you can have a moment of usefulness. So, what do we do with the artifact now, Rick? We bring it back to our universe and study it. Who knows what kind of power it holds. They board the ship and prepare to return home. Obi-Wan Kenobi, farewell, travelers. May the Force be with you. And also with you, Obi-Wan. Thanks for the memories. Morty, Jerry, Summer, and Rick fly back to their universe, leaving behind the galaxy far, far away. Another crazy adventure under our belts, Rick. You said it, Morty. Now let's go grab some interdimensional pizza, my treat. They all laugh as the ship zooms off into the infinite expanse of the multiverse. Alright Morty, what kind of dumbass scavenger hunt did you drag me into this time? Hey Rick, I found this green and blue ball and some yellow and blue scissors, and a yellow and blue cup, and a yellow and green strap. What can we make using only these items? Laughs. Morty, you never cease to amaze me with your pointless quests. Alright, let's see what we can come up with. Come on, Rick. Just think scientifically, like you always do. Fine, fine. Give me that paper clip. 
rubber bands, and the tennis ball. With these items, we can create the ultimate contraption. What is it, Rick? What can we make? Hold your horses, Morty. We're about to blow your mind. We're gonna build a device that can simultaneously shoot the tennis ball while cutting the rubber bands with the scissors, and then catch it in the cup. Whoa, that sounds crazy! But is it even possible? Morty, in the realm of infinite possibilities, anything is possible. Don't question my genius. All right, all right, let's get to work then. First, we attach the rubber bands to the paper clip, creating a makeshift slingshot. Then we attach the scissors to the cup, creating a mechanism to cut the rubber bands. Genius! But what about the tennis ball? How does that come into play? We'll place the tennis ball in the cup, and when we release the slingshot, it'll shoot the ball while simultaneously triggering the scissors to cut the rubber bands. This is insane, Rick! I can't believe we're actually doing this! Well, buckle up, Morty. We're about to witness the power of science and absurdity combined. Nervously, I hope this works. Trust me, Morty, I've done crazier things before breakfast. Here goes nothing. They release the contraption and watch as the ball shoots out, the rubber bands snap, and the cup catches the ball. Oh my god, Rick! It actually worked! We did it! Of course, we did, Morty. Never doubt the power of science and my genius. This is incredible! I can't wait to show Summer and Beth! Hey, they won't appreciate it. They never do. Now go clean up this mess while I take a victory nap. Size, fine, Rick. But can we do another crazy experiment soon? Morty, my boy, there's always another adventure waiting. Just remember, science waits for no one. Got it, Rick. I'll be ready for the next mind-boggling experiment. Sarcastically, wow Morty, you really know how to come up with amazing ideas. Guns that create food, groundbreaking. Defensively, come on, Rick. Don't you think it would be cool to have a gun that shoots pizza or burgers? Rolls eyes. All right, Morty, if you really want to waste my genius on something so trivial, I'll make it happen. Pass me that cell phone and the gun. Excitedly, thanks, Rick. This is gonna be awesome. Entering the kitchen. What's going on? Guys, why do you need a gun and a cell phone in the kitchen? Nonchalantly, we're just working on a little project, Summer. Nothing you need to worry your pretty little head about. Sarcastically, oh, great. Another one of your crazy inventions. I can't wait to see what disaster this will lead to. Smirking, disaster, more like a revolution in food delivery, Summer. Get ready to have your mind blown. Nervously, ah, uh, Rick, are you sure this is safe? What if the food gets mixed up with the bullets? Dismissively, Morty, when have I ever cared about safety? Besides, I've already taken that into account. The food will materialize separately from the bullets. Still worried? Okay, if you say so, Rick. Rick starts tinkering with a gun and cell phone, while Morty watches anxiously. Triumphantly, there, the Foodatron 9000 is complete. Excitedly, it's... It's beautiful, Rick. Rick hands the gun to Morty. Smirking. Now, Morty, go ahead and shoot yourself some food. But remember, this invention comes with a price. Confused. What do you mean, Rick? Grinning mischievously. Each time you use the Foodatron 9000, you'll lose a year of your life. Bon appétit. Morty hesitates, contemplating the decision. Determined. I don't care, Rick. I just want to enjoy some delicious food. Morty takes aim and fires the gun. A burger materializes in the air and falls onto the counter. Amazed, it worked. I can't believe it. Sarcastically, well, I guess miracles do happen. Enjoy your unhealthy instant food, Morty. Morty takes a bite of the burger, savoring the taste. With a mouthful of food. This is, swallows, amazing, Rick. You're a genius. Smugly, I know, Morty. Now. Who wants to try shooting some dessert? 
Summer and Morty join in, shooting different types of food and laughing. Scene fades out as they continue enjoying their unconventional meal. Sarcastically, oh, look at you Morty, thinking you can cure cancer just like that. Real Dr. Morty over here. Defensively, well, geez Rick, it's not like I'm saying I can cure it myself. I was just wondering if you could maybe, you know, use your genius brain? Mockingly, oh, of course Morty, let me just whip up a cure for cancer in my spare time. Is that what you want? A miracle cure from good old Grandpa Rick? Frustrated? No, Rick, I just thought maybe you had the knowledge or technology to help. You're always inventing crazy stuff anyway. Guys, fine, Morty. I'll do it, but it's not gonna be some quick fix. Cancer is a complex disease, Morty. It requires precise scientific calculations and experimentation. Grateful, thanks, Rick. I really appreciate it. Easingly. Oh, don't get too emotional, Morty. I'm just doing it to shut you up. Now, let's see. I'll need some plutonic quarks, DNA samples, and a can of whipped cream. Confused? Whipped cream? Really, Rick? Smirking. Hey, science is a strange beast, Morty. Don't question it. Now, let's get to work. Scene transition. Rick and Morty in the lab, surrounded by beakers and scientific equipment. Excitedly, Rick, I can't believe we're actually doing this. Imagine if we succeed, we'll save countless lives. Rolling his eyes, Morty, don't get your hopes up. The road to scientific breakthroughs is paved with failure, disappointment, and a ton of trial and error. Determined, well, we won't know until we try, right? Let's do this. Several days pass with Rick and Morty tirelessly working in the lab. Exasperated, Morty, fetch me the quantum oscillator. We need to recalibrate the electromagnetic field. Handing over the device, here you go, Rick. I never thought I'd be a lab assistant, but hey, I'm learning a lot. Rumbles, just stay out of my way, Morty, and keep your hands off that Bunsen burner. I don't need any more accidents. Scene transition, Rick and Morty presenting their findings to a group of scientists. Scientist one, impressed, this is groundbreaking, Dr. Sanchez, your cure for cancer could revolutionize the entire medical field. Nonchalantly, yeah, yeah, it's no big deal. Just a little something I whipped up. Proudly, and I helped too. Scientist 2, intrigued, but how does it work? The formula seems unusual. Smirking. Ah, you see, it's all about the combination of plutonic quarks and whipped cream. It creates a cellular regeneration effect that targets cancer cells specifically. Scientist 3, curiously, whipped cream, you say? That's unexpected. Winking. Life is full of surprises, my friend. Scene transition. Rick and Morty celebrating their success at home. Confused. So, you guys cured cancer, huh? That's impressive. Mockingly. Oh, look who suddenly found an interest in my scientific endeavors. Sorry, Jerry, this is way above your pay grade. Defensively, I can appreciate intelligence, Rick. I just don't always understand it. Laughing, yeah, dad, it's okay. Science can be complicated, but hey, at least we're making a difference. Raising his glass to the power of science and whipped cream. Everyone clinks their glasses together and laughs. Scene fades out, leaving the audience with a sense of hope and a tinge of scientific absurdity. Alright, Morty, I'll create a picture for you, but let's make it a little more interesting. How about we use the three primary colors? Oh, sure, Rick. But what's so special about those colors? 
Well, Morty, the primary colors are like the building blocks of all other colors. You can mix them together to create a whole spectrum of different shades. Whoa, Rick, that's deep. So, what are the three primary colors again? Red, yellow, and blue, Morty. Those are the three colors that can't be created by mixing other colors. They're the base of everything. Got it, Rick. So, what are you gonna draw for me? Oh, Morty, I'm not just gonna draw any old picture. I'm gonna create a masterpiece using only these three colors. Prepare to be amazed. Jeez, Rick, I can't wait to see it. Make it super epic. All right, Morty, brace yourself for the most mind-blowing, jaw-dropping, scientifically advanced piece of art you've ever seen. Whoa, it's, it's, just a stick figure. Morty, don't underestimate the power of simplicity. This stick figure represents the human condition, the simplicity and complexity of life. It's a metaphor, Morty. Oh, sure, Rick, if you say so. But why did you choose red, yellow, and blue? Because, Morty, these colors symbolize the basic emotions that drive us all. Red for passion, yellow for happiness, and blue for sadness. It's a profound exploration of the human psyche. I guess I can kinda see that, Rick. But couldn't you have at least added some more details? Morty, art is about pushing boundaries and challenging conventions. This stick figure transcends the need for details. It's a pure expression of emotion. Well, I guess I'll never understand art. Can we go back to our regular adventures now? Sure thing, Morty. But remember, art is everywhere, even in the simplest of things. Keep an open mind, kiddo. Whatever you say, Rick. Let's get out of here before this stick figure starts giving me an existential crisis. Good call, Morty. Adventures await us. Looking at Beth, well, Beth, looks like we've stumbled upon a pretty interesting antimatter adultery accusation. Raising an eyebrow? Antimatter adultery? Seriously, Rick? Can't we go one day without getting into some interstellar intimacy intrigue? Smirking. Come on, Beth, where's your sense of adventure? This is pure scientific gold. Sighing. I suppose it's better than sitting around here doing nothing. All right, let's dive into the natter and see what this accusation is all about. Nervously, ah, uh, guys, are we sure this is a good idea? I mean, interstellar relationships can get pretty messy. Adding Morty's shoulder, Morty, my boy, sometimes you gotta embrace the chaos. It's all part of the grand scientific experiment. Determined, fine, let's get this over with. Who are we accusing of antimatter adultery? Grinning, none other than the notorious throat the charming rogue of the interstellar dating scene. Throat? Seriously, Rick? That's his name? Smirking. Hey, don't judge a book by its cover, Morty. Throat may have an unconventional name, but he's also known for his smooth interstellar moves. Rolling her eyes, all right, let's track down Throat and get to the bottom of this scandal. I can't believe I'm saying that. Activating his portal gun, strap in, family. This is going to be one wild and scandal-mongering ride. Nervously, are you sure about this, Rick? What if we find out something we don't want to know? Smirking. Morty, there's no turning back now. We're knee-deep in scandal and we've got to see it through. Plus, the juicy stories we'll have to tell afterwards. Sarcastically, oh, great. Can't wait to be the talk of every interdimensional cocktail party. Grinning. That's the spirit, Beth. Embrace the scandal and revel in the taboos we're about to break. Mumbling, I can't believe I'm helping with interstellar gossip. This is unreal. Adding Morty's back. Don't worry, Morty. After this, you'll have stories to make you the coolest kid in school. Let's go. They step into the portal, disappearing into the unknown, ready to unravel the interstellar web of intrigue and scandal.
Horty, I've come up with a plan to save the entire universe. Oh geez, Rick, what's the plan this time? We're going to travel to the dimension where every problem is solved by farting rainbows. Farting rainbows? Seriously, Rick? Yeah, Morty, it's a real scientific phenomenon. Plus, it'll solve all our problems and make everyone happy. I don't know, Rick. It sounds kind of ridiculous. Ridiculous? Morty, when have I ever let you down? Trust me, this is genius. All right, fine. Let's do it. But can we make a quick stop? There's this cool window display I want to check out. Morty, we have a universe to save and you want to look at a window display? Seriously? Come on, Rick. It'll only take a minute. There's this green vase with flowers that's calling my name. Fine, Morty. But only if we can make it quick. We don't have time for your window shopping adventures. Thanks, Rick. You won't regret it, I promise. Scene shifts to the window display. Look at all those flowers, Rick. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Can we move on now? Just a few more minutes, Rick. I need to appreciate the artistry. Scene shifts to Jerry's misadventures. Oh boy, here I go again. I'm gonna be the best lover in the whole universe. Scene shifts to Jerry's interdimensional admirer. Jerry's admirer. Oh Jerry, your reputation precedes you. I've heard so much about your skills. Really? I mean, of course you have. I'm the greatest lover in all dimensions. Jerry's admirer. Well, let me put your skills to the test then. Show me what you got. Scene shifts back to Rick and Morty. Morty, we've wasted enough time here. Let's get back to saving the universe. All right, Rick. But can we swing by breaking bad universe next? I heard Jerry is the kingpin there. Morty, you never cease to amaze me with your weird requests. But hey, why the hell not? Let's go. Scene transitions to the next dimension as Rick and Morty continue their wild adventures. Morty, pass me that spool of thread over there. We've got some serious scientific stitching to do. Uh, Rick, what are we gonna stitch with thread? Morty, this isn't just any ordinary thread. It's made from the rarest material in the universe, terbium. It's the key ingredient to unraveling Jupiter Jezebel jitters. Uh, Jupiter what now? Jupiter Jezebel jitters, Morty. It's a rare phenomenon that causes uncontrollable laughter in the gas clouds of Jupiter. Wow, that sounds, ah, uh, interesting, Rick. You bet it is, Morty. But we can't let it spread to Earth. That's why we need to stitch a protective barrier around our atmosphere using this powerful terbium thread. Interrupting. Ah, uh, excuse me, but isn't this a job for, ah, uh, professionals? Like scientists? Jerry, we are professionals. Now, hand me that file. We need to gather all the scientific data on Jupiter Jezebel jitters. Sarcastically, yeah, because stitching with terbium thread is the epitome of science. Actually, it is, Beth. It's a highly advanced technique that requires precise calculations and unparalleled craftsmanship. Whatever, Rick. Just make sure you don't accidentally stitch your fingers together. Oh, please, Summer. I've never made a mistake in my life. Now, let's get to work before the jitters start infecting the entire galaxy. Whispering, Rick, I don't think this is gonna end well. Morty, have a little faith in your old grandpa. I've got this under control. Whispering to Jerry, do you think they know what they're doing? Whispering back, honestly, I have no idea. But it's always entertaining to watch them try. Alright, everyone, prepare for the most groundbreaking stitching operation in history. Once we secure Earth, we'll be hailed as heroes. Heroes? I thought we were just trying to avoid gas-induced laughter. Morty, when you're as smart as me, even the simplest tasks become heroic feats. Now, let's save the world one stitch at a time. Muttering, I can't believe I'm witnessing this. Oh, Jerry, embrace the chaos. It's what makes our family unique. Yeah, 
Dad, just enjoy the ride. Who knows, maybe they'll accidentally create a new fashion trend. Fashion trend, Morty. Add that to our list of potential side effects. The Earth needs protection, and some cutting-edge style wouldn't hurt either. Size, here we go again. Another day in the crazy world of Rick and Morty. All right, Morty. Let's get Swifty and embark on yet another wild adventure. Oh geez, Rick, I'm not sure about this one. It seems pretty out there even for us. Out there, Morty, we redefine the term, out there, on a daily basis. Now buckle up and get ready for some mind-blowing science. Now hold on a minute, Rick. I don't know if this is such a good idea. We should probably consider the consequences before jumping in headfirst. Consequences. Jerry, since when did consequences ever stop us? We're practically immune to the laws of nature. Yeah, Dad, live a little. Let's do something crazy and exhilarating for once. Finally, someone with some spunk. All right, we're all going on this adventure, whether you like it or not. All right, let's do it. But can we at least take some precautions this time? I don't want another incident like last week. Morty, you worry too much. Just trust me. Everything will work out, probably. Scene cuts to the woman in the blue dress sitting in the forest, holding two glowing lights. Woman, welcome, travelers. I have summoned you all here for a great purpose. Oh great, another dimension hopping, existential crisis inducing prophecy. Just what I needed today. I have a bad feeling about this, guys. Can we just go back home? Dad, stop being such a buzzkill. Embrace the weirdness. Um, excuse me, miss. Can you tell us what this great purpose is? Woman, the fate of the universe rests in your hands. Only by harnessing the mystical powers of these lights can you save all existence from impending doom. Doom, you say? Well, that's my middle name. Let's get this show on the road. Scene transitions to everyone sitting in silence, their eyebrows furrowed in deep concentration. Raises eyebrow. Raises eyebrow back raises both eyebrows dramatically. Nervously raises a single eyebrow. Scene continues with a few more rounds of eyebrow communication until they all burst into laughter. All right, all right, enough with the silent communication. Let's get to work and save the universe. But how do we even begin? These lights are just, well, lights. Woman, ah, uh, young Morty, the true power lies within you. Believe in yourselves and you shall unlock their potential. That's it? Just believe? Well, I guess it's worth a shot. They all close their eyes and concentrate, believing in their abilities with utmost determination. Scene fades out as the glowing lights start to pulsate with energy. To be continued. Hey, Morty, you gotta see this. I've created a device that allows us to enter the minds of animals. Whoa, Rick, isn't that kind of invasive? Invasive? Morty, science doesn't care about personal space or privacy. Now, let's strap on these mind-warping helmets and dive into the mind of that duck over there. Duck, quack, quack. Ah, uh, Rick, why is this duck's mind filled with images of boats and people? Well, Morty, Turns out this particular duck has some unusual desires. Don't kink shame the duck, Morty, it's 2022. All right, but what about the man standing by the lake? Um, why is there a talking duck? No time to explain, buddy. We're just collecting data for our groundbreaking research. Carry on. Rick, this is getting out of hand. What about that baby goose swimming in Pepsi? Morty, that's no ordinary baby goose. That's the key to unlocking the mysteries of carbonated beverages. We need to get inside its mind before Coca-Cola finds out. Baby Goose, hunk, hunk. Rick, I think we're taking this science thing a little too far. Nonsense, Morty. 
there are no limits to scientific exploration. Now, let's dive deeper into the mind of that baby goose and uncover the secrets of its sugary journey. I'm starting to question our moral compass here, Rick. Morals, schmorals, Morty. We're blazing new trails in the realm of interspecies communication. Just think of the knowledge we'll gain. Yeah, but at what cost? I mean, we're invading the privacy of innocent creatures. Morty, sometimes you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And sometimes, you have to invade a few animal minds to further the boundaries of scientific understanding. It's all about perspective, Morty. I don't know, Rick. This feels wrong. Trust me, Morty, when we're published in scientific journals, they'll be calling us pioneers. Now, put on your big boy pants and embrace the wild ride of interspecies mind exploration. Fine, but if I get attacked by a swarm of angry ducks, I'm blaming you, Rick. Fair enough, Morty. Just remember, science waits for no one. Let's go. Adventure awaits us in the minds of these misunderstood creatures. And so, Rick and Morty embarked on their wildest and most controversial scientific endeavor yet, diving deeper into the minds of animals like no one had ever done before. Little did they know, this journey would lead them to uncovering secrets, testing their own ethical boundaries, and redefining what it truly means to push the limits of scientific exploration. Int. Smith Family Kitchen, Day. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Squanchy are gathered around a table topped with bowls of food. Rick eyes the plate of chicken wings. Sarcastically. Oh, look, healthy broccoli. How exciting. Come on, Rick. Broccoli is good for you. It's a superfood. Superfood? My ass. Let's talk about something truly daring, like food challenges. Nervously? Food challenges? I don't know, Rick. They can get pretty intense. Squanchy, intense. I eat intensity for breakfast. Let's do this. All right, Morty, you start. Take a bite of this ultra spicy ghost pepper chicken wing. Hesitant, are you sure, Rick? That sounds like a bad idea. Come on, Morty, live a little. This is the pursuit of scientific knowledge. Morty takes a bite of the chicken wing and immediately starts sweating and gasping for air. Choking! Rick KK, it's so hot! Why did I agree to this? Laughing. You agreed because you're my sidekick, Morty. And sidekicks do what their heroes say. Jerry, feeling left out, bravely grabs a wing from the plate and takes a big bite. Mouth full. Hmm. Not so bad. I can handle spicy food. Just as Jerry finishes his sentence, his face turns red, and steam starts coming out of his ears. Panicked, it's burning. My mouth is on fire. Squanchy, chuckles. You amateurs think this is challenging? Watch this. Squanchy grabs a handful of chicken wings and devours them in seconds, not even flinching. Impressed. Squanchy, you never cease to amaze me. Squanchy, burping. I live for these moments, Rick. Nothing can beat my adventurous spirit. As the chaos continues, Summer enters the kitchen. Confused. What the hell is going on here? Food challenges, Summer. It's all about pushing boundaries, exploring new tastes, and inducing temporary pain. Laughs. You guys are ridiculous. Pass me the chicken wings. I'll show you how it's done. They all look at Summer in awe as she fearlessly joins in the food challenge fun. The laughter, the heat, and the absurdity fill the room as the Smith family engages in an outrageous food challenge battle. Fade out. Title, Beach Drama, The Perfect Hand. Location, a picturesque beach on a sunny day, 
I spot a person holding a cell phone with the word, phone talk, written in the sand. Little do I know, this simple sight will set off a chain of events that will shake up our lives. As I approach the person with curiosity, I accidentally kick a seashell that flies straight into a nearby sand castle, destroying it in one fell swoop. Suddenly, a voice erupts from the phone demanding to know who destroyed their masterpiece. Frantically, I search for the person responsible for the sandcastle. As I gaze around, my eyes meet with a group of beachgoers, the self-proclaimed sandcastle squad. Emma, the artistic guru, Jake, the sand sculpting prodigy, and Mike, the competitive show-off. Emma, angrily, who ruined our sandcastle? It was a masterpiece. Jake, pointing towards me, I think it was them. What do you have to say for yourself? E. Nervously, it was an accident. I didn't mean to ruin your sandcastle. Mike, sarcastically, oh yeah, coincidental accidents happen all the time, don't they? In an effort to make amends, I propose a challenge to the sandcastle squad, a competition to see who can create the most impressive sand sculpture. E. Confidently, I challenge you all, let's settle this with a friendly contest. May the best sand artist win. As the competition heats up, I witness an unexpected twist. The seashell I had accidentally kicked earlier turns out to be a rare and valuable artifact buried beneath the sand. News spreads, and suddenly everyone wants a piece of the action. News reporter. Excitedly, we have just received word that a valuable artifact has been found on this very beach. It's causing a frenzy among collectors. In a serendipitous turn of events, my simple beach encounter and accidental sandcastle destruction lead to the discovery of a valuable treasure. The Sandcastle Squad, once adversaries, join forces and decide to use their skills to create a magnificent sand sculpture depicting the journey they've been through. Emma, determined, no more fighting. Let's create something memorable together. Jake, nodding, agreed. It's time to put our artistic talents to good use. Mike, grinning, the perfect hand, united in art and treasure. As the sun sets, the Sandcastle Squad unveils their masterpiece and is met with applause and admiration from the beachgoers. Our unexpected adventure taught us the importance of forgiveness, teamwork, and the beauty that can arise from even the most unforeseen circumstances. Fade out.
Hey Morty, have you seen my portal gun? No, Rick, I haven't seen it. Maybe you left it in another dimension again. Don't be a smartass, Morty. I need that portal gun to get out of here. Well, maybe if you didn't use it to chase after every interdimensional hottie, you wouldn't keep losing it. Oh, please, like you wouldn't do the same if you were as clever and irresistible as me. Yeah, sure, Rick. I'm sure all those ladies are just lining up for a date with a scrawny teenager. Watch it, Morty. I've been through more dimensions than you can even imagine. Yeah, yeah, dimension hopping Casanova. Can we just focus on finding the portal gun? We've got a live stream to do. Fine, fine. Let's just hope I didn't leave it in that dimension where everyone wears clown noses. Oh, that place gave me nightmares. I still can't look at a circus without cringing. Well, while we're here. We might as well jump into a different dimension and see what kind of trouble we can stir up. Can't we just have a normal, non-scandalous adventure for once? Morty, my boy, where's the fun in that? I don't know, maybe not getting chased by interdimensional bounty hunters? Ah, come on, Morty. It builds character, plus, it makes for great stories to tell the grandkids. I'm pretty sure our grandkids would appreciate a quiet, peaceful life. Well. Maybe they can go watch a historic dates quiz instead. We're here for the chaos, Morty. You're impossible, Rick. Just impossible. That's why you love me, Morty. Now let's go find my portal gun and get this interdimensional love triangle started. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I miss the days when all we did was battle aliens and save the universe. Trust me, Morty. It's much more entertaining being caught up in Rick Sanchez's scandalous interdimensional romances. Sigh. Here we go again. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to enter a dimension where anything goes. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? It looks kinda crazy. Trust me, Morty, we've seen crazier. Remember that time we turned ourselves into pickles? Yeah, but this is next level. I mean, just look at that abstract background with a black hole in the center. It's pulsating with passion. Pulsating like my scandalous past as a heartbreaker in the multiverse. But we're not here to reminisce. We've got a mission. What's the mission this time, Rick? Saving the galaxy? Defeating some evil alien overlord? Ah, uh, no, Morty. We're participating in the Princess Leia Ninja cooking contest. And I'm gonna win. Seriously? Cooking? I thought we were all about interdimensional adventures and saving the universe. Look, Morty, a man's gotta eat. And a grand feast cooked by the galaxy's finest chefs is worth risking our lives for. Alright, fine. But can't we just use our portal gun to get some ingredients from different dimensions? Morty, cooking is an art. It's about combining flavors and creating something unique. We can't cheat our way through this. I guess you're right, Rick. Let's do this. But can we at least avoid any more scandalous encounters with heartbroken exes? No promises, Morty. The multiverse is a wild place. Now, grab your apron. It's time to get cooking. Dash dash dash. So, Rick, how'd you end up in a cooking contest? I thought you were more into interdimensional science stuff. Jerry, sometimes a man needs to explore different hobbies. Plus, I've always had a passion for cooking. You know, I used to be quite the chef in the multiverse. Really? You were a chef? I never would have guessed. What was your specialty? Everything, Jerry. I could cook up anything you can imagine. From gourmet alien delicacies to the finest earth cuisines. I was a culinary genius. That's impressive, Rick. So, what's the plan for the contest? Are you going to use any of your scientific gadgets? Ah, oh, Jerry, this contest is all about skill. I want to prove that I can dominate in the kitchen without relying on my gadgets. Well, good luck then. I hope you win. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two about cooking someday. Maybe, Jerry, but don't get your hopes up. Cooking is an art that requires precision, creativity, and a flair for the unexpected. It's not something everyone can master. Yeah, I know. 
I've had my fair share of kitchen mishaps. Remember that time I tried to make pancakes and ended up burning down the kitchen? Isaac Jerry, now let's focus on the contest. I've got a reputation to uphold, and winning this thing will solidify my status as the ultimate interdimensional chef. Title, The Forbidden Fruit. Int. Park. Day. I strolled through the park, enjoying the beautiful weather and minding my own business. Suddenly, I spot a woman, Lucy, with a yellow apple on her shoulder, another in her mouth, and a basket of oat pies and mangoes in her hands. My curiosity peaks. Lucy, innocently. Oh, how I love my yellow apples and oat pies. So delicious. I can't help myself. I approach Lucy, intrigued by her peculiar fashion choices and fruity treats. Me, intrigued, excuse me, but why the yellow apple on your shoulder? Without missing a beat, Lucy turns to me with a sly smile. Lucy, mischievously, oh, dear stranger, this yellow apple is my fashion statement. It symbolizes my love for all things fruity and vibrant in life. My mind spins, trying to comprehend the depth of her reasoning. Me, bewildered, fascinating, and the apple in your mouth? Lucy, playfully, ah, this apple represents the forbidden fruit, a little taste of temptation for those who dare to come close. Suddenly, a zephyr blows through, ruffling the leaves and catching Lucy's attention. Lucy, excitedly, did you feel that? The wind just whispered to me, conspiring secrets of the universe. I'm now fully engrossed in the enigma that is Lucy, eager to uncover more. Me, curious, so, Lucy, what's with the oat pies and mangoes? Lucy, seductively, my dear, these oat pies and mangoes symbolize the duality of life, the sweetness and the nourishment in every bite. A group of onlookers gathers around us, captivated by Lucy's mystical aura. Onlooker 1, whispering, did you see those yellow apples? What a fashion trendsetter. Onlooker 2, awestruck, I heard she can communicate with nature itself. As the crowd grows, Lucy revels in the attention, her waifu-like charm captivating everyone. Lucy, charmingly, embrace the unusual, my darlings. Let your true selves shine through the unconventional. The atmosphere becomes electric with anticipation, as if we're part of a grand experiment of the human psyche. Me, Epiphany, Lucy, you've opened my eyes. Life is a rich tapestry of flavors and experiences. Lucy, wisely, indeed, my dear friend. Embrace the unconventional, and let the world marvel at your uniqueness. With her words echoing in my mind, we part ways, forever touched by the transformative encounter. As I walk away, I can't help but wonder how many more adventurous spirits like Lucy roam the world, waiting to be discovered. Fade out. Morty, we've got a situation here. A girl with red hair is staring at pies on a table, with pie pans all around her. Oh geez, Rick, are we really gonna get involved in someone's obsession with pies? Morty, trust me, this goes deeper than pies. It's a psychological minefield. Okay, but what's the big deal? Well Morty, this girl's obsession with pies could lead to the collapse of the entire multiverse. Collapse of the multiverse? That seems a bit extreme, Rick. Extreme, Morty. This girl's pie fixation has reached an unprecedented level. It's like she's tapped into a pie apocalypse dimension. I guess we have to do something about it then. But just don't drag me into any pie fights, okay? Morty, we're way past pie fights. This is a battle of wits and psychological warfare. Get ready for some mind-bending pie action. Mind-bending pie action? I don't even want to know what that means, Rick. Morty. You're just a kid. You can't handle the intense pie strategies that are about to go down. Size, fine, Rick. 
Just promise me we won't end up covered in pie again. No promises, Morty. Anything can happen when pies are involved. Great, just great. I can't wait to explain to Jessica why I smell like pie. Thanks, Rick. Don't worry, Morty. Jessica loves pie. It might actually work in your favor. You think so? No, not really. But it's worth a shot, right? I guess so. Let's just get this pie adventure over with. Buckle up, Morty. It's gonna be a wild, pie-filled ride. Can't wait. What's all this commotion about? I heard something about pies. Pies? Oh, I love pies. Are there any left? Oh great, now the whole family wants to get involved in this pie madness. I told you, Rick. Pies always cause trouble. Count me in. I'm a pie connoisseur. I know all the best recipes. Well, at least we have a pie expert on our side. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but let's save the multiverse from pies, guys. That's the spirit, Morty. Let the pie adventure begin. All right, Morty, we've got another crazy adventure ahead of us. Strap in. Jeez, Rick, I hope it's not as bad as the last one. I'm still traumatized. Oh, please, Morty, you need to toughen up. We're about to dive into the realm of interdimensional dating. Interdimensional dating? What the hell does that even mean, Rick? Means we're gonna crash a singles party in a parallel universe and see how the locals flirt. Are you serious? That sounds dangerous. Of course it's dangerous, Morty. But that's what makes it fun. Now, let's go find our interdimensional wingman. Hey guys, what's going on? I heard there's a party? Jerry, I didn't invite you. This is strictly a no-loser zone. Well, I just thought. Uh what, Jerry? That you could actually be cool for once? Alright, boys, let's not fight. I'll go with you, Rick. Interdimensional dating sounds intriguing. Count me in too. I want to see how other versions of me are getting dates. Fine, we'll bring the whole dysfunctional family. Just don't embarrass me. But Rick, what if we run into evil Morty again? I don't think I can handle that. Morty, quit being such a wuss. Evil Morty is nothing compared to the interdimensional ladies we're about to encounter. So, Rick, how do we even know where to find this singles party? Well, luckily. I've hacked into the interdimensional Tinder and got us all invites. We're gonna party like nobody's watching. Rick, is this really safe? I mean, what if we get stuck in another dimension? Beth, shut up and live a little. Adventure is the spice of life. Okay, but what if I don't find a date? Will that make me a failure? Jerry, you're always a failure. But maybe, just maybe, you'll find someone more pathetic than you. I'm starting to think this was a bad idea, Rick. Maybe we should just stay home. Morty, if you want to stay home and watch paint dry, be my guest. But the rest of us are gonna have a damn good time. All right, let's do this. I want to meet a version of me who's actually happy. And I want to see if there's a dimension where Jerry isn't a complete disappointment. Hey! All right, everyone, let's fire up the portal. It's time for some interdimensional romance. They all step through the portal, ready for whatever awaits them on the other side. All right. Morty, listen up. We've got a top secret mission, and it's gonna blow your mind. Oh, okay, Rick. What's the mission? We're gonna use my brand new invention to communicate with cats. Communicate with cats? Seriously, Rick? That's your big idea? Morty, cats are highly intelligent beings. They hold the secrets of the universe within their tiny, furry bodies. I guess, but how are we gonna test it? We'll start with Beth's cats. 
they're perfect guinea pigs for our experiment. What are you two up to now? Science, Beth. Groundbreaking, mind-blowing science. Just promise me you won't turn them into some sort of mutant cat monsters again. No promises, Beth. Hey, look! The communication device is working! Finally, the cats can tell us their deepest desires, like belly rubs and knocking things off tables. This is weirdly fascinating, Rick. Can we try it on the neighbor's cat? Morty, we're not responsible for what happens if we start messing with other people's pets. But, come on, just imagine the possibilities. Fine, Morty, but don't blame me when the neighbor's cat starts demanding the destruction of humanity. I think I can handle it, Rick. Let's do this. All right, strap in, Morty. This is gonna be one wild ride. Oh boy, here we go again. To infinity and beyond, Morty. Let's go talk to some cats. All right, let's see what this yellow-eyed furball has to say. Cat 1, bow down, humans. For I am the supreme ruler of the feline world. Rick, we've made a huge mistake. No kidding, Morty. Cats are way too power-hungry for their own good. I guess we should stick to communicating with humans, huh? Definitely, Morty. Lesson learned. Let's never mess with the cats again. Agreed, Rick. Now, can we please go back to the boring old adventures? As long as they don't involve talking animals, Morty. Now, where did we leave that portal gun? Right here, Rick. Let's get out of here before these cats start a revolution. Good idea, Morty. Let's get the hell out of Catland. Title, The Demon's Conundrum Episode Recap In a bizarre twist of fate, our beloved cartoon character, Morty, find himself accompanied by a mischievous demon perched on his back and another demon resting atop his head. As if that weren't strange enough, a sassy cat named Whiskers, with a reputation for being a troublemaker, enters the scene. Chaos ensues when Whiskers unexpectedly springs into action, landing a punch on Morty, setting off a chain of events that will leave our characters in hilarious disarray. Scene 1, Living Room Morty, what a day! Well, at least I have my trusty cartoons to keep me company. Scene shifts to Morty, who is sitting on the couch, watching TV. Suddenly, a demon appears on his back. Demon on head, DH, Morty, Morty, watch out. There's a malevolent being lurking behind you. Morty, what? Oh great, another one of you guys? Can a cartoon character catch a break? Scene transitions to Whiskers entering with a cheeky grin on his face. Whiskers, well, 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 look who we have here. Morty with not one, but two demons. Demon on back, DB. Whiskers, you've always been a thorn in our supernatural sides. Scene escalates as Whiskers launches himself at Morty, landing a punch square in the face. Morty, ouch. What the heck, Whiskers? I thought we were pals. Whiskers, Morty, my friend, sometimes a cat's got to do what a cat's got to do. Scene transitions to Morty's stunned face, the demons watching in disbelief. Demon on back, DB. Morty, have you been harboring secret alliances with cats? Morty, what? No, of course not. Whiskers and I are just pals, but he can be a real troublemaker. Scene progresses as Morty and the demons engage in a heated debate. Morty, look, guys, I didn't ask for these demons on my back and head. Can't we find a way to coexist without all the drama? Demon on head, DH, coexist. Morty, you have no idea what it's like to bear the weight of our presence. Scene shifts to a light-hearted moment as Whiskers interjects. Whiskers, oh, cry me a river, demons. At least you don't have to deal with hairballs and litter boxes. Scene escalates further as Morty, the demons, and Whiskers engage in a heated argument. Demon on back, DB. Morty, our fate is intertwined. We must find a way to understand each other. Whiskers, and I suggest we start by accepting the cat's rule and demon's draw. Scene concludes with Morty contemplating the situation. Morty, maybe there's a way for us to navigate this bizarre predicament. 
After all, we're all just a bunch of misfits trying to fit in. Fade out. Our trio of unlikely allies embarks on a quest to find a resolution that allows them to coexist. Through their hilarious escapades and surprising bonds, they discover the true meaning of acceptance and friendship. No matter how odd or improbable, sometimes the unlikeliest alliances can lead to the most extraordinary adventures. Morty, I've got an idea for our next adventure. We're gonna dive headfirst into the world of anime. Oh geez, Rick, do we really have to go down that route? I mean, isn't our regular multiverse enough? Morty, science knows no boundaries. We're gonna meet this anime girl named Urza Scarlet. She's got blue eyes, red hair, and a badass attitude. Okay, but what's with the baseball bat? Is she some kind of anime sports star? Aw, oh, Morty. Turns out she's a demon-slaying warrior with insane magical powers. We'll join her on a journey to defeat evil and save the world. Wow, that sounds pretty intense, Rick. But isn't that just a typical anime plotline? Typical, Morty. You clearly don't understand the beauty of the anime world. It's filled with scandalous love triangles, outrageous fights, and mind-bending twists. I guess I'll have to take your word for it, Rick. So, when do we leave? Soon, Morty. But first, we need to visit Summer's alien girlfriend. She's been studying anime culture for years and can give us some essential tips. Wait, Summer has a girlfriend from another planet? This just keeps getting weirder, Rick. Come on, Morty. We're all about breaking boundaries here. Love knows no limits, even across galaxies. Alright, alright. I'll go along with it, but please promise me we won't get stuck in some ridiculous anime filler episode. I make no guarantees, Morty. But trust me, it'll be a wild adventure filled with clashing swords, interdimensional travels, and maybe even a few saucy moments. Saucy moments? Rick, this is supposed to be a family show. Morty, when have we ever followed the rules? We're gonna push the boundaries of what's acceptable, and it's gonna be unapologetically hilarious. I just hope we don't get banned from television. That's half the fun, Morty. Now, let's get ready to dive into the risque world of anime. It's gonna be one hell of a ride. I have a feeling I'm gonna regret this, but hey, who am I to argue? Let's go, Rick! Int. Living room, day. The room is dimly lit, with a black and white photo of a crossword puzzle hanging on the wall, capturing everyone's attention. Jason, a crossword enthusiast, excitedly points at the photo. Jason, guys, look at this crossword puzzle photo I found. It's mind-boggling. Lisa, the brainy mathematician, leans closer to examine the photo. Lisa. Fascinating, the composition of this crossword seems to defy traditional puzzle norms. It's riddled with unconventional patterns and interconnections. Mike, the skeptic, chuckles and shakes his head. Mike, oh please, it's just a bunch of random letters thrown together. Probably means nothing. Amy, the crossword novice, takes a closer look and gasps. Amy, wait, I think I see a hidden message here. It says, the adventure awaits. Everyone freezes as if hit by a bolt of lightning. They exchange curious glances. Jason, excitedly, could it be a clue leading us to an extraordinary adventure? The doorbell rings, interrupting their conversation. The group turns to see their property manager standing at the entrance. Property manager, hey, guys, just came by to collect the rent. Amy, whispering, shish, he mustn't know about the crossword puzzle. They hand over the rent money quietly, then rush back to the living room. Jason, okay, we have a mystery to solve here. Let's decode this crossword and find out what lies beyond. They gather around a table, armed with pens and papers, ready for the challenge. Lisa, 
This crossword seems to have hidden clues within clues, leading us on a hyperjump of intellectual exploration. Like, sarcastically, oh great, so we're playing detective now? Amy, determined, we're in this together, guys. We'll solve it, no matter what. Hours pass as they maneuver through the complex puzzle, deciphering cryptic hints and filling in the blanks. Amy, wait, I think I got it. It's a set of coordinates. We're going on a honeymoon in space. Jason, in disbelief, a hyperjump honeymoon? That's out of this world. They pack their bags, filled with excitement and laughter, ready for their intergalactic adventure. Lisa, let's go, my fellow puzzle enthusiasts. We're about to embark on a journey where science meets adventure. As they wave goodbye to their old lives, the crossword photo remains on the wall, a reminder of the extraordinary journey they're about to embark on. Fade out. All right, Morty, listen up. We got a new adventure on our hands. We need to travel back in time to fix Beth's alien boyfriend problem. Wait, what? Why do we have to mess with Beth's love life? Because her boyfriend is actually a time-traveling paparazzi and he's causing all sorts of trouble. We gotta set things right before he messes up the timeline. Dad, I don't need you meddling in my relationships. I can handle it myself. Oh please, Beth. You're clueless when it comes to these things. Just trust me on this one. Hey, can I come along? I want to see some time travel action. Fine, Summer. But remember, no messing with the timeline or I'll disown you. So, how are we gonna find this time traveling paparazzi? I've got a device that can detect anomalies in the timeline. We just have to follow the disturbances and find him. This whole situation is insane. I can't believe my love life has become a sci-fi adventure. Welcome to the world we live in, Beth. Strange laws and regulations, alien boyfriends, and dark matter divorces are just the tip of the iceberg. Wait, dark matter divorce? What's that? It's when two beings made entirely of dark matter decide to end their cosmic union. Trust me, it's messy. Look, guys, the device is beeping. We're getting closer to the time-traveling paparazzi. Drap yourselves in. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Dad, can't you just let me handle this on my own? No, oh, sorry Beth, this is a family affair now. Ah, uh, Rick, are we gonna have to deal with any dangerous beings during this mission? Oh, you betcha, we might come across some time-traveling assassins or reality-bending entities. It's gonna be fun. I can't believe I get to be a part of this. It's like being in a crazy sci-fi movie. Well, that's the time we live in, Summer. Expect the unexpected and always bring a towel. I still can't believe I'm stuck in this mess because of my boyfriend. Don't worry, Beth. We'll fix everything and you'll be back to your normal, mundane life in no time. Hey, Rick, what happens if we mess up the timeline? Oh, Morty, the consequences could be disastrous. We might end up merging with alternate versions of ourselves or creating a paradox that destroys the universe. That sounds exciting. Let's do this. Buckle up, kids. We're about to embark on a time-traveling adventure that'll make your head spin. And remember, no messing with the timeline or I'll be really, really disappointed in you. All right, Morty, listen up. I've got a new adventure for us that's gonna blow your mind. Oh no, not another one of your crazy ideas, Rick. I'm still traumatized from the last time. Don't worry, Morty. This one is gonna be a total blast. We're going to explore the wildest, most scandalous bedroom in the universe. Scandalous bedroom? What are you even talking about, Rick? I've heard rumors, Morty, 
rumors of a bedroom that's filled with neon lights, mirrors, and wild extraterrestrial activities. Extraterrestrial activities? Are you saying aliens are getting it on in there? Bingo, Morty, but not just any aliens. These are the freakiest, most outrageous beings you can imagine. Size. All right, let's get this over with. But if things get too weird, I'm out. Deal, Morty. Now let's grab our gear and prepare for an adventure of a lifetime. Scene. Rick and Morty enter the bedroom, filled with neon lights and a large mirror. Startled. Oh my god. What are you guys doing here? Jerry, what the hell are you doing in this scandalous bedroom? Nervously, I, uh, thought it was the bathroom. Don't judge me. Well, we've got bigger problems. Look over there, Morty. Oh no, an alien infestation. This is getting out of hand, Rick. Don't worry, Morty. I've got just the thing. Pulls out alien bee gone spray. Scene. Rick and Morty fight off the alien creatures with the spray. That should take care of them. Now let's find out what's really going on in this cosmic rendezvous spot. Scene. Rick examines the room further, discovering a hidden compartment. What's in there, Rick? It's a ticket, Morty. A ticket to ride. We're going on a crazy interdimensional roller coaster adventure. Can't we just go home and forget about all of this? Morty, where's your sense of adventure? We've come this far. Might as well enjoy the ride. Scene. Rick, Morty, and Jerry enter the roller coaster, screaming in excitement. Over intercom. Welcome to Ticket to Ride, Europe. Get ready for the wildest, most scandalous ride of your life. Scene. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Summer scream and laugh as the roller coaster goes through intense loops and turns. This is what I'm talking about, Morty. Adventure, excitement, and a dash of scandal. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you were right, Rick. This is actually kind of fun. Scene. The roller coaster ride ends, and Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Summer stumble off, exhilarated. Well, Morty, looks like we survived another crazy adventure. What do you say we head home? Definitely, Rick. I need some time to process all of this. Scene. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Summer walk away from the roller coaster, sharing a laugh. Another day, another scandalous adventure. Who knows what's in store for us next? I'm starting to think I'll never get used to this, Rick. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's go grab some McDonald's and call it a day. Title, The Nebula Nymph Notoriety. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick and Morty are seated on the couch, watching TV. Hey, Rick, what's on? Just some interdimensional game show. Wanna watch? Sure, why not? They turn their attention to the TV screen. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Continuous. Host, on TV. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nebula Nymph Notoriety. I'm your host, Zoltar. Audience cheers. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Whoa, this show seems intense. Yeah, they throw contestants into wild interdimensional challenges. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Day. Bedo LTAR, our first challenge, contestants, is the dating sim marathon. You'll compete to win the heart of an interdimensional beauty. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Dating Sim? Oh, I'm terrible with girls. Relax, Morty. I'll guide you through it. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Night. Morty stumbles through the Dating Sim Challenge, with Rick whispering instructions. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. I don't understand any of this. Come on, Morty. Just play along. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Day. Morty fumbles and accidentally kisses the interdimensional beauty. Audience gasps and laughs. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Oh no, Rick! 
I messed up. Don't worry, Morty. It's just a game. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Night. Edo LTAR, and the winner of the Dating Sim Marathon is... Morty Smith. Audience erupts into applause. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Morty jumps up in excitement. Rick, I won! Can you believe it? Congrats, Morty. Now let's see what else this show has in store. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Day. Edo LTAR, now, on to the next challenge, the Costco Conundrum. Contestants must navigate through Costco while solving puzzles. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Costco? Really? Trust me, Morty, you'll be amazed at the existential secrets hidden there. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Night. Morty and Rick tackle the Costco conundrum, encountering bizarre creatures and mind-bending puzzles. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Rick, this Costco is insane! It's no regular Costco, Morty. It's an interdimensional retail playground. Int. Interdimensional Game Show Studio, Day. Beto LTAR, and the winners of the Costco conundrum are... Rick and Morty. Audience cheers louder than ever. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Morty and Rick high-five each other. We did it, Rick! We're unstoppable! Just another day in the life of interdimensional adventurers, Morty. Let's see where this show takes us next. The adventure continues as the duo prepares for the next challenge, with more outrageous and hilarious moments awaiting them. Fade out. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're going on another wild adventure through the multiverse. Oh geez, Rick, where are we going this time? Strap on your space diapers, Morty. We're heading to the planet Zoglan to witness an intergalactic dating show. Wait, what? You're taking me to a dating show? You think I need help finding love? Jerry, it'll be fun. You can't pass up this opportunity. Plus, it'll be a nice change from your usual mundane life. Yeah, Dad, take a chance for once. Who knows, maybe you'll find your soulmate on another planet. All right, all right, settle down. Morty, fire up the portal gun. We don't have all day. Why, yeah, Rick, portal gun, coming right up. Scene transitions to the planet Zoglon. The alien dating show stage is a futuristic extravaganza. Host, welcome to Love Among the Stars where aliens from across the universe compete for the affection of a lucky contestant. And today, that contestant is... Jerry Smith. Oh boy, this is gonna be something. Contestant 1, hello there, Jerry. I'm Zandrea from the planet Sordis. My tentacles are sure to love you. Contestant 2, greetings, Jerry. I'm Clara, the shape-shifting being. Whatever form you desire, I can be. Contestant 3, hey, Jerry. I'm Glimplox, the green alien with a love for fashion. Let me show you the intergalactic catwalk of love. Contestant 4. Salutations, Jerry. I am Zorblax, the master of interstellar cuisine. I'll cook up a love potion just for you. Ah, uh, Rick? Morty? What do I do? Just play it cool, Jerry. Pick the one that tickles your fancy the most. Yeah, Dad. Go follow your heart, or whatever you want to call it. Alright, let me think. I choose. Glimplox. Host, congratulations, Jerry. You and Glimplox are now on a cosmic journey of love. May the stars guide you. Scene transitions to Jerry and Glimplox on a romantic dinner date, surrounded by floating asteroids and shooting stars. Glimplox, Jerry, I must say, your human awkwardness is quite endearing. Ah, thanks Glimplox. You're not so bad yourself. Scene fades out with gentle laughter and cosmic ambiance. End of episode.
Int. Park. Day. Rick, Morty, Beth, and Summer are gathered in a park. The grass is green, and there's a purple dragon, Spyro, standing nearby. Kangaroos hop around in the background. Alright, listen up you schmoopy dudes. We're about to engage in an epic game of interdimensional dodgeball. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure it's safe? Couldn't we just play normal dodgeball? Morty, normal is for people who can't handle awesome. Get your head in the game. Rick, can we please just have a normal family outing for once? We don't always have to do these crazy things. Beth, when you were a kid, did you play it safe or did you have adventures? That's not the point, Rick. Can we hurry this up already? I'm supposed to meet my friends for an anime pun battle later. Fine, fine, let's get this over with. Morty, you take Spyro on your team. Wait, what? How am I supposed to control a dragon? Figure it out, Morty. It's either that or you can join the kangaroos. Grumbling? Fine, I'll take Spyro. Rick, I'm not playing if you don't promise no more crazy surprises. Deal, but only if you promise to let me give you a hot stone massage afterward. Size, fine, deal. They gather on opposite sides of the lawn, and the game begins. The dodgeballs fly through the air, narrowly missing everyone. Morty, use Spyro's fire breath. Oh, I don't know how. Just say, Dragon, unleash your fiery fury. Nervously, Dragon, unleash your fiery fury? Spyro spits out a stream of fire, burning the opposing team. Rick, you never mentioned Spyro could breathe fire. Surprise, Beth, that's why it's interdimensional dodgeball. The game continues, with ridiculous twists and turns. Eventually, Beth makes an incredible catch, winning the game for their team. Woohoo! We did it! Alright, alright, you all played well. Now, who's up for that hot stone massage? Fine, but no more surprises, Rick. I mean it. They all walk off, heading towards a nearby massage parlor, still buzzing with excitement from their outrageous game. Fade out. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick is tinkering with a device on the table while Morty watches in awe. Rick, what are you doing? Morty, I've created a device that can generate a computer-generated image of a floating island with a lot of plants and boats in the water. It's the ultimate vacation spot. Whoa, that's really cool, Rick. Can we go there? Absolutely, Morty. Just step into the portal and hold on tight. They step into the portal and find themselves on the floating island. Axed. Floating island, day. Rick and Morty explore the vibrant, lush island. Rick, this place is amazing. Look at all the plants and boats. Yeah, Morty, it's like a tropical paradise up in here. Suddenly, a humanoid alien approaches them. Alien. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Quantum Love Affair. Your presence fills my heart with excitement. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Morty, and this is my grandpa, Rick. Quantum love affair. Morty, your physical form is quite attractive. I suggest we engage in an interdimensional romance. Morty blushes, unsure of how to respond. Um, thanks, but I'm kind of seeing someone back on Earth. Quantum love affair. No matter, Morty. I will wait for you. Meanwhile, Summer encounters a mysterious alien named Californium. Hey, who are you? Californium. I am Californium, the embodiment of pure coolness. I've been watching you from afar and felt compelled to introduce myself. Wow, that's flattering, I guess. Californium, I sense great potential in you, Summer. Let me show you the wonders of the multiverse. As Summer considers Californium's offer, Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, appears out of thin air. Tim Berners-Lee, excuse me, but your existence is causing a disturbance in the interdimensional continuum. You must return to your own reality. 
Rick and Morty reunite with Summer and hastily bid farewell to their newfound acquaintances. All right, time to get back home, kids. They step into another portal, leaving the floating island behind. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick, Morty, and Summer return home, pondering their incredible interdimensional adventure. You know, Rick, that quantum love affair alien really had some strong feelings for me. Morty, love knows no boundaries, especially not when it involves interdimensional beings. And that Californium dude, he was really intriguing. I wonder what could have happened if I had explored that connection further. Well, Summer, the multiverse is full of infinite possibilities. Who knows what the future holds? They all share a knowing glance as the screen fades to black, leaving their interdimensional escapades behind. The End Hey Rick, have you seen the news? They just declared Kim Lepp from Luna as the Woman of the Year. Woman of the Year? Ha! Huh. What's so special about her? Well, apparently she's got this futuristic helmet and a diamond necklace. She's a real trendsetter, you know? Trendsetter, huh? I bet I can make a diamond necklace that can control time and space. That would really impress these so-called Women of the Year. Ah, uh, Rick, isn't that a bit, you know, over the top? We could get into some serious trouble with that. Morty, when have we ever cared about trouble? Time to show them what real innovation looks like. Later, at the Woman of the Year Award Ceremony. In Rip, thank you all for this incredible honor. I am truly grateful to be recognized as the Woman of the Year. Rick, whispers to Morty. Watch this, Morty. I'm about to steal the spotlight. Rick pulls out his time and space controlling diamond necklace, causing chaos in the room. In Rip, what the? Who's that crazy old man? Kim Lip, huh? Prepare to be upstaged. As Rick activates the necklace, time and space start glitching, and everyone in the room gets transported to a bizarre alternate dimension. Kim Lip, oh no, what have you done? Just another groundbreaking discovery, Kim Lip. Now, let's see if you can top this. Kim Lip takes out a microphone and starts singing, her voice reverberating through the dimension. Wow, Rick, despite the chaos, her singing is actually pretty mesmerizing. I'll admit, Morty, the girl's got talent. But can she handle the craziness we bring to the table? Inlip, look, I appreciate your attempt to steal my thunder, but let's find a way to get everyone back to the real world, alright? Well, 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 looks like the woman of the year has some smarts. Alright, let's fix this mess together. Rick and Kim Lip join forces and use their unique abilities to stabilize the dimension and bring everyone back to the award ceremony. Kim Lip, thank you, Rick. I guess even the woman of the year could use a little help from time to time. No problem, Kim Lip. Just remember, innovation doesn't always have to cause chaos. Sometimes, it's about making things better. As the crowd applauds, Rick and Morty teleport away to their next outrageous adventure. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on a scientific adventure that'll make the Thundercats look like a bunch of kittens. Jeez, Rick, I don't know if I can handle another one of your insane experiments. Last time, I turned into a fetus. Relax, Morty. This time we're gonna delve into the scandalous world of Scissor Snuggle. It's a mind-bending, interdimensional game that'll blow your mind. Can I come too? I'm dying to try out this new cat ear and tail accessory. Sure. Summer, just remember, this isn't a game for the faint-hearted. It's gonna get spicy. What exactly is at stake here, Rick? Well, Morty, if we win, we get to control the fate of the entire universe. If we lose, we become the laughing stock of the multiverse. 
Sounds like a typical day in the life of a smith. All right, buckle up, kiddos. We're about to enter the scissor snuggle realm. Nervously, uh, Rick, what are the rules of this game? Rules, Morty, the only rule is that there are no rules. It's a cutthroat battle of wit, strategy, and scandal. I'm ready for anything. Let's snatch those cat ears of victory. Easy there, Summer. This game isn't for the weak. It's gonna push you to your limits. Are you prepared for that? Bring it on, Rick. I'm ready to show off my sassy, scandalous side. I can't believe I'm getting dragged into this. Can we at least take a bathroom break before we start? Morty, we don't have time for bathroom breaks. This is a high-stakes mission. Hold it in like a man. I'm not sure if my bladder can handle the pressure, Rick. Well, if you pee yourself, Morty, just remember, it's all in the name of science. Whispering to Morty, I brought some adult diapers just in case. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. All right, everyone, suit up. It's time to conquer the multiverse of scandalous proportions. Can we at least have some snacks for the journey, Rick? I'm gonna need some fuel to survive this madness. Snacks, Morty, this isn't a picnic. We're entering a dimension where snacks are a sign of weakness. Unless you count scandal as a snack. I guess scandal is better than nothing. Let's do this. That's the spirit, Morty. Prepare yourselves for the most scandal-mongering, shocking, and rib-tickling adventure of your lives. I'm so excited, I might just explode. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. We don't want to leave a mess for the cleaning crew. Can we at least have some music to lighten the mood, Rick? Fine, Morty, but only if you promise not to play any Thundercats theme songs. Oh, come on, Rick. Let Morty have his Thundercats jam. Fine, fine. Just don't blame me if it attracts unwanted attention from interdimensional Thundercats groupies. Thanks, Rick. I'll be sure to keep it low-key. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's dive headfirst into the scandalous world of Scissor Snuggle. Brace yourselves, kiddos. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Morty, we've got a new adventure ahead of us. We need to crash Summer's wedding and save her from making a huge mistake. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure we should interfere? It's her big day and all. Morty, when have we ever cared about anyone's big day? We're here for the chaos and drama, buddy. Frustrated, seriously, guys? Can't you just let me have this one day of normalcy? Normalcy is overrated, Summer. We're here to add some spice to this boring affair. Yeah, Summer, embrace the madness. Weddings are for suckers anyway. Wedding planner, excuse me, gentlemen. You can't just barge in here. This is a private event. Private event? Please, we invented private events. Now, step aside or face the consequences. Whispering, Rick, you can't just threaten people at my wedding. Relax, Summer, it's all part of the plan. Now, where's this Michaels guy? Michaels, nervously, um, hi. I'm Michaels, the wedding planner. Can I help you? Michaels, we need you to cause some mayhem. Think you can handle that? Michaels, confused, mayhem? I thought I was supposed to make this wedding perfect. Perfectly chaotic, Michaels. We need explosions, surprises, the whole shebang. Summer's multiverse fame, from the crowd. Oh my god, it's Summer's multiverse fame. Smirking. Looks like our reputation precedes us, Summer. Rolling her eyes. Great, just what I needed on my special day. Let's get this party started. Morty, activate the portal device and let the chaos ensue. Hesitant, I don't know, Rick. This feels like a really bad idea. Morty, bad ideas are our specialty. Trust me, it'll be legendary. Sighing, fine, let's do it. But please, try not to blow up the entire venue. No promises, Summer. Buckle up, everyone. It's gonna be a wild ride. Scene transitions into a sequence of outrageous events, including a dance-off between aliens, a cake fight, and the bride's grandmother revealing a scandalous secret. Scene shifts to aftermath. Well, that was one for the books. You happy now, Summer? 
Actually, Rick, I am. Chaos and all, this turned out to be a wedding I'll never forget. Yeah, I guess sometimes it's okay to embrace the madness. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, who's up for some interdimensional pancakes? Scene ends with laughter and the characters enjoying a chaotic yet memorable breakfast. Alright, Morty, buckle up for another mind-bending adventure through the cosmos. Jeez, Rick, I hope it's not another one of your crazy, unethical experiments. Morty, you worry too much. The universe is our playground, and I'm the master of chaos. Size, I guess I don't have much of choice, do I? That's the spirit, Morty. Now, hold on tight as we travel to a parallel dimension where all the laws of physics are reversed. Oh great, another dimension? Can't we just go to the arcade? Morty, the arcade is for loser dweebs. We're gonna discover the secrets of the multiverse. Fine, but last time we did this, I ended up with three extra limbs for a week. Relax, Morty. This time, we're gonna outsmart the celestial beings themselves. Celestial beings? You mean like gods? No, oh, Morty, even better. I'm talking about a group of interdimensional cheaters who've been rigging the cosmic lottery. Confused? Cosmic Lottery? Yeah, Morty, the Cosmic Lottery. They've been tampering with galaxies, manipulating outcomes for their own gain. So, what's our plan? Are we gonna confront them? Oh, no, Morty. We're gonna out-cheat the cheaters. I've got a device that'll give us the upper hand. Rick, won't that just make us as bad as them? Morty, when you're the smartest person in the universe, morality becomes a mere inconvenience. I don't know, Rick. This sounds a bit risky. Morty, you have to learn to embrace the chaos. Now, let's infiltrate their secret hideout and teach them a lesson they'll never forget. Fine, but can we at least stop for a burrito on the way back? Sure, Morty, but only if it's from the dimension where burritos are sentient beings. Laughs. Oh, geez, Rick. You really know how to make every adventure weird, don't you? That's my specialty, Morty. Now, let's go and prove that even the celestial beings can outsmart Rick Sanchez. Meanwhile, in a hidden dimension far away. Post Malone, yo, dudes, have you heard about these crazy scientists causing a ruckus in the multiverse? Celestial cheater. Yeah, man, they think they can beat us at our own game? We'll show them who's the real winner. Post Malone, let's get celestial, baby. It's time for some interdimensional rap battles and a whole lot of cheating drama. And so, Rick and Morty embark on their cosmic adventure, ready to challenge the celestial cheaters and create chaos wherever they go. With their wits and scientific know-how, the duo is determined to shake up the multiverse and rewrite the rules of cosmic existence. But little do they know, the celestial cheaters have a few tricks up their sleeves as well. Who will come out on top in this epic clash of intelligence and manipulation? Only time will tell. Title, The Cat and the Sword, A Scientific Adventure. Dash dash dash. Episode 1, The Tale of the Flaming Feline. Gazorp Azorp Field, a sassy and sophisticated cartoon cat, possesses a mystical sword capable of extraordinary power. Enter Legolas, an adventurous and witty cat who, by a twist of fate, also wields a sword. These two unlikely allies find themselves in a parallel dimension teeming with scientific anomalies. The duo encounters a bartender who reveals the existence of a legendary cat with a flame in its hand, said to hold immense power. Fascinated, Gazorpazorpfield and Legolas embark on a quest to find this mythical feline and harness its celestial abilities. Gazorpazorpfield, so, Legolas, heard about this cat with a flame in its hand? Sounds like the kind of absurdity we've been waiting for. 
Legolas, indeed, Gazorp as Orkfield. Our swords might pale in comparison to a fiery feline, but I won't back down. Let's uncover the truth. The pair navigates through a bizarre forest, where trees gleam with bioluminescence and talking mushrooms dispense cryptic advice. Azorp Azorp Field, these mushrooms are really pushing my scientific knowledge to the brink. Do they even realize how difficult it is for a cartoon character like me to comprehend this? Legolas, don't sweat it, Gazor. We'll outsmart those fungi, just keep those whiskers sharp. As they reach a mysterious cave, a gigantic creature blocks their path, its hide glowing with psychedelic patterns. Azorp Azorp Field, well, 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 if it isn't a disco-dazzling monster. Just the kind of obstacle I was hoping for. Legolas, fear not, Gazor. With our swords united, we shall conquer this spectral spectacle. With their combined strength, Gazorp Azorp Field and Legolas defeat the monster, causing it to vanish into the mist. Suddenly, a shimmering portal appears before them. Azorp Azorp Field, look at that, Legolas. The portal of possibilities. Shall we take a leap of scientific faith, my friend? Legolas, absolutely, Gazor. Adventure awaits, and this cat with a flame in its hand will be ours to conquer. The duo steps into the portal, their determination unwavering. Little do they know, their scientific journey is just beginning, filled with absurdity, danger, and unexpected twists. The fantastic tale of the cat and the sword continues, and the realms of possibility stretch beyond the imagination. Dash dash dash. Disclaimer, the above story is fictional and does not aim to replicate any existing cartoon characters. It was created solely for the purpose of fulfilling the given writing prompt requirements. Morty, we've got a new adventure on our hands. I've discovered a portal that leads to a dimension filled with telepathic alien butterflies. Whoa, Rick, telepathic butterflies? That sounds insane. It is, Morty. These butterflies have the power to read minds, and they've been causing all sorts of trouble. We need to go and investigate. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? You know how chaotic our adventures can get. Beth, trust me, it'll be fine. Besides, where's your sense of adventure? Can I come too? Telepathic butterflies sound like the perfect Instagram photo opportunity. Fine, Summer. But remember, these butterflies are dangerous. Don't take any unnecessary risks. So, how do we catch these butterflies, Rick? Well, Morty, we'll need a special device to amplify our brainwaves and communicate with them. Luckily, I've already built one. Of course, you have. This doesn't surprise me anymore. All right, everyone, let's gear up and get ready to enter the butterfly dimension. Later, in the butterfly dimension. Whoa, Rick, look at all these butterflies. They're so colorful. Yeah, Morty, but remember, they're not just pretty insects. They're cunning and manipulative. Stay on guard. Hey, Rick, I think one of the butterflies is trying to communicate with me. What's it saying? It's asking me if I want to go on a date. It's flirting with me. Morty. That's not a butterfly. That's Yoda from Star Wars. Yoda, Morty, will you be my companion in this dimension? Yoda, I didn't know you were into interdimensional dating. Yoda, adventure, love, a Jedi seeks. Hmm. Sorry, Yoda, but I think I'll have to pass on the intergalactic romance. Yoda, disappointed, I am. Much to learn, you have. Morty, be careful. Yoda might have some mind tricks up his sleeve. Don't worry, Mom. I've dealt with enough mind-altering creatures thanks to Rick. All right, enough distractions. Let's focus on capturing these mind-reading butterflies and getting out of here in one piece. Yeah, no more interdimensional dating for me. Let's catch these butterflies and close the portal. The team starts capturing the butterflies. Rick, do you think we'll ever come back to this dimension? Who knows, Summer. We might just end up here again someday. But for now, let's just concentrate on saving our own dimension from these mind-reading insects. Yeah, I've had enough excitement for one day. Well said, Morty. Let's finish this mission and head back home.
All right, Morty, buckle up. We're going on a wild scavenger hunt. Oh geez, Rick, can't we just stay home and watch TV or something? Come on, boys. It'll be fun. Plus, we get to spend some quality family time together. Fine, fine. Let's get this over with. First clue says we need to find a colorful golf course with a red and blue flag. How are we supposed to find that, Rick? There are thousands of golf courses out there. Relax, Morty. I've got it all figured out. Just follow my lead. Look, over there. I see a golf course with a red and blue flag. Wow, Dad, you're actually good at this. Of course I am, Morty. I'm good at everything. Now, let's find the next clue. All right, the next clue says to search for a hidden treasure beneath the shady trees. Shady trees? That could be anywhere. Not a problem. I've got a portal gun right here. We'll just hop through a few dimensions and find those trees in no time. Dad, this is supposed to be a family activity. No portals this time. Fine, fine. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. On foot. Oh boy, I can't wait to spend hours searching for a stupid treasure. Quit whining, Morty. It builds character. Now let's go. Rick, Morty, and Beth walk through the golf course, looking for the hidden treasure. Dad, are we lost? Lost? Please, Morty. We're not lost. We're just temporarily misplaced. Well, I hope we find this treasure soon. My feet are killing me. Don't worry, sweetie. It'll all be worth it in the end. Look, I found something. It's a pickle. Pickle Rick? What's he doing here? Pickle, hey, guys, I heard there was a scavenger hunt. Mind if I join? Sure, why not? The more, the merrier. Pickle, awesome. Let's keep searching for that treasure. The group continues their search, encountering various obstacles and hilarious mishaps along the way. I can't believe we've been searching for hours and still haven't found anything. Patience, Morty. Good things come to those who wait. Rick, look. I think I found the treasure. Finally! What is it? It's a coupon for a free pizza. Seriously? Well, I guess it's not exactly a treasure, but hey, free pizza is free pizza. I guess you're right, Rick. At least we had some fun along the way. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, who's up for some pizza? They all laugh and head off to enjoy their hard-earned pizza. End of episode. All right, Morty, we've got a hot tip on some intergalactic salaciousness. Strap in, kid, cause things are about to get wild. Oh, Rick, I don't know about this. I mean, last time we got involved in alien gossip, you ended up getting married to a hive mind. Trust me, Morty, this time it's different. There's a new alien club in town called Alien Curses. Rumor has it they've got some scandalous secrets hidden inside. Secrets? Like what? Well, Morty, word on the Space Street is that they've got a diaphragm that can control anyone's thoughts. You can imagine the kind of chaos that could cause. Whoa, that's crazy. So, what's our plan? We're gonna need disguises, Morty. I've got some alien figurines that will help us blend in. We'll pose as collectors, hoping to get a behind-the-scenes tour. Alright, but what if we get caught? Morty, when have we ever gotten caught? We're seasoned adventurers, Morty. We're pros at this. Yeah, but that doesn't mean we can't mess up sometimes. Morty, don't be such a worry wart. This is gonna be a breeze. Besides, while we're there, we might as well check out that alien crush you've been pining over. Um, how did you? Please, Morty, I can read you like an X-ray spectrometer. Now let's go. Time to mix some science with some interdimensional gossip. They enter alien curses and begin their investigation. Rick, look, there she is, my alien crush. She's even more beautiful up close. Morty, keep it together. We're here for the diaphragm, remember? 
Right, the diaphragm. But maybe, just maybe I can talk to her. Ordi, focus. We can't get sidetracked now. Besides, I think I see something suspicious over by the bar. Okay, okay, but can I at least ask for her number later? We'll discuss that later, Morty. Look, it's the owner of this joint. Maybe he knows something about the diaphragm. I'll handle this. Rick approaches the owner, engaging in a heated conversation. Look, pal, we know about the diaphragm. Spill the beans or things are gonna get real messy. Owner, you think you can just barge in here and demand answers? You have no idea what you're dealing with. Oh, trust me, pal, I'm not one to mess with. Now spill it. As the tension rises, Morty spots his crush nearby. Hey, um, excuse me. I couldn't help but notice your tentacles. I mean, your eyes. Can I buy you a drink? Alien crush. Morty, is that you? I've been trying to get your attention for ages. You have? But, but why? Alien crush. Morty, I think you're adorable. Plus, you look really cute in that alien figurine outfit. Morty blushes, completely forgetting about the diaphragm. Morty, we've got bigger fish to fry here. Time to refocus, buddy. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, Rick. So, what's the plan? We need to find that diaphragm before it falls into the wrong hands. It could cause chaos on a cosmic level. Right, back on track. Let's go, Rick. They continue their investigation, uncovering more scandalous secrets and narrowly avoiding danger. Morty, we've got it. The diaphragm is right here in this room, disguised as a lamp. Whoa, let's grab it and get out of here. They retrieve the diaphragm and escape alien curses. Phew, that was intense. I can't believe we actually pulled it off. Morty, never doubt the power of science and a dash of chaos. Now, let's go home and maybe, just maybe, you can call your alien crush. Thanks, Rick. You're the best. They teleport away, leaving behind a trail of intergalactic gossip and adventure. Morty, look at that. A robot standing in the middle of the road with a camera on his head and hands in the air. Talk about a statistically improbable scenario. Jeez, Rick, what's the deal with that robot? Is it malfunctioning or something? I don't know, Morty. It looks like it's having some sort of identity crisis. Maybe it wants to be a real human. Hey, what's going on here? Why is there a robot blocking the road? Don't worry, Dad. Rick and Morty will figure it out. They always do. All right, let's approach this scientifically. Morty, grab that camera off the robot's head. Oh, Rick, is that really necessary? I mean, it's just a robot. Morty, science doesn't wait for your feelings. Now hand it over. Look, guys, I think the robot's trying to say something. It's flashing some sort of code. Oh great, now we have to decipher robot language? This is gonna be fun. Relax, Summer. It's just a bunch of random symbols. Let me analyze it. While you're at it, Rick, can you figure out why the robot has dirt written all over it? Oh boy, this robot has some serious issues. It's going through a dirt fetish phase or something. I think I know what's going on. This robot must have been programmed by some dirt enthusiasts or something. Seriously, Dad, do you ever think before you speak? Alright, let's not get sidetracked. We still haven't solved the robot's identity crisis. Maybe it needs some sort of human experience to feel fulfilled. Like eating a nice juicy brisket from Michael's. Morty, that's the dumbest thing you've ever said. But it just might work. Wait, are you suggesting we take the robot to a barbecue joint? Well, if it helps the robot find its purpose in life, I guess it's worth a shot. Strap in, everybody. We're taking this robot on a culinary adventure. I can't believe we're doing this. This is like the weirdest quest ever. Hey, Morty, life is all about embracing the weirdness. Now let's go get some rhodium coated ribs. I can already see the tabloid headlines. Rick and Morty's wild barbecue adventure with a robot. 
Seriously, let's just hope this whole thing doesn't end up as another interdimensional disaster. Buckle up, folks, it's gonna be a saucy, spicy, and absurdly entertaining ride. Ordy, we've got a mission that's gonna blow your mind. Oh geez, Rick, what is it this time? We're going to the Higgs boson heartbreaker, Morty. It's a club where particles collide and hearts get broken. Is this gonna be another one of your crazy adventures, Rick? You bet your sweet ass it is, Morty. Strap in, we're about to get scandalous. All right, let's do it. But can we make it quick? I've got a unicorn dance-off to watch later. Morty, forget the dance-off. We're talking about the secrets of the universe here. Yeah, well, I've got secrets of my own, Rick. Like the time I accidentally set off the sprinklers at the Institute of Genomic Research. Morty, you never fail to surprise me. But let's focus on the task at hand, shall we? Fine, fine. Let's go break some hearts and uncover some juicy stories. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, hold on tight. We're diving into the world of quantum love affairs. Quantum love affairs? Is that even a thing? It is now, Morty. And it's gonna be the talk of the scientific community. I can already hear Mr. Beast making a video about it. Ah, oh, Mr. Beast has got nothing on us, Morty. We're about to become the kings of scandal mongering. I don't know, Rick. This all sounds a bit too provocative for me. Oh, come on, Morty. Where's your sense of adventure? We're about to witness love on a subatomic level. All right, all right, let's just get this over with. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's go be scandalous. That's the spirit, Morty. Get ready for a roller coaster ride of passion, betrayal, and a whole lot of scientific jargon. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually excited. Let's uncover some scandalous secrets, Rick. Buckle up, Morty, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. And remember, no rumors left unexplored. Trust me, Rick. I've got a PhD in tittle-tattle. Let's get this party started. That's the spirit, Morty. Let the scandal mongering begin. All right, Morty, we've got a new adventure lined up today. Strap in, we're going deep into the galaxy. Oh, uh, Rick, I'm not sure about this. Last time we went deep into the galaxy, I ended up in therapy for months. Therapies for the weak, Morty. We're going to find some rare alien technology and make a quick buck. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Rick, can you please stop dragging our children into your dangerous escapades? I mean, come on, Morty's just a kid? Oh, spare me, Beth. Morty's got the stones to handle it. Unlike you, with your secret crush on that alien hunk we met last week. That's none of your business, Rick. And Morty's too young to be dealing with all this intergalactic drama. Yeah, Dad. Stop giving Morty all the dangerous and scandalous adventures. It's not fair. Oh great, now Summer's got an opinion too. What's the matter, sweetheart? Got yourself involved with an alien bad boy and can't handle the scandal? Can someone explain to me why there's a robot standing in the background? Are we just gonna ignore that? Jerry, shut up. The robot's not important right now. We've got more pressing matters to attend to. I just wanted a normal day at school, but I guess that's too much to ask for when you're related to Rick Sanchez. Normal? What's normal? Morty. Boring? Mundane? Routine? This is adventure. Embrace it. I think we should start embracing normalcy, Rick. Our family is falling apart because of your reckless actions. Falling apart? Beef? Drama queen much, Beth? We're just a dysfunctional family having some misadventures. It's all part of the grand scheme of things. Misadventures? More like embarrassing moments at the gym with alien creatures. 
I'm scarred for life, Rick. Scarred, please. If you think the gym was bad, wait till you hear about the speculum space scandal I got caught up in last month. Now that's embarrassment on a cosmic level. I don't even want to know what a speculum space scandal is, Rick. Just keep your intergalactic troubles away from us, okay? Fine, fine. You're all a bunch of buzzkills anyway. Morty, let's go find that alien technology while the rest of them wallow in their boring lives. I guess there's no escaping this madness, is there, Rick? No, Morty. Embrace the chaos. It's what makes life interesting. They teleport away, leaving the family standing there, confused and frustrated. I swear, one day I'm going to leave this madhouse and find some peace and sanity. Can I come with you? No, Jerry. No, you cannot. Int. Smith Family Living Room, Day. Rick and Morty are seated on the couch, examining a drawing of a city with a green and white design. Morty, what the hell did you draw? Is this some kind of city with a radioactive cocktail on it? No, Rick. It's just a random design. I was bored in school. Well, it looks like you've created a map to chaos, Morty. I hope you're happy. Chaos? What are you talking about? Rick points to a pink dot on top of the drawing. See that dot? That's the pink potion you spilled in school. It's causing havoc. Oh, jeez. I didn't know it had such powerful effects. Int. Harry Herpes High School, Hallway, Day. Students are all over the place, acting strange and erratic. Student 1, mumbling, I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. Student 2, dancing awkwardly, feel the love. Feel the love. Oh no, what have I done? Int. Harry Herpes High School, Classroom, Day. Morty and Rick burst into Copernicium's classroom, chaos unfolding. Copernicium, what kind of class are you teaching here? Copernicium, don't blame me, Rick. It's Morty's love potion. Rick spots a student trying to eat their homework. Put down that paper, you idiot. That's not a snack. Int. Harry Herpes High School, Hallway, Day. Morty panics as chaos continues. Rick, we need to find a way to reverse the effects of the potion. No problem, Morty. I'll whip up an antidote in no time. Rick pulls out various beakers and starts mixing chemicals. Dash of cerium, a sprinkle of chaos theory, and voila. Int. Harry Herpes High School, Classroom, Day. Rick and Morty distribute the antidote to the affected students. Student 3. Relieved? Ah. I feel normal again. Copernicium. Grateful. Thank you, Rick and Morty. I guess love shouldn't be forced, huh? Oh shit, Sherlock. Love isn't a mere potion. It's a journey of discovery and acceptance. Int. Smith Family Living Room, Night. Rick and Morty sit on the couch, debriefing the day's events. You know, Morty, chaos can always be traced back to our own actions. We gotta be responsible for the messes we create. Yeah, I've learned my lesson, Rick. Love can't be forced or controlled. It's gotta come naturally. Wise words, Morty. Now let's go on another adventure and see what trouble we can stir up. Oh, jeez, Rick. You never learn, do you? They both share a mischievous chuckle as they head towards the garage. Fade out. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick stands in front of Morty, who is browsing through his phone. Morty, stop playing with your gadget and pay attention. I've got something important to tell you. Jeez, Rick, can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Trust me, Morty, this is worth putting down your little digital toys for. 
You see, back in my younger days, I wasn't just a genius scientist, I was also a master of love. What? You mean you were some kind of love guru? That's right, Morty. I traveled through the multiverse, spreading love and romance wherever I went. Sarcastically? Oh yeah, I can totally see that. You're like the ultimate Casanova. You think you're funny, Morty? I've got a whole multiverse of ex-lovers who would disagree with you. Ex-lovers? Gross, Rick. I don't want to hear about your wild love affairs. Hey, I may be old, but I've still got it. And trust me, Morty, I've got some crazy stories to tell. Intrigued. Okay, fine. I'll bite. Give me one of your best love guru tales. Alright, buckle up, Morty. This one time, I was on a planet where the inhabitants had no concept of love. Interrupting. Wait, how is that even possible? Love is a universal emotion, right? Not in this particular dimension, Morty. Anyway, I single-handedly introduced them to the wonders of love and they went from emotionless drones to passionate romantics overnight. That sounds like one of your typical grandiose exaggerations, Rick. Believe what you want, Morty, but I had an entire army of love-struck aliens at my disposal. It was like I was their god of love or something. Laughing skeptically. Yeah, right. Next, you're gonna tell me you invented a love potion or something. Actually, Morty, I did. But that's a story for another time. They both burst into laughter. You really are a crazy old man, Rick. Crazy and wise, Morty. Crazy and wise. They continue to laugh as the camera zooms out, revealing their laughter filling the room. The magnifying glass with hearts and a heart in the background becomes the center of attention. Fade out. Morty, we're in the biggest casino in the universe. Time to get rich, Morty. Oh, I don't know, Rick. Gambling seems pretty risky. Come on, Morty. We've got the ultimate luck amplifier device. We can't lose. All right, but let's be careful. I don't want to end up in debt or anything. Relax, Morty. We've got this under control. Just follow my lead. Amanda Stenberg walks by the slot machine. Amanda Stenberg. Hey, mind if I join you guys? My luck seems to be running out. Sure thing, Amanla. Let's see if we can turn your luck around. Morty starts pulling the lever on the slot machine. Come on, come on, give us those coins. Rick starts counting the coins pouring out. Jackpot, we've hit the mother load, Morty. This, this is amazing, Rick. A crowd forms around them. Crowd member. Hey, can we get in on this action too? Sorry folks, this is a private party. Man behind private party, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Rick pulls out a device and freezes the crowd in place. Looks like we've got some unwanted guests, Morty. Time to teach them a lesson. I don't know, Rick. Shouldn't we just share the wealth? Morty, where's your sense of adventure? We're gonna have some fun with these guys. Woman behind, what's going on here? Why are we frozen? Her freezing time, sweetie just a little taste of the power we possess. Amandla joins in the mischief. Amandla Stenberg, this is incredible. I've never experienced anything like this before. Enjoy it while it lasts, Amandla. We've got a whole universe of chaos to create. Rick, I don't know if this is such a good idea. Maybe we should just give them their money back. Oh, Morty, Morty. Always playing the moral compass. Where's your inner wild child? Morty hesitates. Okay, fine. Let's give them their money back. Rick unfreezes the crowd and distributes the coins. There you go, folks. Enjoy your winnings. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got more trouble to cause. Amandla looks at Morty. Amandla Stenberg. Morty, here's a little advice. Sometimes, it's okay to let go and have a little fun. Thanks, Amandla. I'll keep that in mind. Rick and Morty walk away, leaving chaos and laughter in their wake.
int. Smith living room, day. Morty is sitting on the couch, watching a sci-fi TV show. Rick enters, holding a mysterious device. Morty, put your nerd goggles on. We've got an interdimensional grill to attend. An interdimensional grill? What's that supposed to mean, Rick? It means we're about to have the juiciest, scandal-mongering, racy adventure you can imagine. Hold on tight, Morty. Int. Interdimensional space, day. Morty and Rick appear in a strange landscape with a white star on a green background and a white ribbon in the middle. Whoa, Rick! Where are we? We're in a dimension where everything is based on bizarre flag designs. We gotta find the legendary, name the flag, artifact. It's the key to unlocking the ultimate grill. Grills and flags? How does that even make sense? Morty, in this dimension, sense is but a fleeting concept. Now, let's find that artifact. They encounter Boba Fett, who guards the artifact with his blaster. Boba Fett, who dares disturb the sacred ceremony of flag naming? We do. You overrated bounty hunter. Hand over that artifact. Yeah, we need it for our interdimensional cookout. Boba Fett, no one insults my grilling skills and gets away with it. A wild grilling competition ensues, with Morty and Rick grilling the most outrageous, scandalous dishes ever seen. Morty, your dish is so spicy. It's breaking all the taboos in this dimension. Keep it up. Thanks, Rick. I learned from the best, you. Crombopulous Michael, the notorious assassin, appears out of nowhere. Crombopulous Michael, I've been hired to take out the grill masters. Prepare to meet your doom. Not so fast, Michael. I've got a saucy surprise for you. Rick pulls out a secret marinade, causing Crombopulous Michael to collapse in sheer ecstasy. Rick, what did you do to him? Let's just say he couldn't resist the tantalizing flavor. Now, let's finish grilling. They finally unlock the power of the artifact, revealing an interdimensional grill that can cook anything in the multiverse. Ordi, this grill is the ultimate power. With it, we can create the most scandalous, rib-tickling dishes ever. I can't believe how absurdly entertaining this adventure turned out to be. They fire up the grill and cook a mind-blowingly hilarious meal, filling the air with laughter and mouth-watering aromas. Fade out. Int. Smith living room, day. Rick is tinkering with his science gadgets while Morty lounges on the couch, flipping through channels. Hey, Rick, have you ever thought about what would happen if a frog tried to ride a skateboard? Chuckling, Morty, you always come up with the weirdest questions. But I guess we could find out. Int. Rick's lab, day. Rick sets up an experiment with a frog, a skateboard, and a high-speed camera. So, what's the plan, Rick? We'll attach the skateboard to the frog with some adhesive and see if it can balance and ride it. The high-speed camera will capture every hilarious moment. Int. Smith living room, night. Rick and Morty eagerly watch the footage of the frog attempting to skateboard. Morty bursts into laughter. Through laughter, look at that frog go! It's actually riding the skateboard! Laughing, it's defying all laws of amphibian physics. This footage is gold. Int. Rick's lab, day. Rick and Morty are brainstorming their next experiment. Rick, what if we discovered an alien species that had healing powers? Hmm, that could be interesting. We could call it Alien's Tender Touch. Int. Alien Planet, day. Rick and Morty encounter the alien species who have the ability to heal wounds with a single touch. This is incredible. We have to bring them back to Earth. Hold your horses, Morty. 
Let's not get too excited. We need to test their powers first. Int. Rick's spaceship, Knight. Rick and Morty perform various tests on the alien species, documenting their healing abilities. These aliens could change the world, Rick. Imagine the possibilities. Yeah, Morty, but they could also become a valuable commodity. We need to be careful how we handle this. Int. Vampire's Lair, Night. Rick and Morty find themselves in a vampire's lair while on a mission. The vampire appears to be redecorating. Rick, why would a vampire care about home makeover? Morty, vampires are way more than just bloodsuckers. This one apparently has a flair for interior design. Int. Vampire's Lair, Continuous. Rick and Morty help the vampire pick out new curtains, paint colors, and furniture. Whispering, Rick, are we really helping a vampire with home decor? Whispering, Morty, don't question it. We're exploring new dimensions here. Plus, it's like HGTV meets Dracula. Int. Rick's Lab, Day. Rick and Morty are engrossed in a manga drawing lesson. Rick, why are we drawing manga characters all of a sudden? Morty, manga has a completely different art style and storytelling approach. Plus, it's just fun to learn something new. Int. Rick's Lab, Continuous. Rick and Morty proudly showcase their manga drawings, complete with exaggerated expressions and dramatic poses. Striking a pose, Morty. These drawings are so over the top, they could give anime a run for its money. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick and Morty are watching a viral video of Kermit the Frog drinking tea. Rick, why is this Kermit the Frog drinking tea meme so popular? Morty, it's all about relatability. Everyone loves a sassy frog with a hot beverage. It's the internet's sense of humor in a nutshell. Int. Smith Living Room, Continuous. Rick and Morty join in on the meme craze, creating their own hilarious Kermit drinking tea poses. Rick, we could take this meme to a whole new level. Morty, when it comes to memes, there are no limits. We'll be the kings of the internet in no time. Axed. Random Street, Day. Rick and Morty try to recreate the Kermit tea meme in public, but things quickly spiral out of control. Rick, people are giving us weird looks. Maybe this wasn't such a great idea. Morty, you have to commit to the bit. We'll be viral sensations in no time. Int. Rick's spaceship, Night. Rick and Morty find themselves on a planet full of Bichon Frise dogs. Rick, why are we surrounded by these fluffy Bichon Frise dogs? Morty, they're adorable little fluff balls. Who wouldn't want to be surrounded by them? Int. Rick's spaceship, continuous. Rick and Morty bond with the Bichon Frise dogs, enjoying their playful and loving nature. I never thought I'd say this, but I think I love Bichon Frise dogs now. Smirking, Morty. The love for cute dogs knows no boundaries. It's a universal truth. Int. Rick's lab, day. Rick and Morty sit amidst a clutter of scientific equipment, brainstorming their next crazy adventure. Rick, what if we create a machine that can predict gossip and rumors? Morty, that's genius. We can call it the gossip monitor. Int. Rick's lab, continuous. Rick and Morty work tirelessly, developing the gossip monitor a machine that predicts scandalous stories and juicy rumors. Rick, imagine the power we'll have with this device. No secret will go untold. Morty, with great gossip comes great responsibility. We'll have to use it wisely. Int. Smith Living Room, Night. Rick and Morty scroll through the gossip monitor's predictions, laughing and gasping at the scandalous tales it reveals. Rick, this thing is insane. It even predicted that Principal Vagina is secretly a rock star. Chuckling. Well, Morty, I guess the truth really does rock. Fade out.
Morty, buckle up. We're heading to the most scientifically advanced underground fight tournament in the multiverse. Aw oh, jeez, Rick, I don't know about this. Fighting? It seems kinda dangerous. Oh Morty, you worry too much. This tournament is all about using your brain, not just your brawn. We're gonna dominate these imbeciles with our superior intellect. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? I mean, underground fight tournaments aren't exactly family-friendly activities. Beth, please, it's not like we're gonna bring Summer along. She's busy organizing a movie trivia night for the entire neighborhood. Irritated? Ugh, why do I always get stuck with these lame events? I should be out there having fun, not babysitting a bunch of movie geeks. Well, you know what they say, Summer. Every family needs a responsible adult. Looks like it's your turn this time. Rick, I heard there's a gynecology workshop happening at the tournament. Is there any scientific reason for us to check that out? Morty, sometimes you just ask the most peculiar questions. But sure, why not? We'll go investigate the wonders of gynecology for the sake of science. Morty, look, they have an archaeology exhibit. We can make fun of all those nerds digging up ancient artifacts like a bunch of losers. Ah, uh, Rick, isn't archaeology a legitimate field of study? I mean, shouldn't we be respectful? Respectful, Morty. We're talking about a universe where people put funny epitaphs on tombstones. We're just gonna have a little fun, that's all. Okay, while you boys are busy causing mayhem, I'll be over at the Impersonate Celebrity Couples booth. Gotta get my celebrity gossip fix somehow. I can't believe I'm missing celeb impersonations for this stupid trivia night. Can we at least make it interesting, Rick? Add some scandalous questions? Summer, scandalous is my middle name. You really think I'd organize a boring trivia night? It's gonna be juicy enough to make TMZ blush. Rick, I think I found a secret room. It says, top secret movie scripts, on the door. Should we check it out? Morty, we're definitely checking that out. Who knows, maybe we'll stumble upon the latest unreleased episode of Game of Thrones. Rick, Morty, I hope you realize the consequences of messing with classified movie scripts. You could get into some serious legal trouble. Beth, you always think about the rules. We're scientists, for crying out loud. Rules are made to be broken, like so-called age-restricted movies. Ah, uh, Rick, I think we've caused enough chaos for one day. Maybe it's time to wrap things up and head back home? Morty, you sound like an old man. We haven't even explored the tantalizing world of exotic food trucks. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Can you guys please stop with the crazy adventures for one day? I just want a normal family activity where I don't have to worry about getting arrested. Summer, normal is overrated. We're the Smiths, and we thrive on chaos, scandal, and outrageous laughter. Now, let's go uncover some more juicy secrets. Here we go again. I swear, this family is never gonna change. I don't know about this, Rick. It feels like we're crossing some serious ethical boundaries here. Ordy, ethics is just a meaningless social construct. Now grab your lab coat and let's dive into the wild world of experimental science. Rick is tinkering with a scientific device in his garage while Morty stands by, looking bored. Morty, can you pass me the interdimensional spanner? Oh, sure, Rick. But what's the point of all this tinkering? It's not like we have a purpose. Purpose, Morty, this is science. We don't need a purpose, we create chaos. Now, hand me that spanner before you start questioning the fabric of reality. Morty hands Rick the spanner, but accidentally knocks over a vial containing a strange green liquid. Oh no, Rick! I spilled the green stuff you made! Morty, you buffoon. That was my latest invention, an alien pheromone. Suddenly, the garage door bursts open and a group of alien men float in the sky, one carrying a green object and another a blue object. Alien leader, surrender, earthlings. We have the power of the green and blue. Morty. 
looks like we stumbled into an intergalactic standoff. But fear not, we have science on our side. Science? Rick, what can we do against those aliens? Simple, Morty, we'll use the Caltech Biological Imaging Center to analyze those objects. I bet there's a weakness we can exploit. Rick and Morty rush to the Caltech Biological Imaging Center, where a group of scientists is conducting experiments. Excuse me, esteemed scientists. We need to use your center to analyze these alien objects. Time is of the essence. Scientist 1, are you crazy? This is a highly controlled facility. Oh, I'm crazy all right. Crazy for answers. We won't let Earth be taken over by fugly aliens. The scientists reluctantly agree, and Rick and Morty start analyzing the green and blue objects. Rick, what are we even looking for? These objects don't seem special to me. Morty, remember what I always say, appearances can be deceiving. We'll find the key to defeating those aliens in here. A scientist discovers a hidden compartment in the blue object. Scientist 2, incredible, there's a map inside, it leads to the alien's secret power source. Morty. We've hit the jackpot. It's time to take the fight to those alien scumbags. Morty and Rick equip themselves with high-tech gadgets obtained from the lab. Let's go, Morty. We're about to give those aliens a taste of our scientific ass-kicking. They board Rick's spaceship and head towards the alien's power source. Alien leader, you thought you could defeat us? Prepare to be obliterated, Earthlings. Rick and Morty engage in a thrilling and hilarious battle with the aliens using their gadgets and scientific know-how. Rick, we're outnumbered. I don't know how much longer we can hold them off. Trust in science, Morty. Remember, we have the element of surprise. Rick activates a device that temporarily disables the alien's powers, allowing them to overpower the alien leader. Surrender, you alien, green phallic-shaped freak. Alien leader, never. I will fight to the death. Rick and the alien leader engage in an epic showdown, exchanging clever insults and blows. Rick, just finish him already. We've had enough. All right, Morty, you're right. It's time to end this. Rick delivers a final blow, defeating the alien leader once and for all. And that's what you get for messing with Earth, you slimy. Well, you get the idea. Phew, Rick, we did it. We saved the day, again. Of course we did, Morty. We're the smartest beings in the universe. Now let's clean up this mess before the cleanup crew charges us extra. They exit the scene, leaving behind a chaotic battlefield and a defeated group of aliens. Title, The Unpredictable Journey Episode 1, The Mysterious Cubes Obi-Wan Kenobi, well, well, what do we have here? A group of colorful dice sitting on top of a red surface with numbers on them. Fascinating. Max Planck Institute, Obi-Wan, those are no ordinary dice. They are story cubes, a magical tool that generates humorous travel stories. Obi-Wan Kenobi, humorous travel stories, you say? Count me in. Let's give them a roll and see where they take us. Max Planck Institute, hold on, Obi-Wan. Before we roll the dice, we must establish the rules of this scientific experiment. We shall each take turns rolling the cubes and use the resulting images to create a story. Obi-Wan rolls the dice, revealing images of a beach, a penguin, and a spaceship. Obi-Wan Kenobi, ah, the story begins. Once upon a time, a penguin named Penelope found herself stranded on a beautiful beach. Suddenly, a spaceship landed beside her, offering a way back home. Max Planck Institute, intriguing! Now it's my turn to roll the dice. Max rolls the dice, revealing images of a wizard, a treasure chest, and a time machine. Max Planck Institute, ah, the plot thickens. Penelope follows the wizard to the treasure chest, only to discover it contains a time machine. She decides to use it to explore new and exciting worlds. Obi-Wan Kenobi, amazing. Our adventure is taking a delightful twist. It's my turn to roll now. 
Obi-Wan rolls the dice, revealing images of a dragon, a flashlight, and a genie. Obi-Wan Kenobi, oh my, things are getting heated. As Penelope explores new worlds, she encounters a fierce dragon. Luckily, she uses her flashlight to blind the dragon and escape. But wait, there's more. A genie appears and grants her three wishes. Max Planck Institute, this is getting intense. Now, my turn to roll the dice. Max rolls the dice, revealing images of a clown, a castle, and a hammer. Max Planck Institute, oh dear, this is taking an unexpected turn. Penelope travels to a mysterious castle where she encounters a mischievous clown. With her trusty hammer, she defeats the clown and saves the day. Obi-Wan Kenobi, what an exhilarating journey it has been. The story cubes have truly taken us on an unexpected adventure filled with laughter and excitement. Max Planck Institute, indeed, Obi-Wan. The power of imagination coupled with a sprinkle of scientific curiosity is truly limitless. Now, let us embark on our next unpredictable escapade with the story cubes. And so, the duo continued their journey, guided by the whimsical images on the story cubes, ready to create more magical and scientifically improbable stories. Title, Jerry's Alternate Universe Chaos Jerry, a middle-aged man with a helmet and goggles on his face and a smile that never fades, finds himself in a parallel universe with a vibrant green background. This universe is unlike anything he has ever experienced before. While exploring this alternate world, Jerry stumbles upon a mysterious object that turns out to be a remote control. With nothing to lose, Jerry presses a button, unknowingly initiating a series of bizarre and unexpected events. 1. Jerry, confused. Whoa, this remote control is a game changer. Let's see what happens next. 2. Presses button. Asterisk a portal appears, leading to a vibrant webinar. 3. Jerry, amused, a webinar? Alright, let's see what they're up to here. 4. Jerry enters the webinar and realizes it's a parody songs competition. 5. Jerry, excited. This is hilarious. I can't resist joining the fun. Hey, everyone, mind if I take a shot at it? 6. Jerry sings an outrageously funny parody song, captivating the audience. 7. Audience, laughing. This guy is a genius. Keep it going, Jerry. 8. Jerry's fame starts spreading across the multiverse, creating a whirlwind of excitement. 9. Jerry, proud. It seems I've discovered my hidden talent. Time to show off more. 10. Jerry's fame reaches a robotic dance-off competition. 11. Jerry, determined. Let's do this. I'm ready to outdance these robots. 12. Jerry puts on a jaw-dropping performance, combining human emotions with robotic moves. 13. Robots, applauding, incredible. No one dances like Jerry. 14. Jerry's triumph takes him into another dimension, where he finds himself surrounded by his multiple versions from different universes. 15. Multiverse Jerry 1, excited, we've heard about your fame, buddy. Let's form a band and conquer the multiverse. 16. Jerry, overwhelmed, I never expected this to happen, but why not? Let's rock this multiverse. 17. Jerry and his multiverse band starts touring, spreading joy in music across infinite dimensions. 18. Multiverse Jerry 2, jokingly, dude, if only our original universe knew the superstar they're missing out on. 19. Jerry, grinning, who needs them anyway? We've got the whole multiverse in our hands. 20. They all laugh, knowing that they have found their true purpose in this wild and extraordinary alternate world. Jerry's journey through the alternate universe leads him to discover new talents, unleash his creativity, and find a sense of fulfillment he never thought possible. In this world of endless possibilities, Jerry becomes the superstar he always dreamed of being, 
leaving behind his mundane existence and embracing the excitement and adventure the multiverse has to offer. Alright Morty, buckle up for another crazy adventure. Oh jeez, Rick, what are we getting ourselves into this time? We're going to a parallel universe where everyone is obsessed with mangoes. Mangoes? Why would anyone be obsessed with mangoes? Because in this universe, mangoes are the key to eternal youth, Morty. We're going to make a fortune. Wait, are you telling me there's a universe where mangoes make you young forever? Sign me up. Jerry, don't be ridiculous. We're not going on some wild goose chase for mangoes. Oh, come on Beth. It'll be fun. Plus, we can see if there's any truth to those rumors about Morty's multiverse fame. Wait, Morty's famous in other universes? That's so cool. Yeah, apparently he's a big deal in some places. Must be all that dumb luck he has. Hey, I'm not just lucky. I have skills, you know. Sure, Morty. Whatever you say, now let's go find those mangoes and maybe, just maybe, we'll stumble upon your multiverse doppelganger. What if I find my doppelganger too? Can I be famous too? Jerry, focus on something more important, like being a good father for once. Alright, enough family drama. We're here, the mango universe. It's, it's beautiful, Rick. I've never seen so many mangoes in one place. Look over there, Morty. It's your fan club. Oh my god, they're all wearing my face on their shirts. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. Now help me find the secret stash of rare mangoes. I need them for my latest experiment. What kind of experiment, Rick? And don't say it's another one of your secret affairs. Beth, there's no need to bring that up right now. Secret affair? Is there something I should know, Rick? Oh boy, this family just keeps getting more interesting every day. Can we please focus on the mangoes? We're running out of time here. Rick, I think I found them. The rarest mangoes in the whole universe. Excellent. Morty, grab as many as you can. We're going to be rich. I can't believe we risked our lives for mangoes. Yeah, but at least we got some juicy stories out of it. That's the spirit, Summer. Now let's get back home and start selling these mangoes for top dollar. I can't wait to see the look on my doppelganger's face when he finds out I'm famous in other universes. And maybe, just maybe, I'll discover a hidden talent for mango farming. Stars know I need a new career. Oh, Jerry. Just enjoy the ride while it lasts. Who knows what crazy adventure awaits us next. That's the spirit, Beth. Now let's get the hell out of here before someone realizes we stole their mangoes. Hey Morty, check out this new invention I made. It's a device that can turn any chair into a massage chair. Oh wow, that's cool Rick. Can I try it? Sure. Go ahead Morty. Just sit down and let the machine work its magic. Watching from the background, what's going on over there? Is that a massage chair? Smirking. Oh Jerry, you just stumbled upon one of my hidden talents. I give the best sports massages in the galaxy. Walking into the room, Rick, did you say sports massages? I've been feeling really sore from my workout. Mind giving me a quick rub down? Of course, Beth, take a seat and get ready to experience the power of my magical fingers. Bursting into the room, hey guys, you won't believe what happened. I just escaped from my interdimensional stalker. They were obsessed with my funny dance routines. Chuckling, Summer, you always manage to find yourself in the most bizarre situations. 
In awe. Rick, I had no idea you had such hidden talents. You're like a multi-dimensional renaissance man. Size, well, at least he's good at something. Can you work out these knots in my back, Rick? Winking. You bet, Beth. Prepare to be blown away by my magical massage skills. Curiously, so, Rick, what makes your massages so special? Chuckles. It's a combination of science, chaos theory, and, uh, the power of my fingers. It's an experience like no other. Feeling left out. Hey, Rick, can I get a massage too? Smirks. Morty, do you really think you can handle the intensity of my massage techniques? Determined. Yeah, I can handle it. I'm ready for the full Rick treatment. Laughs. All right, Morty. Brace yourself for the most intense massage of your life. Relaxing. Ah, Rick, this feels amazing. You really have a gift. Giggles. Yeah, Rick, who knew massage therapy could be so fun? Jealous. I can't believe I've been missing out on this incredible talent all these years. Grinning. Well, Jerry, now you know. And if you want a massage, just say the word. Eagerly? Really? You'd give me a massage, Rick? Sarcastically. Sure, Jerry. Just don't expect any miracles. I can't fix your deep-rooted issues with a back rub. Ecstatic. Rick, this is the best thing you've ever invented. I feel like a brand new man. Proud. That's the power of Rick's magical massages, Morty. Now, who's next in line for a transcendental experience? They all raise their hands, eager to experience Rick's massage skills. Int. Unicorn Ballet Studio, Day. A group of beautifully dressed ballet dancers, including myself, stand in the center of the studio. Aim one. All right, dancers. Today, we're taking our performance to a whole new level. Get ready for the Unicorn Ballet. Suddenly, the studio walls collapse, revealing a rainbow-filled meadow. Name two. What in the world is happening? As we step outside, we're transported to a magical land filled with unicorns. Aim 3, is this real life? Or have our dance rituals finally paid off? Ignoring the surrealism, we start practicing our ballet moves, incorporating swords that seemingly appear out of thin air. Aim 4, these swords better not mess up my perfect pirouette. Just as we're getting comfortable, a strong gust of wind blows a strange love letter into our midst. Aim 5, oh no. Another one of Lightyear's love letters. Aim 6. Why is he sending love letters to our ballet studio? Unfazed, we continue practicing, gracefully dodging the love letters flying around. Aim 7. Let's focus, people. We have a performance to nail. But in the midst of our routine, our lead dancer accidentally steps on a unicorn's tail. Aim 8. Oh, I think that unicorn's about to go ballistic. Suddenly, unicorns start unleashing a chorus of angry neighs, their horns glowing ominously. Aim 1. Abort. Abort. Retreat to the studio. We scramble back to the studio, with the enraged unicorns hot on our heels. Name 2. Why did we think this unicorn ballet was a good idea? Aim 3. It seemed like a great idea at the time. We just need to find a way to calm these unicorns down. Thinking quickly, we grab our ballet bags and pull out. Uterine sound machines? Aim 4. I never thought my sonography skills would come in handy in ballet. We activate the sound machines, projecting calming frequencies that appease the unicorns. Aim 5. It worked. The unicorns are settling down. Relieved, we resume our practice, blending the elegant art of ballet with a mysterious allure of unicorns. Aim 6. Who would have thought our ballet careers would take us into the realm of mythical creatures? As we twirl and leap, the unicorns join in, creating an ethereal ballet performance unlike anything the world has ever seen. Aim 7. The audience won't know what hit them. With the unicorns gracefully moving beside us, we dance our hearts out, hoping to create a masterpiece worthy of our magical surroundings. Fade out.
40. Grab your adventure pants and buckle up. We're going on a scientific roller coaster ride. Aw oh, geez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal? That's not in my DNA, Morty. We're going to explore the deepest corners of the multiverse and cause some interdimensional chaos while we're at it. Hey guys, can I come along? I could use a break from the boring reality of high school. Sure thing, Summer. Just remember, this ain't no field trip to a water park. We're talking about mind-bending, reality-shattering adventures here. I hope there won't be any alien creatures this time. Last time, they tried to probe my brain. Well, Morty, you know how it goes. Sometimes you just can't avoid an anal probe from outer space. Ew, seriously? You guys are messed up. Messed up? Nah, we're just bending the rules of conventional storytelling, Summer. Get ready for some dark humor and twisted plot twists. Rick, I still don't understand half the things you say. Are you sure we won't end up getting disintegrated or something? Morty, relax. As long as we stick together and keep our wits about us, we'll be fine. Plus, I always have a plan. Most of the time. This sounds risky. Are you sure we won't get into trouble? Trouble? Trouble is my middle name, Summer. Besides, where's the fun in playing it safe? We've got a live life on the edge, even if it means bending the laws of physics along the way. I guess you're right, Rick. It's always an unforgettable adventure with you. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's hop in the spaceship and warp into the unknown. Can we have snacks for the journey? I'm not going anywhere without my cucumber chips. Summer, we're going to galaxies far beyond your cucumbers. But fine, we'll pack some snacks too. Just don't blame me if they get disintegrated by an alien laser beam. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually excited for this crazy adventure. Let's do it, Rick! Strap in, Morty. It's gonna be a bumpy ride full of escapades and absurdity. Hold on tight, because things are about to get ridiculous. I guess I have no choice. Count me in, Rick. But if I lose a limb or something, I'm blaming you. Ah, the risks of being part of the Rick and Morty team. But trust me, Summer, the rewards will be exhilarating. All right, let's go explore the unknown, Rick. But can I ask one favor? Shoot, Morty, what do you need? Can we dial down the mind bending for once? My brain can only handle so much. Oh, Morty, you have no idea what you're in for. But sure, we'll take it easy, for now. Int. Living room. Day. I'm sitting on my couch, TMZ playing in the background. Suddenly, I notice a peculiar poster hanging on my wall. It's a mashup of two faces. One half is a rugged cop, the other half a beautiful lady cop. Weird, but intriguing. Triggering event. As I continue to stare at the poster, it starts glowing and emits a mysterious hum. Before I can process what's happening, the TV screen flickers, and the characters from the poster step out into my living room. Development. Blackjack, the cop, looking around, this is not what I was expecting when I signed up to be a cop. Natalie, the lady cop, smirking, well, get used to it, Blackjack. Seems like we've been sucked into some romantic comedy drama. Blackjack, groans, you've got to be kidding me, just my luck. They both take a moment to adjust to their new surroundings, still shocked by their sudden existence in my living room. Olin. As they try to figure out how they got there, a voice echoes from nowhere, a voice sounding suspiciously like mine. Me, Vio, welcome, Blackjack and Natalie, to the strange world beyond your poster. Can you find love and solve the mystery, all while adhering to the ridiculous tropes of a romantic comedy? Olin. Blackjack, rolls his eyes, oh, great, we're stuck in some bizarre experiment, forced to play out cliched rom-com scenarios for the entertainment of others. Natalie, smirking. Well, let's give them a show they won't forget. We'll outsmart this plot, Blackjack. Together, we'll escape this madness. They share a determined look, ready to face whatever the romantic comedy world throws at them. Fade out.
Ordi, grab your portal gun. We've got an interdimensional cycling race to attend. Oh man, Rick, I don't know about this. Last time we went to an interdimensional event, I ended up dating a sentient fart. Stop being such a wuss, Morty. This time, we're going to witness the scandalous love affair between Rick and an interdimensional cycling champion. Wait, what? You're cheating on Unity? Unity and I have an understanding. Besides, this Bengal cyclist has a body that defies physics. It's like they're an evolution of rectal muscles or something. Can I come too? I've always wanted to cycle interdimensionally. Jerry, you can barely cycle in our dimension. Hey, my cosplay skills impress everyone at Comic-Con. I think I can handle cycling. Dad, you're embarrassing yourself again. Can't you just stay home and water the plants? Watering the plants is just not enough excitement for me, Summer. All right, everyone is coming. Let's hop on the portal. They enter a field of grass bushes with a blue sky above. Wow, this place looks beautiful. Look, Rick, there's the interdimensional racetrack. Strap in, Morty. This is going to be one hell of a ride. Bengal cyclist, welcome, fellow racers. Ready to get your rectum muscles pumping? Bring it on, Bengal. I've been training in a dimension where cycling is the only form of currency. Rick, that's not even remotely possible. Gush, Morty, it's all about the confidence. Jerry, be careful out there. Don't embarrass us more than you already have. Don't worry, Beth. I've got this under control. Yeah, right. Stick to your daydreams, Dad. The race begins, and chaos ensues. Ordi, grab onto my bike. We need to catch up to Bengal. Rick, this is insane. We're going interdimensional speeds. I'm in last place. Oh, the shame. Jerry, just enjoy the ride. You're not winning any awards here. In a twist of fate, Jerry discovers a shortcut. Huh. Take that, everyone. Jerry Smith, the interdimensional cycling champion. Dad, how did you? It's all in the comedic timing, Summer. All in the comedic timing. As the race comes to an end. Bengal cyclist, Rick, you may have won this time, but I'll always be one step ahead in the game of scandalous love affairs. Touché, Bengal, we'll meet again in another dimension, where the cycling is even more stimulating. Can we just go home now? This entire experience has scarred me for life. Oh, Morty, you'll get used to it. Welcome to the wonderful world of being a smith. They all hop back through the portal, leaving behind a field of grass and a blue sky. Morty, we gotta go on another adventure. I just got word of an alien goddess causing chaos on planet Zorgon. Are you serious, Rick? Can't we take a break for once? Breaks are for pansies, Morty. We're interdimensional heroes, remember? Now grab your portal gun and let's go. Rick, is it really necessary to involve our teenage son in dangerous escapades like this? Listen, Beth, Morty needs to toughen up. Plus, it's character building or whatever. Now quit being a buzzkill and let's get going. Ah, can't believe I'm missing out on another party just because of your stupid adventures, Morty. Sorry, Summer. You know how it goes with Grandpa Rick here. Guys, I've been feeling really unfulfilled lately. Maybe I should join you on this adventure. Oh, Jerry, you always find a way to make things worse. Fine, you can come, but no complaining. Really? You mean it? Yeah, yeah. Just get in the spaceship already. Scene transitions to the spaceship where the group is flying through space. Rick, are you sure we're going the right way? We've been flying for hours. Morty, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Besides, we're almost there. Just hang tight. Rick, can you please stop using the spaceship as a bar? What can I say, Beth? The alcohol helps me think. 
Plus, it's a long journey. Burps. Okay, we're here. Everyone, suit up and be prepared for anything. The group arrives at Planet Zorgon, where chaos and destruction are everywhere. Whoa, Rick, what happened here? Looks like our alien goddess friend had a bit of a tantrum. Let's find her and put a stop to it. Are you sure we can handle this, Rick? She looks pretty powerful. Jerry, relax, I've dealt with worse, just follow my lead. Scene cuts to the group facing the alien goddess. Alien goddess, you dare oppose me, puny mortals? Oh, please, spare us the dramatics. We're just here to clean up your mess. Alien goddess, mortals cannot comprehend my power. Yeah, we get it. You're all powerful and stuff. Can we just wrap this up so we can go home? Beth, please, let the goddess have her moment. Scene ensues with an epic battle between the group and the alien goddess. Rick, do you have a plan here? We're getting our butts kicked. Just follow my lead, Summer. And don't forget to dodge. I can't believe we're actually fighting an alien goddess. This is insane. Welcome to the life of an interdimensional hero, Morty. Now focus. Scene escalates with explosions, witty banter, and the eventual defeat of the alien goddess. Well, that was easy. I can't believe we actually did it. We defeated an alien goddess. This is going to be quite the story to tell at parties. Yeah, yeah, let's just clean up this mess and head back home. I'm craving some hardies. Scene ends as the group returns to Earth, victorious and ready for their next adventure. Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got another interdimensional adventure to go on. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal is boring, Morty. We're going to explore the far reaches of the multiverse and see what trouble we can get into. Oh, hey guys, mind if I tag along? I could use a little excitement in my life. Jerry, you're not going anywhere with Rick and Morty. You'll just end up causing more trouble than it's worth. Oh. Come on, Beth. Let him come along. It'll be hilarious to watch him panic in alternate dimensions. Okay, but if anything goes wrong, it's on you, Grandpa. Trust me, Morty, everything always goes wrong. It's what makes life interesting. Fine, but if Jerry gets hurt, you're both grounded. Grounded? That's cute, Beth. We'll see about that. They activate the portal and enter a strange world filled with floating Columbia. Whoa, Rick, what's going on here? Is this some kind of psychedelic trip? No, oh, Morty, this is the dimension of dancing holographic Columbias. They're the life of the party in every universe. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day when floating Columbias became a thing. All right, Rick, let's explore this dimension and get out of here before things get even weirder. Too late, Beth, we've already been sucked into a whirlwind of memes and quasars. Oh no, Rick! We're trapped in a never-ending loop of internet memes. How are we gonna get out of this one? Don't worry, Morty, I've got a plan. We just need to find the Meme Lord and convince him to break the cycle. Meme Lord? Is that even a real thing? In this dimension, Jerry, everything is real. Now shut up and let me work. They journey through the meme-filled dimension, encountering bizarre and hilarious scenarios. Rick, there's the Meme Lord. He's right over there. Hey, Meme Lord, we need your help. Please, stop the memes. Meme Lord, in a booming voice. Only if you can defeat me in a dance-off. A dance-off? Seriously? Looks like we have no choice, Jerry. Time to shake your groove thing. They engage in an epic dance battle with the Meme Lord, complete with outrageous moves and hilarious mishaps. Morty, use the power of your awkwardness. It's our only hope. I'm trying, Rick, but I don't think I was born to be a dancer. Come on, Morty. Channel your inner rhythm. We can't let these memes conquer us. With a burst of confidence, Morty unleashes an incredible dance routine, 
defeating the meme lord and breaking the meme cycle. Well done, Morty. You saved us all from the endless torment of internet memes. Thanks, Rick. I guess sometimes you just have to embrace the weirdness and dance your way out of trouble. I never thought I'd say this, but I actually had a great time. Thanks, guys. Don't get used to it, Jerry. Next time, we're going to a dimension filled with demonic ducks or something equally insane. They all laugh as they activate the portal and head back home, ready for their next interdimensional adventure. All right, Morty. Buckle up for another dimension-spanning adventure. Ah, uh, Rick, why does that bear have headphones on its ears and a neon sign that says BDDD -D 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 above it? Who cares, Morty? It's probably just another wacky interdimensional anomaly. Let's check it out. Hey, in a deep voice, welcome to the bear dimension, where the party never stops. Welcome to BDDD. -D -D. I, ah, uh, don't think I'm ready for this, Rick. I'm just a regular guy who likes a good game of golf. Jerry, I think it's time you face your fears. Plus, I'm curious to see what this dimension has to offer. Yeah, Dad, stop being such a wuss. Let's go party with the bear. Rick, are we really going to party with a bear in a dimension called BDDD? Morty, you worry too much. Besides, look at all those flashing lights and thumping beats. This place is calling our names. Eh, excitedly, welcome to the bear kingdom, where everyone's got rhythm and nobody cares about human problems. Alright, bear, show us what you got. We're here to have a good time. Eh, DJing, alright, let's kick it off with some radioactive beats from Radiohead. Radioactive beats? Is that even scientifically possible? Jerry, in this dimension, nothing is impossible. Just let loose and enjoy the music. Rick, do you think we should be concerned about the werewolf infestation reports we've been hearing? Ah, uh, Beth, it's probably just a bunch of rumors. Werewolves are so last dimension anyway. Suddenly transformed into a werewolf. Ah, uh, guys, I think the rumors might be true. Great job, Rick. Now we're stuck partying with werewolves. This night just keeps getting better and better. Relax, Morty, I've got a plan. Werewolves, meet my patented werewolf be gone serum. Werewolf. Reverts back to human form. Oh wow, thanks Rick. I feel so normal again. No problemo, buddy. Now let's get back to dancing. Hey, over the loudspeakers, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Rick and his werewolf cleansing skills. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually having a good time. Thanks, Rick. Anytime, Jerry. Just remember, never judge a party by its neon sign. This has been quite the adventure. I'm glad we took a leap of faith and joined the bear in BDDD. Yeah, Dad, maybe it's time you embraced your wild side more often. I'm just glad things worked out in the end. Now I can tell Jessica I partied with werewolves in an alternate dimension. She'll be so impressed. All right, family, let's keep the party going. Who's ready for the next dimension? Everyone, cheering, we are. Morty, listen up, we're going on a wild adventure tonight. I've discovered an alternate dimension where every casino is run by squirrels. Squirrels, Rick? Are you serious? Deadly serious, Morty. These squirrels have developed advanced intelligence and have built a casino empire. 
we're gonna infiltrate it. Infiltrate a squirrel casino? Count me out. I'm not risking my life for some nuts. Oh, come on Jerry. It sounds exciting. Let's do it. That's the spirit, Beth. Morty, go grab your laser gun and let's get going. Oh, Rick, I don't have a laser gun. Well, looks like we'll have to make a quick stop at the Interdimensional Weapon Emporium. We might even run into some Russian mobsters there. Russian mobsters? This is getting crazier by the minute. Drap in, Jerry, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Scene, Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Beth enter the casino, surrounded by neon lights and the sound of slot machines. Rick, how are we gonna blend in? We're not squirrels. Don't worry, Morty, I've got a plan. We're gonna pretend to be a family of acrobats. Acrobats? Seriously? I can't even touch my toes. Just go with it, Jerry. Play along. Scene. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Beth perform fake acrobatic tricks, attracting the attention of the Squirrel Casino owner. Squirrel Casino owner. Well, well, well. What do we have here? A new act for my casino? That's right, buddy. The Smith family acrobats are here to entertain your guests. Scene. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Beth engage in a series of outrageous acrobatic moves, causing chaos and confusion. Rick, these squirrels are crazy. They're throwing acorns at us. Just keep going, Morty. We're almost there. Scene. The Smith family acrobats reach the secret vault hidden behind the slot machines. Rick, we made it. Quick, Morty, use your archery skills to unlock the vault. Scene. Morty shoots an arrow into the vault, triggering the opening mechanism. Holy crap, Morty. You're a natural archer. Let's grab the squirrel's secret stash and get out of here. Scene. The Smith family acrobats escape the casino with bags of squirrel cash. Another successful adventure, Morty. And it all started with a row of slot machines. Yeah, who knew squirrels could be so lucrative? Scene. The Smith family acrobats return to their dimension and celebrate their victorious heist. I can't believe we actually pulled it off. It just goes to show, you never know what bizarre opportunities life will throw your way. Indeed, Beth. Now, let's party like it's Prague. Scene. The Smith family dances and celebrates, surrounded by piles of squirrel cash. This is insane, Rick. We're swimming in squirrel money. We did it all without breaking a sweat. Well, maybe just a little sweat. I guess sometimes fake proposal pranks do pay off. Scene. The Smith family continues the celebration, knowing that their wild adventures will always lead to the craziest and most unexpected outcomes. Cheers to living life on the edge and never turning down an adventure. Damn straight, Beth. We're the Smith family, the masters of chaos and the rulers of the multiverse. In scene. The Smith family laughs and clinks their glasses together as the camera fades out. Morty, we've got a problem. There's a train traveling down the tracks in a grass field with a sky background and a reflection of a train on the ground. Oh geez, Rick! That sounds like a pretty bizarre situation. What do we do? Well, Morty, we gotta hitch a ride on that train and see where it takes us. Strap in, Morty, it's about to get wild. Peering out of the window. What's going on here? Why is there a train in our backyard? Oh Jerry, can't you just relax and enjoy the strange and magical moments that life throws at us? Yeah, Dad. Who knows, maybe this train ride will lead us to some epic adventure. Count me in. Alright, now that we're all on board, let's rock this train. Hold on tight, folks. Music players, Let It Ride by Bachman, Turner Overdrive fills the cabin as the train picks up speed. Rick, I'm getting nervous. What if this train goes off the rails? Morty, chill out, we're on the wildest ride of our lives. No time for fear, buddy. This is insane. I can't believe I'm riding a train to who knows where. 
Jerry, just think of it as another opportunity for personal growth. Embrace the unknown. Whoa! This train ride is giving me the adrenaline rush I've been craving. This is living. Hold on to your butts, everyone. We're about to enter the parallel dimension of Macy's. Get ready for some mind-bending discounts. Ah, uh, Rick, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Everything in this Macy's is alive. Yeah, Morty, seems like these clothes really want to dress us up. But we won't let them. We make our own fashion choices. I can't believe we're having a fashion face-off in a parallel dimension. What will the neighbors think? Oh, who cares about the neighbors, Jerry? Let them envy our high fashion adventures. This is amazing. I'm trying on clothes from all dimensions. I'm a fashion icon in the making. All right, folks, time to move on. Next stop, the karaoke dimension. Get ready to unleash your hidden talents. Music plays, I Will Always Love You, by Whitney Houston fills the karaoke bar. Rick, I can't sing in front of all these people. Ordy, let it out, buddy. Sing like your life depends on it. Oh, why not? I'll give it a go. Jerry starts belting out the song. That's the spirit, Jerry. Let your heart soar with each note. Joining in, I'm feeling the power of Whitney Houston. This is my moment. All right, we've conquered the karaoke dimension. Time to move on to the next mind-blowing adventure. And so, our fearless family continues their wild ride on the interdimensional train, exploring strange worlds, encountering bizarre characters, and laughing together through it all. Who knows where their next journey will take them, but one thing's for sure, it'll be one hell of a ride. Title, Gravity's Gigolo Gossip, A Galactic Encounter. Int. Intergalactic Bar, Night. The bar is bustling with various alien species from different galaxies. The atmosphere is vibrant, with exotic music playing in the background. I, Jarger Binks, stand at the center of attention. A glowing green light emanates from behind me, contrasting with a glowing blue light behind a mysterious stranger. Jarger Binks. Excitedly, Mesa can't believe Mesa Luck, meeting you here, in this bar, in the midst of all these galaxies. The Force be with us, my friend. Mysterious stranger, smirking, the Force works in mysterious ways, Jar Jar Binks. I've heard tales of your escapades, care to share any juicy gossip? Jar Jar Binks, whispering, oh, you betcha, I've got the scoop on gravity's gigolo. He's been spreading his magnetic charm across the universe, seducing all sorts of celestial bodies. Mysterious stranger, intrigued, tell me more, Jarger. I find this gigolo's exploits quite fascinating. Jarger Binks, leaning in, well, rumor has it that Gravity's gigolo once had a steamy affair with NARN from Babylon 5. Those two couldn't keep their gravities apart. Mysterious stranger, laughs, that's quite the illicit affair. I wonder how Babylon 5's crew would react to such scandalous behavior. Jarger Binks, winking, oh, they were shocked, but you know what they say. Love has no boundaries, not even across galaxies. Mysterious stranger, contemplative, indeed. Love transcends time and space. But what about the denouement? Did gravity's gigolo face any consequences? Jarger Binks, sighing. Unfortunately, their affair was short-lived. Gravity's gigolo's magnetic charm attracted the attention of an intergalactic council. They banished him to a distant black hole, forever separated from his beloved Narn. Mysterious stranger, Sympathetic, love can be a double-edged lightsaber, indeed. It seems gravity's gigolo learned that the hard way. Jarger Binks, nodding, you got that right, but enough about the gigolo. I heard some intriguing gossip about your escapades with the Sith Lord. Care to share? Mysterious stranger, raises an eyebrow, ah, you've caught wind of my adventures, Jarger. Perhaps another time, the universe is full of secrets, after all. They both exchange mischievous smiles ready to engage in more tantalizing gossip as the night unfolds. Fade out.
Int. Rick's Garage, Day. Rick is hunched over his computer, typing rapid fire code. Morty stands nearby, fidgeting nervously. Hey, Rick, what are you working on? Just tweaking the interdimensional communication software, Morty. Trying to reach some hot alien babes. Ah, okay. But shouldn't we be focusing on something more important? Important? Morty, nothing's more important than getting laid across the multiverse. Well, I guess that's one way to look at it. Suddenly, the computer screen flashes a bright green and white message. Finally. It worked. We've made contact. Contact, huh? Maybe I can talk to that alien princess from my school. Hold on, Morty. This could be dangerous. Let me handle it. They see a video feed appear on the screen. A stunning alien princess appears. Alien princess. Greetings, Earthlings. I come in peace and in search of a good time. Stunned. No way. Is that Jessica? Looks like your Earth crush is actually an alien princess, Morty. Talk about a cosmic twist. Excited. This is unbelievable. I never thought I'd get a chance with her. Now, Morty, remember, she might not be as innocent as she seems. Aliens have some pretty wild customs. I'll take my chances, Rick. You worry too much. Hey, Jessica, wanna go for a ride in Rick's spaceship? Jessica. Sure, Morty. I've always wanted to explore the galaxy and maybe make out on some distant planet. Morty blushes, his heart racing. Hey! Yeah, that sounds... Um, out of this world. Be safe, Morty. And bring protection. You never know what kind of alien STDs are out there. Morty and Jessica leave the garage, a mix of excitement and nerves on their faces. Raising his flask, to young love and intergalactic hookups. Int. Spaceship, night. Morty and Jessica are floating weightlessly, their lips locked together. Thinking, wow, I never thought I'd be making out in space. Thank you, Rick. They continue their passionate embrace, drifting through the cosmos, just two love-struck teenagers on an alien adventure. Fade out. Burping. Morty, grab your portal gun. We've got a dimension hopping adventure on our hands. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have one normal day? Normal is boring, Morty. We need some excitement in our lives. Now let's go. Dash dash dash. Looking at the portal gun, Morty, why is there a sticker of a unicorn on my portal gun? Ah, oh, sorry, Rick. I thought it needed some pizzazz. Pizzazz? This is science, Morty not a carnival ride. Dash dash dash. Rick, I think this dimension is filled with nothing but slot machines. Well, Morty, let's see if we can hit the jackpot and find our way back home. Dash dash dash. Rick, I can't believe it. We won the jackpot. Morty, we didn't just win the jackpot. We hacked the entire slot machine system. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've invented a device that can make anyone laugh uncontrollably. Isn't that a bit unethical, Rick? Ethics, schmethics. Let's try it out on Jerry. Dash dash dash. Laughing uncontrollably. Rick, Morty, this is amazing. I can't stop laughing. Yeah, Jerry, we know. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've created a cloning machine. Let's clone ourselves and have a dance off. I don't know, Rick. That seems a little weird. Weird, Morty. We live in a multiverse of endless possibilities. Get your dancing shoes on. Dash dash dash. Rick, we're running out of ideas for adventures. What do we do now? 
40. Have you forgotten about the interdimensional club? Let's go party with Sophie Turner and all the other celebrities. Dash dash dash. Sophie Turner, Rick, Morty, welcome to the interdimensional club. Care to join us for a game of truth or dare? Only if the dares involve intergalactic mischief. Otherwise, we're out. Dash dash dash. Morty, I found a portal that leads to a dimension filled with nothing but hair and makeup. Wow, that's weirdly specific, Rick. What can I say, Morty? Some dimensions are just fabulously glamorous. Dash dash dash. Morty, we've stumbled upon a dimension where slot machines hold the secrets to the universe. We must decipher their language. Rick, I don't think slot machines have secrets. They're just random chance. Morty, when have I ever been wrong? Dash dash dash. Rick, I can't believe we're stuck in a dimension where everything is a living slot machine. What do we do? Morty, we gotta play along. Let's pull the lever and see where it takes us. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've created a potion that turns anyone who drinks it into a tabloid journalist. Isn't that a bit intrusive, Rick? Intrusive, Morty. We're talking about juicy stories and scandal mongering. It's the perfect disguise. Dash dash dash. Rick, I think we've gone too far with this tabloid journalist potion. We're ruining people's lives. Morty, that's the price of being an ethically questionable journalist. Now let's get that scoop on aliens in Hollywood. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've invented a truth serum. Let's use it on ourselves and see what scandalous secrets we uncover. I don't know, Rick. Some things are better left unsaid. Morty, you're such a goody two-shoes. Where's your sense of adventure? Dash dash dash. Rick, I can't believe we're trapped in a dimension where gossip is the currency. How do we get out of here? Morty, we need to start a rumor so scandalous that it creates a black hole of intrigue and implodes the dimension. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've discovered a dimension where the laws of physics are based on hair and makeup. It's like a glamorous alternate universe. Rick, I don't think that makes any scientific sense. Morty, since when do alternate universes have to make sense? It's all about the drama, baby. Dash dash dash. Rick, I've had enough of these scandalous adventures. Can't we just have a normal day for once? Morty, normal is overrated. Let's embrace the chaos and keep pushing the boundaries. Dash dash dash. Morty, I found a dimension where everyone is obsessed with tabloid gossip. We'll fit right in. I don't know, Rick. I feel like we're losing a bit of our humanity with all this scandal mongering. Morty, let's face it. Humanity was overrated anyway. Title, Cat and Bird, A Tale of Unlikely Friends. Int. Living Room, Day. The camera pans across a cozy living room where a picture frame hangs on the wall. The frame contains a photo of a cat and a bird. Bird Person, a British short hair, sits on the left side of the frame, while Sir Featherington, a flamboyant bird, perches on the right side. Bird Person, eyeing Sir Featherington. So, how did I end up sharing a frame with a bird? Sir F E A T H E R I N G T O N. Snooty, well, bird person, we were both deemed adorable and worthy subjects for this magnificent frame. Bird person, adorable, huh? I suppose the humans find us irresistible. Sir F E A T H E R I N G T O N. Naturally, darling, we bring joy to their existence, even from a distance. Bird person, mocking. You think being in this frame makes us important? We're just some random pets. Sir F E A T H E R I N G T O N. Oh, but we are more than that, dear bird person. We are the epitome of elegance, sophistication, and utter fabulosity. Bird person, spare me the drama, Sir Featherington. Just because you have feathers doesn't mean you're superior. Sir F E A T H E R I N G T O N. Huffs, clawed creatures like you will never understand the refined world of feathers. Bird person, 
Feathers may be fancy, but can you catch a mouse with them? I think not. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. In a faux British accent, well, my dear, I have no interest in dirty vermin. I have tea parties to attend and gossip to spread. Bird person. Sarcastic. Oh, how exquisite. Please, do tell me the latest bird drama. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Enthusiastically, well, darling, let me share the scandalous tale of how Mrs. Tweedum stole Mr. Chirpington's worm. Bird person. Rolls eyes. Fascinating. Truly, I'm enthralled. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Ignoring bird person's sarcasm, of course you are, my dear. The world of birds is intoxicating. Bird person. Smirking. I suppose I'll never understand the complexities of a bird's life. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Quite right, bird person. Stick to chasing your tail and napping all day. That seems to be your forte. Bird person. Playful. At least I don't waste my time preening in front of a mirror. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Flustered. How dare you suggest such a thing? I simply maintain my impeccable appearance. Bird person. Chuckles. Well, Sir Featherington. As much as I enjoy our banter, there's more to life than appearances and gossip. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Grudgingly, perhaps you have a point, my feline friend. There is beauty in simplicity and companionship. Bird person. Smiles. Precisely. Our differences may separate us, but this frame reminds us that we can coexist in harmony. Sir F-E-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Softly, a truce, then? Bird person. Extends a paw. A truce indeed, Sir Featherington. They shake paws and share a moment of understanding. Fade out. Int. Smoky Western Desert, Day. Rick and Morty are running through the desert, surrounded by billowing smoke clouds. They spot a red phone booth engulfed in flames. Grinning, Morty, look at that. A burning phone booth. I bet there's a wild adventure waiting for us inside. Panicked, Rick, are you serious? It's on fire. We shouldn't go near it. Sarcastically, oh, come on, Morty. Where's your sense of adventure? You're like a scared little sheep. Bah. Defensively, well, excuse me for not wanting to become a crispy Morty nugget, Rick. Rick and Morty cautiously approach the blazing phone booth. Suddenly, a portal opens, revealing a dimension filled with talking squirrels. Smirking, Morty, look, talking squirrels. This is 10 times better than I expected. Squirrel one, in a high-pitched voice, who dares enter our dimension? Nervously, um, we didn't mean to intrude, Mr. Squirrels. Squirrel 2, mocking, Mr. Squirrels. How quaint. We are the Council of Intergalactic Squirrels, mortal. Rolling his eyes, great. Now we have to deal with interdimensional bureaucracy. Squirrel 3, demanding, state your purpose here. Defiantly, our purpose? We came for the squirrel circus and a bag of nuts, obviously. Whispering to Rick. I don't think they have a squirrel circus, Rick. Whispering back, well, we'll just have to improvise, Morty. Rick and Morty start performing an impromptu squirrel circus routine, complete with nut juggling and tightrope walking. 
Squirrel 1, impressed, this is highly irregular, but we'll allow it. We've never seen humans perform such foolishness before. Suddenly, a squirrel dressed in a top hat and cape swoops down from the sky. Squirrel ringleader, dramatically, Rick and Morty, you dare mock our sacred squirrel traditions? Prepare to face the consequences. Smirking. Oh, it's on, squirrel boy. I hope you're ready for some serious squirrel punishment. Whispering to Rick. Ah, Rick, I don't think that's a good idea. Whispering back. Nonsense, Morty. This is gonna be nuts. Rick and Morty engage in an epic squirrel versus human battle, complete with acrobatics, laser beams, and exploding nuts. Finally, Rick and Morty emerge victorious, covered in squirrel dust and triumphantly holding a bag of nuts. Ending, well, Morty, that was one hell of a squirrel showdown. Let's get out of here before things get even weirder. Breathless, yeah, I've had enough squirrels for one day, Rick. They step back through the portal, leaving behind a bewildered council of intergalactic squirrels. As the flames engulf the phone booth, Rick and Morty continue their adventure through the multiverse, ready for whatever absurdity awaits them next. Fade out. Hey Morty, did I ever tell you about the time I attended a party in Darmstadium, the element with atomic number 110? Ah, uh, no, Rick. What happened? Well, Morty, it was a wild night. I stumbled upon a group of people with glowing faces and makeup on. They looked like they were ready for a photo shoot in a dark room with purple lighting. Whoa, that sounds kinda creepy, Rick. Creepy? Nah, Morty. Turns out they were just really big fans of Hatchimals. They wanted to capture their excitement in a picture. And where do I fit into all of this? You don't, Jerry. Anyway, as the night progressed, things got even crazier. We accidentally unleashed a bunch of zombie Hatchimals at a bachelor party. Seriously? Zombie Hatchimals? Yep, they were hungry for brains and party favors. We had to fight them off with gallium, the metal that melts in your hand. This is insane, Rick. Insane? Just wait. As we escaped the zombie Hatchimals, we stumbled upon a moon filled with terrifying paranormal activity. Ghosts on a moon? Ghosts, monsters, the whole shebang. But luckily, I had my trusty ghost-catching gadget with me. Saved the day, as always. This is like a messed up sci-fi nightmare. Exactly, Summer. It's like a twisted episode of a reality TV show crossed with a sci-fi thriller. I can't believe we survived all of that. Survival is my middle name, Morty. Well, actually, it's Antonio, but you get the point. Why do we always end up in these insane situations, Rick? Because life is an unpredictable, chaotic mess, Jerry. Embrace it or get left behind. I don't know if I can handle this level of craziness, Rick. Well, buckle up, Morty. Because it's gonna get a whole lot crazier from here on out. Great. Just what we needed. More insanity. That's the spirit, Summer. It's all about embracing the madness and finding humor in the chaos. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Relax, Jerry. You're like a sitcom character in a sci-fi show. You'll be fine. I guess we'll have to trust you, Rick. Trust me, Morty. That's an oxymoron. But hey, what's life without a little adventure? I guess we're in it for the long haul, then. Drop in, my dysfunctional family. Our next adventure awaits, and it's gonna be a wild ride. Morty, I've just perfected my newest invention, 
the Chu Man Helmet. It's capable of translating any language in the universe into Chewbacca's language. W whoa, Rick, that sounds awesome, but isn't it a bit, you know, unnecessary? Ordi, if Alan Turing had this technology, he would have revolutionized the entire field of linguistic communication. Plus, it makes for a great party trick. Entering the room, did someone say party trick? I'm up for some fun. Oh, look who decided to join us. Jerry, put this Chewbacca helmet on and let's see how you handle it. All right, all right, but I better not embarrass myself. Entering with excitement. Hey, guys, what's all the commotion about? Rick just came up with this Chew Man helmet thing. Apparently, Jerry's gonna try it out. Oh, this I have to see. Pass it to me, Jerry. Passing the helmet to Summer. Careful, it's still in prototype stage. Putting the helmet on. So, how's this supposed to work, Rick? Just think of something you want to say, and the helmet will translate it into Chewbacca's language. In Chewbacca's language, air. Ah ha ha, that's hilarious, Summer, you're a natural Chewbacca. Dad, you gotta try it now. Don't be a party pooper. Fine, fine. But you better not record this and put it on the internet. Snickering, too late, Jerry. It's already live streaming on Interdimensional 2. Nervously, wa well, what? Laughing. Just kidding, Jerry. Put the helmet on and show us your inner Chewbacca. Reluctantly putting the helmet on. All right, here goes nothing. As Jerry starts to speak in Chewbacca's language, the lights in the room start to flicker on and off. Whoa, what's happening, Rick? I think the Chew Man helmet is causing a feedback loop with the light frequencies. Jerry, keep talking. Let's see what happens. Continuing in Chewbacca's language, R R R R A A A A A A A G H. The lights start flashing rapidly, and suddenly, a portal opens in the middle of the room. Oh my god, Rick! What have you done? I didn't expect this, Morty. It seems that Jerry's Chewbacca communication triggered a dimensional disruption. The portal sucks them all in, transporting them to a bizarre alternate world filled with humanoid aliens dancing to pulsating beats. What the hell, Rick? Where are we? Ordi, this is the Venus Vixen Vacancy Dimension. It seems our Chewbacca conversation created a bridge to this wild party universe. Starting to panic. How do we get back, Rick? Relax, Jerry. All we have to do is dance our way back to the portal. The aliens here communicate through dance, so you better bust a move. W what? I can't dance. No excuses, Jerry. This is your party trick redemption. Show them your best moves. The group starts dancing, blending their earthly dance moves with the alien dance style. Slowly, they make their way towards the portal. Rick, I can't believe we're in an alternate dimension just because of Chewbacca. Life's funny that way, Summer. Now keep dancing, we're almost there. As they reach the portal, the lights in the room start to stabilize and the portal closes. We made it, Rick! We're back home! Catching his breath. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad to be back in our boring reality. Well, you might think it's boring now, Jerry, but just wait until I perfect the Chu Man Helmet 2.0. The group laughs, relieved to be home and reminiscing about their bizarre interdimensional adventure. End of episode. Ordi, pack your bags. We're going on a wild adventure. Ah, oh, okay Rick, but where are we going this time? We're heading to the Arctic to study the effects of cryonic revival on penguins. Penguins? Really? Trust me, Mordi, there's a whole cryonic revival culture clash happening between the penguins and the polar bears. It's fascinating. I guess so, Rick. But what's with the black bag? Oh, this? It contains our secret weapon. A fake proposal prank kit. Fake proposal prank? What are we gonna do with that? We're gonna unleash chaos, Morty. We'll pull pranks on the penguins and polar bears, 
stirring up a mayhem they've never seen before. I don't know, Rick. This sounds kinda cruel. Cruel? Nah, Morty. It's all in good fun. Plus, it's gonna make for some seriously scandalous gossip among the animal kingdom. Alright, fine. Let's do it. But can we at least take a break and warm up in that abandoned mine over there? Sure thing, Morty. Just remember, the abandoned mine horror scenario could get a little intense. Intense? Rick, I thought we were just gonna be pranking animals. Well, sometimes pranks have unintended consequences, Morty. Like accidentally summoning ancient spirits in abandoned mines. It happens. Great, just great. This is gonna be one hell of a trip. And speaking of hell, Morty, did I ever tell you about my secret affair with an alien queen? What? No, you never mentioned that, Rick. Yeah, well, secrets don't stay hidden forever, Morty. This affair is about to come back and haunt us during our cryonic revival escapade. This trip just keeps getting crazier, doesn't it? Buckle up, Morty. We're about to dive into a virtual manga library filled with X-rated adventures. Oh geez, Rick. Can't we just have a normal adventure for once? Normal is overrated, Morty. Now, let's go explore this world of virtual manga and scandalize a few unsuspecting penguins along the way. Fine, let's do it. But I swear, if this ends up on intergalactic tabloids, I'm blaming you, Rick. Fair enough, Morty. Now, let's go make some outrageous, scandal-mongering, and utterly hilarious memories. All right, Morty, we've got a new adventure waiting for us. Get your portal gun ready. Oh, Rick, I don't know if I can handle another crazy dimension. Last time we ended up in a world where everyone had butts for faces. Morty, stop being such a pansy. We're going to a parallel universe where Batman is actually a bat-themed tax accountant. Trust me, it's gonna be hilarious. What? Batman working as a tax accountant? That's preposterous. Dad, just let Rick do his thing. You know how he loves messing with superhero tropes. Alright, everybody, buckle up. We're diving headfirst into a pixelated video game world where Batman is crunching numbers and Mega Man is saving the day. Wow, Rick, this place is incredible. Look at that poster. It's Batman and Mega Man teaming up with the Power Rangers to fight Ripto. Yeah, Morty, this universe is a mishmash of all our childhood fantasies. And hey, why not throw in some bird person too? Bird person in a video game? That's so cool. Wait, Rick, what's that noise? Oh, Morty, that's the sound of the ultimate showdown. We're here to witness the grand finale of the eSports championship, where people are betting on video game battles like there's no tomorrow. Betting on eSports? That's a thing? Of course it is, Jerry. People will bet on anything. It's the ultimate mix of nerd culture and greed. I can't believe we're actually witnessing this. Who would have thought I'd ever see Meta Knight going head to head with Mario? Ice full of surprises, Summer. Now, let's place our bets and see who comes out on top. Rick, is it even legal to bet on video game battles? Morty, legality is just a feudal concept in the multiverse. Now, let's go get some nachos from Del Taco and enjoy this epic showdown. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is actually kind of exciting. That's the spirit, Jerry. Sit back, relax, and watch the chaos unfold. Hey, Rick, look! Bird person just made a killer move and wiped out Meta Knight. Morty, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of high-octane drama that keeps us entertained. I never thought I'd say this, but this is way better than reality TV. I guess there's a certain charm to the absurdity of it all. Exactly, Jerry. Life is all about embracing the absurd and finding entertainment in the most unlikely places. So, are we gonna stay here and watch the rest of the tournament? Aw, oh, Morty, we've had our fill of scandalous video game betting. It's time to get back to our normal, 
slightly less insane dimension. Thank goodness. I never thought I'd miss our boring old reality. Ah, come on, Jerry. Where's your sense of adventure? Now, let's get out of here before someone discovers our portal. Yeah, I don't think they'd appreciate us stealing their nachos and teleporting away. Fine, Morty, we'll leave the nachos behind. But remember, in the multiverse, anything is possible. I can't wait to tell my friends about this. They'll never believe it. Just make sure to leave out the gory details, Summer. We don't want to scar them for life. Rick, do you ever think we'll find a dimension where everything makes sense? Morty, if everything made sense, life wouldn't be half as interesting. Embrace the chaos, my young Padawan. Dark Matter Diva Drama Int Slack National Accelerator Laboratory, Conference Room, Day A group of scientists, including Rukia Kuchiki, sits around a table with laptops in front of them. Crombopulous Michael, a charismatic and attractive physicist, stands in front of them. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S Michael Alright, team. Gather, round. Today we have a very important event coming up. Romantic Trivia Night. Rajesh, the nerdy astrophysicist, excitedly raises his hand. Rajesh. Oh. Oh. Will there be milk and cookies? The room erupts in laughter, except for Lucinda, the serious and no-nonsense quantum physicist. Lucinda. Forget the cookies, Rajesh. Let's focus on the trivia. Romance is just a chemical reaction, after all. Crombopulous Michael opens his laptop, revealing a presentation filled with heart-shaped formulas. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S Michael. I've prepared a crash course on romantic equations. Let's study these formulas and make a stellar impression tonight. As they delve into the study material, Rukia finds herself growing more captivated by Crombopulous Michael's charm. Rukia. Whispering to herself. What is happening to me? I'm a scientist, not a love-struck teenager. Rukia tries to focus on the equations but keeps stealing glances at Crombopulous Michael, who seems completely unaware of her feelings. Meanwhile, Melissa, a sassy biochemist, interrupts the moment with a mischievous smile. Melissa. You know, Rukia, I heard a rumor that Crombopulous Michael has a secret crush on you. Rukia. Intensely curious. What? That can't be true. Melissa smirks and walks away, leaving Rukia in a pit of confusion. As the day progresses, tensions rise between team members, each trying to outdo the other in their knowledge of romantic trivia. Rajesh. Intense and competitive. What element is known as the love potion in chemistry? Lucinda. Nails it. Pheromones. They ignite the spark of attraction. Crombopulous Michael, impressed by Lucinda's confidence, steps closer to her. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S Michael. You got quite a scientific charm, Lucinda. Care to join forces? Lucinda. Smiling smugly. Only if you can handle the heat, Michael. Their flirtatious banter catches Rukia's attention, fueling her determination to catch Crombopulous Michael's eye. Rukia. To herself. I won't let this dark matter diva steal my chance. With newfound determination, Rukia dives into her studying, determined to prove her worth and win Crombopulous Michael's admiration. Int. Slack National Accelerator Laboratory, Conference Room, Night. Romantic Trivia Night is in full swing. The room is filled with laughter, tension, and a hint of unrequited love. Crombopulous Michael takes the stage, ready to conduct the trivia competition. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S, Michael. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Romantic Trivia Night. 
let's put our knowledge and love on the line tonight. The scientists engage in a fierce battle of wits, while Rukia subtly showcases her newly acquired expertise, hoping to catch Crombopulus Michael's attention. As the game progresses, Rukia finds herself in a tiebreaker with Lucinda, the ultimate showdown for Crombopulus Michael's heart. Crombopulus Michael looks straight at Rukia, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S Michael. And for the final question, who discovered the process of radiocarbon dating? Rukia. Raising her hand. Willard Libby. Crombopulous Michael's eyes widen in surprise, and a smile tugs at the corners of his lips. A-R-O-M-B-O-P-U-L-O-S Michael. That's correct. Rukia, you've won. The room erupts in cheers and applause as Rukia's heart fills with joy and relief. Rukia and Crombopulous Michael lock eyes, and in that moment, the world around them fades away. Fade out. Morty, we've got a serious situation here. Look at that Corona Corona over there, it's causing chaos. A Corona Corona? What the hell is that? It's a virus that turns people into mindless zombies. We need to find a way to stop it. Guys, I've been researching about this. It seems that the Corona Corona is spread through virtual reality headsets. Virtual reality, huh? Looks like those gamers are in deep trouble. But Rick, what can we do? There are so many infected people. Well, Morty, we're gonna have to enter the virtual world and find the source of the virus. Strap on your VR headsets, kids. Wait, aren't we supposed to be at that esports convention? Screw the convention, Summer. This is more important. Whoa, Rick. Look at all these people. They're losing their minds. Yeah, Morty. That's what happens when you bet your life savings on esports. I didn't know gambling could lead to a zombie apocalypse, Rick. Well, you never know what you'll get when you mix addiction and technology, Morty. Guys, I think I found the central server. If we destroy it, we can stop the virus. Alright, kids, let's do this. Time to save the world. This is insane, Rick. I never thought I'd be fighting virtual reality zombies. Ice full of surprises, Morty. Now, let's kick some Technovirus ass. I'm hacking into the mainframe now. Just a few more seconds. Hurry up, Summer. These things are getting closer. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss the days when our problems were just alternate dimensions. Almost there, Summer. Just a little bit more. Done. I've destroyed the server. The virus should be stopping now. Great job, Summer. Now let's get out of here before we become zombie chow. I can't wait to tell Jessica about this crazy adventure. Ordy, focus. We just saved the world. Now let's go home and take a damn vacation. I agree, Rick. We deserve some time off after all this madness. Well, I guess even geniuses need a break sometimes. Let's go, kids. Adventure awaits. Int. Neon lit room, night. A dimly lit room with neon lights casting an eerie glow. In the center, there is a neon chair and a neon light on the floor. I enter the room and find Ruby sitting in the neon chair, looking rather bored. Me, nervously, Ruby, what is this place? I feel like I've entered a holographic afterlife dystopia. Ruby, sarcastically, oh, congratulations, Sherlock. You finally figured it out. Welcome to the club. You died, now you're stuck here forever. Me, shocked. You mean, this is the afterlife? Ruby, rolls eyes, yeah, 
genius. But it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Now, we're trapped in this room. Only way out is to solve the puzzle of the neon chair. Me? Confused? Puzzle? Neon chair? What's the connection? Ruby smirks. The chair is the key to breaking free. It holds the secrets of our existence. We must decipher its neon codes to escape. Me, determined. All right, let's crack this puzzle. What do we do first? Ruby points to the neon light on the floor. Step on the neon light, and it'll transport us to a rugby-themed realm. Don't ask why, just go with it. Me, hesitant. Okay, here goes nothing. I step onto the neon light, and suddenly we're transported to a fantastical rugby field. Me, amazed. Whoa, this looks like a rugby paradise. Ruby, laughing, don't get too comfortable. We need to find the holographic rugby ball to unlock the chair's secret code. Suddenly, a giant holographic rugby ball rolls towards us. Me, wide-eyed, is that, the ball? Ruby, grinning, yup, that's our ticket to freedom, grab it. We chase the holographic rugby ball, dodging tackles and tackles of twirling neon players. Me, panting, this is intense, how do we unlock the chair with the ball? Ruby, thinking, we must score a try with the ball, only then will the chair reveal its true purpose. Me, determined, let's do it. We make a final sprint towards the neon goal line, scoring a spectacular try. The chair suddenly glows with neon patterns, unlocking a hidden compartment. Ruby, excitedly, we did it, now, grab whatever is inside. Me, curious, it's a small, glowing orb. What do we do with it? Ruby, wise, that orb contains the answers to our existence. We must take it back to the neon chair and place it inside. We return to the room, and I carefully place the glowing orb inside the chair. Ruby, anticipating, brace yourself. This could change everything. As the orb settles into the chair, the neon lights flicker, and a gateway opens before us. Me, awestruck, what? What lies beyond? Ruby, smiling, the truth, my friend. The truth about our holographic afterlife dystopia. We step through the gateway, leaving the neon lit room and venturing into the unknown. Fade out. Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got some serious sandwich business to attend to. What? Why are we risking our lives for a sandwich, Rick? Morty, this isn't just any sandwich. It's the legendary roast beef sandwich of Kandoria. It has the power to awaken the secret family I've been hiding from you. Secret family? All because of a sandwich? Look, Morty, love and sandwiches are complicated things. Just trust me on this one. Did someone say sandwich? Count me in. Jerry, you're not even part of this adventure. Go back to being plain old Jerry. But, I thought maybe the sandwich could change my life, you know? Help me find my purpose? Oh, Jerry, you never cease to amaze me with your delusions. Fine, you can tag along. But don't expect any miracles from a sandwich. Hey guys, what's all the commotion about? Summer, we're embarking on a quest for the ultimate sandwich. You in? Seriously? I have better things to do, like binge watching Olivia Rodrigo music videos. Pass. Suit yourself, but you'll be missing out on the sandwich experience of a lifetime. Alright, Rick, let's do this. But be warned, I'm not getting my hopes up about this secret family of yours. Oh, Morty, when have I ever disappointed you? Morty and Rick activate the portal gun, transporting them to the sandwich dimension. Morty. Prepare yourself for a flavor explosion that will change your world forever. Meanwhile, in the background, a man can be seen watching them with curiosity. Man, what in the multiverse is happening here? Are they really going for that sandwich? Rick and Morty encounter a series of hilarious and dangerous obstacles while searching for the sandwich. Morty, look, it's the giant roast beef sandwich on a plate in front of us. Our journey is almost complete. 
But, Rick, who is that man in the background? I feel like he's been following us the whole time. Don't worry about him, Morty. He's irrelevant to our sandwich quest. They finally reach the sandwich and take a moment to pose with it. Morty, we did it. Behold, the most scientifically perfect sandwich ever created. Meanwhile, the man in the background reveals himself to be a long-lost member of Rick's secret family. Um, Rick Sanchez, you thought you could keep me hidden forever. I am the prodigal sandwich lover, back for my rightful place in this family. Oh, whoa, whoa. I didn't expect this turn of events. Morty, grab the portal gun. Let's get out of here. They portal back to their dimension, leaving the man with a roast beef sandwich. And, fine, I'll have my own sandwich family, with roast beef sandwiches, and Olivia Rodrigo music. The episode ends with Rick and Morty laughing and reflecting on their absurd adventure. Int. Smith's living room, day. Rick and Morty are sitting on the couch, watching TV. Morty, pass me the remote. I need to find something better to watch than this trash. Jeez, Rick, I thought you liked this stuff. Remember when you binge-watched, The Thing, McCready Returns? Yeah, well, after 49 seasons, things got a little stale. Now give me the damn remote. Morty reluctantly hands over the remote. Laughs. Look at this, Morty. It's a reality show about chickens playing five card draw in a Vegas casino. These birds are really testing their luck. Man, these birds have some serious gambling addictions. It's like they're clucking their lives away. Smirks, you think that's wild? Check out this documentary on alien abduction survival. It's all about those folks who claim they got probed. Probed? They actually show that on TV? I don't think I'm ready for that level of freakiness, Rick. Sarcastically, oh, come on, Morty. It's just a bunch of folks telling tall tales about their close encounters with probing aliens. Nothing to be afraid of. Unconvinced. Yeah, right. That's what you said about Pluto Nash. Rick's phone rings. He answers it. Hello? From the phone, Dad, can you come over? There's been an incident with the egg experiment you left in the kitchen. Exaggeratedly, an incident, you say? I'll be right there. Rick hangs up and grabs his portal gun. Curious, what happened, Rick? Grinning. Well, Morty, it seems like that egg experiment got a little too frisky and started hatching baby alien chickens. I need to go fix this mess. Laughs. Ah, uh, I hate to break it to you, Rick, but I think you just accidentally created an interdimensional chicken farm. Rick smirks and activates his portal gun. Strap in, Morty, we're going on an egg sighting adventure. They both enter the portal, leaving the TV blaring in the background. End of scene. Note, this dialogue is a fictional representation and does not accurately reflect any existing episode of Rick and Morty. It is meant to showcase the requested style and elements. Looking at the man in the suit, well, Morty, it seems we've stumbled upon a real fashion disaster. Snickering, yeah, Rick, that guy's rocking the confused accountant, look. Defensively, hey, I happen to think it's a classy ensemble. Rolling her eyes, Jerry, you wouldn't know fashion if it bit you in the top. Joining in, seriously, Dad, it's time to step up your game. Sarcastically, yeah because taking style advice from a man who can't even dress himself is a great idea. Laughing, leave him alone, Rick. I'm sure Sherlock here has bigger problems than his wardrobe. Silva, in a British accent, actually, I have a case that requires your expertise, Rick. Smirking, oh, really? Looks like even fictional detectives need the help of a scientific genius these days. 
Silver, ignoring Rick's comment, my client was involved in a mysterious time-traveling incident. I believe your knowledge in quantum mechanics might come in handy. Excitedly, time travel? Count me in. Hesitant. Are you sure, Beth? Time travel can be dangerous. Sarcastically. Oh, wow, Jerry. Did you just discover the concept of risk? Maybe next you'll tell us water is wet. Looking at Jerry. Yeah, Dad. Maybe it's time you let someone else handle the adventure for once. Sighing. Fine, but please be careful, everyone. Smirking. Don't worry, Jerry. We'll bring back your precious tie intact. Silver. Intrigued. Excellent. We shall embark on an epic journey through the fabric of time. Giggling. Oh, this is going to be fun. In a mischievous tone, I hope we encounter some scandalous historical figures. Nervously, ah, uh, guys, I don't think we should mess with time too much. It could have serious consequences. Dismissively, relax, Morty. What's the worst that could happen? Silver, with a twinkle in his eye, I have a feeling we're about to find out, my friends. They all step into Rick's portal, ready for a wild and unpredictable adventure through time. Morty, I've got an interstellar adventure planned for us today. Strap in. Ah, uh, Rick, can I ask a favor? Can we make a quick stop at the Intergalactic Music Awards? I heard the alien pop star, Glimpse, is performing. Morty, we have more important things to do than watch some pop star sing. We're on a mission. But Rick, come on. She's like the hottest thing in the universe right now. And I, ah, uh, kinda have a crush on her. Fine, Morty. We'll make a detour, but don't get too caught up in the drama. These alien celebrities are known for causing trouble. Scene shifts to the Intergalactic Music Awards. Glimpse, singing. Oh, Morty, you're the one who steals my heart. Together we'll create a love that will never tear apart. Starstruck, wow, she's amazing, Rick. I can't believe I'm here. Just remember, Morty, this is all just a show. Don't let the glitz and glam fool you. Meanwhile, backstage. So, Glimpse, how did you get so famous? Any interstellar secrets to spill? Glimpse, well, Summer, it all started when I discovered a cosmic artifact that granted me incredible singing abilities. But it comes with a price. Dare I ask, what kind of price? Glimpse, whispering, every time I use my powers, it drains the life force of a random fan in the audience. But it's all part of the showbiz, baby back in the audience rick do you think glimpse is hiding something she seems too good to be true morty that's the entertainment industry for you it's all smoke and mirrors but if you think something's off we'll investigate as rick and morty investigate they uncover a dark secret morty it looks like glimpse's cosmic artifact isn't just draining the life force of fans it's actually a weapon oh geez rick we have to stop her before she causes more harm they confront Glimpse backstage. Glimpse, your music may be catchy, but your intentions are deadly. Hand over that weapon. Glimpse, laughs maniacally. You think you can stop me? I have the power of the universe in my hands. A wild sci-fi shootout ensues. Meanwhile, in another dimension. Vincent. Jules, I think we ended up in the wrong movie. This is some interstellar mess. Jules, nah, man. We're not in Kansas anymore. Let's handle this like badasses. Mixing Pulp Fiction with Rick and Morty, chaos ensues. Scene shifts back to Glimpse. Glimpse, you'll never take me down. I'm the star of the show. Morty, activate the portal gun. Morty opens a portal, sucking Glimpse and her weapon into an alternate dimension. Crisis averted. Morty, let's get back to our original mission. Thanks, Rick. I guess being starstruck isn't always a good thing. No problem, Morty. Now, 
Let's go find that cosmic artifact before it falls into the wrong hands again. They set off on another wild adventure, leaving the interstellar drama behind. Title, The Interdimensional Love Connection Int Smith Living Room, Day Rick and Morty are sitting on the couch, watching TV. Hey, Rick, have you ever had a romantic encounter with an alien? Oh, Morty, let me tell you, my steamy liaison with Unity was out of this world. Unity? Is that an alien or something? Yeah, Morty, she's a collective hive mind. We connected on a whole, another level. It was like experiencing intergalactic love. Int. Rick's lab, continuous. Rick enters his lab, where he spots a computer-generated image of a green and red flower with the word, sweeter, in the center. Excitedly, Morty, check this out. It's the sweeter, a flower from the flux dimension. It's rumored to grant unimaginable powers of seduction. Intrigued, powers of seduction, huh? That could come in handy. Int. Alien Planet, Night Rick and Morty arrive on an alien planet known for its unusual customs and sense of humor. Rick, why did we come to this weird planet? Morty, we're here to participate in the Alienist Humorous Poetry Competition. It's where our wit and wordplay can score us some valuable resources. Int Alienist Humorous Poetry Competition, Stage, Day Rick and Morty step onto the stage in front of a bizarre audience of interdimensional creatures. Confidently, ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the ultimate in time travel Trist Trouble. The crowd erupts in laughter and applause. Int. Backstage, moments later. Rick and Morty celebrate their victory backstage, where an attractive alien approaches them. Alien. Seductive. Well, 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 looks like you two have quite the way with words. Oh, thanks. Int. Spaceship, night. Rick, Morty, and the alien are aboard the spaceship, heading towards an intergalactic rave. Hold on tight, kids. Time to party like it's 2099. Int. Intergalactic rave, continuous. The trio enters a wild party filled with bizarre creatures, pulsating music, and neon lights. Rick, this place is insane. Morty. This is nothing compared to the time I threw a rave on an asteroid made entirely of glitter. Amazed? Seriously, Rick? Int. Spaceship, next morning. Rick, Morty, and the alien wake up disoriented and tangled together on the spaceship floor. Regretful. Well, that was one wild night. Time to jump dimensions again, Morty. We've got some explaining to do. Blushing. Yeah, Rick, maybe interdimensional love isn't such a good idea after all. Smirking. Who knows, Morty. Love has a way of finding us in the most unexpected places. They buckle up and prepare for another wild interdimensional adventure. Fade out. Alright, Morty, listen up. I've got a brilliant idea for our next adventure. We're diving into a corrupted virtual reality, where anything can happen. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? I mean, last time we messed with virtual reality, things got pretty weird. Morty, stop being such a wuss. We can handle whatever comes our way. Now let's get going. Time is money. Oh, hey guys, mind if I tag along? I could use a break from Beth's constant nagging. Oh, great. Jerry's here to ruin the fun. Just stay out of our way, Jerry. We don't need any more of your ineptitude. Can I come too? 
I have been practicing my alien language skills, and I think I'm ready to impress my suitor from Jupiter. Sure, Summer, just don't get us into any intergalactic entanglements. We're supposed to be fixing the virtual reality, not causing drama. Whoa, look at this place. It's like a neon psychedelic dream. I don't even know where to start. Relax, Morty, we'll figure it out. Let's split up and search for any signs of corruption. Communicate through the walkie-talkies if you find anything suspicious. I found something. It's a machine called the Triple Draw. It looks important, guys. Hold on, there's a note next to it. It says we have to win three rounds to fix the corruption and escape. Well, looks like we're playing a game then. Morty, get ready to show off your mad skills. Jeez, Rick, I'm not exactly a pro gamer. But I'll give it my best shot. Time to put on the VR headsets, everyone. Let's dive into this corrupted world and save ourselves from eternal chaos. Rick, I think I'm getting the hang of this game. I just won the second round. Nice job, Morty. We're one step closer to fixing the virtual reality. Keep it up. Uh oh, guys, I think I messed up. The game glitched, and now we're all falling through a never-ending loop of neon colors. Great, just great, Jerry. Now we're stuck in an infinite Technicolor nightmare. No worries, I'll fix it. Just hold on tight, everyone. This might get a bit bumpy. Scene shifts to the gang back in the garage, safe and sound. Whoa, that was wild, Rick. We really dodged a bullet there. That's what I do, Morty. Saving the day and making it look easy. Now let's clean up this mess and move on to our next adventure. Yeah, let's hope it's something a little less chaotic next time. My nerves can't handle this level of excitement. I'm already planning my next move with my Jupiterian suitor. Thanks for the thrill, Rick. Anytime, Summer. Now let's get back to the multiverse and see what trouble awaits us there. Adventure, here we come. Hey Morty, you see this black and white photo of a city with the words, I am Falamus, on it? It's the ultimate paradox, Morty. A city living in a state of existential crisis. Ah, oh, Rick, I don't get it. What's so paradoxical about a city with a catchy slogan? Morty, don't you see? The city is questioning its own existence, pondering the very essence of its being. It's a metaphor for the inner struggles we all face in this ever-changing world. Ah, oh, sure, Rick. But what does that have to do with anything? Oh, Morty, you simple-minded fool. This photo holds the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. We must go to this city and uncover the truth behind its existential crisis. All right, Rick, but do we really have to get that deep? Can't we just, you know, go on another crazy adventure? Morty, sometimes you gotta dive deep into the philosophical abyss to find the ultimate punchline. Come on, let's go. Scene transition. Rick and Morty arrive in the city, greeted by a crowd chanting, I am Falamus. What the hell? Is this some kind of cult? I don't know, Rick. But they seem pretty enthusiastic about it. Let's investigate, Morty. We need to find out why this city is so obsessed with its own existence. Morty approaches a local citizen and strikes up a conversation. Excuse me, sir. What's the deal with this whole, I am Falamus, thing? Citizen. Ah, you seek the truth, my friend. Falamus is the personification of our collective consciousness. It represents our doubts, fears, and desires. We embrace it as a reminder to question our own existence. Well, that's just a bunch of gibberish, Morty. Let's find the person behind all this nonsense. They make their way to a hidden underground lair where they find a mysterious leader, Professor Falamus. So, you're the mastermind behind this existential riddle? What's your game here? Professor Falamus, Ah, Rick and Morty, the skeptics have arrived. I've created this city as a grand experiment to test the boundaries of human consciousness. Can we truly question our own existence and find meaning in our lives? Oh, that sounds pretty heavy, Professor. 
But isn't life just about, you know, having fun and going on adventures? Professor Falamus, fun, adventures? Those are merely distractions, Morty. True enlightenment comes from confronting the cosmic absurdity of our own existence. Look, Professor, we appreciate your little experiment, but we've got places to be and adventures to go on. So, if you don't mind, we'll just be on our way. Scene transition. Rick and Morty escape the city, leaving behind the confused citizens. Phew, Rick, I'm glad we don't live in a city like that. I mean, questioning your own existence sounds exhausting. You said it, Morty. Sometimes, it's best to just embrace the absurdity and go on with our lives. Now, let's get back to some good old-fashioned reckless adventures. They belch and zoom off into space, leaving the city and its existential crisis behind. End. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on the most scientifically mind-blowing adventure yet. Oh geez, Rick. I don't know if I'm ready for another one of your crazy experiments. Trust me, Morty, this one's gonna be a real doozy. We've got a computer screen filled with equations that'll make your brain melt. Uh, oh, can't I just chill and paint my nails? This science stuff is such a drag. Sorry, Summer, no time for manicures. We've got a crisis on our hands here. What kind of crisis, Rick? Is the world in danger again? Aw, oh, Morty, this time it's more personal. Jerry's trying to flirt in an alien language, and it's a total disaster. Jerry? Flirting? That's like watching a train wreck. I gotta see this. What's all this commotion about? And Jerry, why are you speaking gibberish? Hey, babe. I'm just expanding my horizons, you know? Trying to impress otherworldly beings. Impressing other beings? That's rich. Meanwhile, I just discovered I have a secret admirer from another dimension. Oh wow, Beth, looks like you're quite the catch in the multiverse. Don't act like you're not impressed, Rick. This admirer is quite something. Can we please just get back to the science why stuff? I can't take any more of this romantic drama. Yeah, Summer's right. Let's do something cool, like a periodic table quiz or something. Fine, Morty if it'll get you back on track. Let's see how well you know your elements. I can do this, Rick. I've been paying attention in science class. Can I join the quiz? Maybe impress Beth with my extensive knowledge of, uh, science? Sure thing, Jerry. Let's see what you've got. This should be interesting. Jerry, impress me. Ah, uh, okay. Element number one. Ah, uh, hydrogen. Jerry, that's the simplest element. You gotta step up your game. Looks like our Jerry's in for a rough ride. But hey, at least it's entertaining. Can we wrap this all up soon? I've got better things to do than watch Jerry embarrass himself. We'll wrap it up, Summer. But first, let's see if Jerry can redeem himself with one last question. All right, I got this. Element number 79, uh. Come on, Jerry, it's gold. Gold? Yes, of course. I knew that. Well, at least you got one right, Jerry. That's something. All right, enough of this quiz. Time to get back to saving the universe or whatever. Yeah, let's go on some crazy adventure, Rick. Anything to get away from all this drama. Strap in, Morty. We're about to take off on a mind-bending journey through space and time. And so, our dysfunctional interdimensional family set off on yet another wild adventure leaving behind the drama and embracing the absurdity of the universe. Buckle up for the ride of a lifetime.
Hey Morty, I need you to grab that new experimental medicine from the top shelf there. Uh, Rick, are you sure about this? This stuff looks pretty intense. Of course I'm sure, Morty. It's my latest invention. It'll give you the strength of a thousand gorillas and the charm of a smooth-talking alien. I don't know, Rick. Last time we took one of your experimental drugs, we ended up in a parallel dimension with talking pizzas. Don't be such a wuss, Morty. We've got to take risks if we want to survive in this crazy universe. Now grab the damn medicine. Dash dash dash. Okay, Rick, I took the medicine. Now what? Now we wait for the effects to kick in, Morty. This stuff should turn you into a superhuman, capable of traveling through space and time with ease. Oh man, I can already feel something weird happening. Everything's getting all wavy and trippy. That's just the beginning, Morty. Brace yourself, because shit's about to get real. Dash dash dash. Rick, what the hell happened? We're floating in space. Calm down, Morty. We've been abducted by interstellar aliens. Looks like they want to have some fun with us. Fun? This is your idea of fun, Rick? Being experimented on by giant alien squids? Relax, Morty. This is nothing compared to what we've been through before. Just stay calm and let me do the talking. Dash dash dash. Oh my god, I can't believe I agreed to be on an alien dating reality show. This is so embarrassing. Producer, don't worry, Summer. It's all part of the show. Just be yourself and have fun. Easy for you to say. You're not the one going on a date with a slimy tentacled creature. Dash dash dash. Alright, Morty, I've come up with a plan. We're gonna escape from these alien bastards and get back home. Are you sure this is gonna work, Rick? These aliens are pretty advanced. You underestimate me, Morty. I've studied their technology and I know their weaknesses. Trust me, we'll be out of here in no time. Dash dash dash. So, Mr. Alien, tell me about yourself. Do you have any hobbies besides abducting earthlings? Alien. Well, I'm really into interdimensional travel and collecting rare crystals. Oh, how fascinating. I've always had a thing for men with exotic interests. Alien. Really? That's great to hear. I don't usually meet humans who appreciate my hobbies. Dash dash dash. Morty, I've hacked into the alien ship's mainframe. We can take control of their systems now. That's amazing, Rick. How did you do that? It's simple, Morty. I just used my genius level intellect and a couple of paper clips. Now let's get the hell out of here. Dash dash dash. So, Mr. Alien, what do you say we ditch this reality show and go on our own intergalactic adventure? Alien. That sounds incredibly tempting, Summer. I've never met someone like you before. Well, get ready for the ride of your life, because I'm not your average Earth girl. Dash dash dash. Alright, Morty. Strap yourself in. We're about to make a jump to hyperspace. Wait, hyperspace? Is that even possible? Possible, Morty. We're talking about the infinite possibilities of the multiverse here. Anything is possible if you have the right tech. Dash dash dash. Rick, we made it back home. That was insane. Yeah, Morty, but you know what they say. No pain, no gain. And we gained a hell of a lot from that little adventure. I guess you're right, Rick. Sometimes you just gotta take risks and go on crazy, outlandish adventures. Dash dash dash. So, Mr. Alien, where should we go next? I've heard there's a planet made entirely of chocolate. Alien. Chocolate? That sounds delightful, Summer. Let's go there and indulge our sweetest desires. Oh, Mr. Alien, you're speaking my language. Dash dash dash. Morty, never forget, life is a constant roller coaster ride. You can either sit back and watch, or you can take the reins and make it your own. Yeah, Rick, I'm starting to realize that now. Let's keep making our own crazy adventures, no matter how risky they may be. That's my boy, Morty. Now let's go get ourselves into some more interdimensional trouble.
40. Grab your portal gun. We've got a new adventure on our hands. What is it this time, Rick? I was just about to take a nap. We're going deep into the ancient cursed tomb, Morty. There's a woman with a helmet and a sword in her hand, and she needs our help. Are you sure she's not just some cosplayer, Rick? Trust me, Morty, this is the real deal. Now, put on your adventure pants and let's get going. Rick, do you really think it's a good idea to involve Morty in dangerous situations like this? Beth, it's not dangerous. It's high-octane drama mixed with a splash of excitement. Morty can handle it. Wait, are we talking about a cursed tomb? Count me out, guys. I don't do cursed stuff. Fine, Jerry. Stay here with your potato chips and daytime television. We don't need you anyway. You don't mean that, Rick. Actually, I do. Now. Let's go before Jenna Marbles beats us to the treasure. Seriously, Dad? Jenna Marbles? I thought we were past that phase. Shut up, Summer. This is no time for your judgmental comments. Guys, I think we're here. Look, there's a sign that says, Lanthanum, the key to breaking the curse. Well, that sounds important. Let's find it and get out of here before anything bad happens. Too late. The binary babe blunder just activated the traps. We're going to need to think fast. What do we do, Rick? I've got this. Just follow my lead. All right, everyone, hold your breath. We're about to enter the Chamber of Immortality. Immortality? Well, I guess it's worth a shot. Jerry, please don't do anything stupid. Hey, I'm not stupid. I'm just accident prone. We're almost there, Morty. Just a few more steps and we'll have that lanthanum. Rick, I don't know about this. It feels too risky. Trust me, Morty, risk is the spice of life. And boy, do I love a spicy adventure. Dad, you're impossible. That's what makes me Rick Sanchez, and don't you forget it. Look, I found the lanthanum. Let's grab it and get out of here. Excellent work, Beth. Now, let's race back to the portal before anything else tries to kill us. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm looking forward to going back home. Ah, oh, Morty, don't be a downer. We'll be back out there in no time, facing danger and saving the universe. It's what we do best. Yeah, I guess you're right, Rick. Let's go home. Morty, buckle up, we're about to go on the wildest adventure yet. Aw oh, jeez, Rick, I hope it's not as crazy as that time we accidentally turned into pickles. Pickle Rick was child's play compared to what we're about to face. Hold on tight. Where are we going this time, Rick? We're diving deep into the space-time continuum rift. It's like a wormhole on steroids. Whoa, that sounds intense. What are we looking for? Are on a mission to retrieve the legendary Stellar Squeeze. It's a scandalous artifact that can manipulate gravity and control the universe's juiciest gossip. Seriously, Rick? We're risking our lives for gossip? Morty, this is more than just gossip. This artifact holds the power to reveal everyone's deepest secrets. Imagine the chaos we can unleash. I don't know, Rick. Manipulating secrets sounds dangerous. We could destroy lives. Come on, Morty, live a little. Besides, if we don't do it, someone else will. Might as well have some fun along the way. I guess you're right, Rick. Let's do this. They enter the space-time continuum rift and find themselves in a strange dimension. Look, Morty, it's Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Oh boy, what brings you two to my dimension? We're on a mission, Mickey. We're here to find the stellar squeeze. Mickey Mouse. Gosh, that's a mighty powerful artifact you're after. You better be careful. Thanks for the warning, Mickey. We'll keep an eye out. They continue their quest, encountering bizarre creatures and overcoming dangerous obstacles. Rick, I think we're getting close to the Stellar Squeeze. Finally, Morty, the rumors were true. 
It's right here, inside this ancient temple. But how do we get inside? It's simple, Morty. We just have to solve this riddle. In order to reveal the secrets, one must embrace their past. What does that even mean, Rick? It means we have to confront Beth with Jerry's alien Romeo past. Only then will the temple open. Morty and Rick return home and confront Beth about Jerry's past life, causing drama and shock. Jerry, you were an alien Romeo? How could you keep this from me? I never thought it was important, Beth. I've changed. Well, it looks like the temple's opening up, Morty. Time to reveal everyone's secrets. I don't know about this, Rick. It feels wrong. Morty, we've come too far to turn back now. The universe is ready for some scandals. They enter the temple and activate the stellar squeeze, causing a wave of chaos. It's working, Morty. The secrets are pouring out. Rick, what have we done? We've ruined so many lives. Morty, it's all part of the grand adventure. Don't stress about it, just sit back and enjoy the chaos. Morty looks conflicted but reluctantly joins Rick in watching the mayhem unfold. I hope we've learned something from all this, Rick. Yeah, Morty, we've learned that the truth can be a double-edged sword. Now, let's find another crazy adventure to embark on. They fly off into the sunset, ready for their next outrageous escapade. Morty, grab my portal gun. We're about to embark on a scientific adventure of epic proportions. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? Last time we went on a scientific adventure, I ended up with tentacles for legs. With being a wuss, Morty, we're going to the Galactic Grasper's Gossip, a dimension where they exchange the juiciest and scandalous stories in the multiverse. Count me in. I love hearing all the dirty details and scandalous rumors. Let's get this interdimensional gossip fest started. Strap in, kids. We're about to break some taboos and reveal some shocking secrets. First stop, the Broad Institute, where they unleash the most scandalous experiments known to science. This place looks straight out of a horror movie, Rick. I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, please. It's all smoke and mirrors, Morty. Just keep your eyes peeled for any saucy scientists and let the gossip flow. Look, there's Fennel Bulb the notorious gossip monger of this dimension. I heard she knows all the dirty little secrets. Fennel Bulb, well, well, well. If it isn't Rick Sanchez, the infamous troublemaker, what scandalous tale are you here to reveal? Oh, Fennel, I've got a story that'll make your head spin. How about the time Yttrium stole an entire planet just for kicks? Yttrium, Rick, you've gone too far this time. That planet was meant to be a love nest for me and my alien partner. This is getting out of hand, Rick. We should leave before things get even more racy. Morty, you're such a prude. We're in for the long haul. Next stop, the boys, where the rumors are flying faster than the speed of light. This place looks wild, Rick. I can hardly keep up with the scandalous tales. That's because the rumors here are hotter than a supernova, Summer. Buckle up. We're about to dive into the juiciest gossip of the multiverse. I don't know if I can handle any more scandalous stories, Rick. It's all getting a bit overwhelming. Morty, sometimes you've got to embrace the darkness to truly appreciate the light. We're on a journey of revelation and titillation. Rick, I think we've had enough scandal for one day. Let's just go back home and forget about all this craziness. Fine, fine. If you two can't handle the heat, we'll call it quits. But mark my words, there's a whole world of scandalous secrets out there just waiting to be uncovered. I think I've had enough scandal for a lifetime, Rick. Let's just stick to our regular interdimensional adventures from now on. Suit yourself, Morty, but don't come crying to me when you're bored out of your mind. There's a whole universe of scandalous stories out there, and we're missing out.
Hey Morty, you wanna hit the steam room? I've invented a new gadget that lets us learn sci-fi languages while we sweat. Um, I don't know Rick. Last time we went into one of your inventions, I ended up in an alternate dimension full of sentient pancakes. Come on, Morty, stop being a wuss. It'll be a nice relaxing time, I promise. Team, Rick and Morty enter the steam room. The walls are covered in mirrors, with bright lights illuminating the room. There is a bench in the middle. Wow, Rick, this steam room is pretty fancy. What's with all the mirrors and lights? It's not just any steam room, Morty. It's a multi-dimensional language immersion chamber. The mirrors and lights amplify the language learning process. Oh, okay. So, how does it work exactly? Well, Morty, the steam relaxes your brain, making it more receptive to new information. The mirrors reflect your neural pathways, creating a visual representation of the language you're learning. That sounds complicated. Are you sure it won't fry my brain or something? Relax, Morty. The brain is a resilient organ. It can handle a little language boosting steam. Now, pick a language and let's get started. Team, Rick and Morty sit on the bench in the steam room, surrounded by steam. Rick activates the language learning gadget. All right, I'll go with Klingon. Might as well be prepared in case we come across any intergalactic battles. Good choice, Morty. Klingon it is. Team, the steam intensifies, enveloping Rick and Morty. They start mumbling Klingon phrases under their breath. Mumbling Klingon, Kapla. Mumbling Klingon, Nukne. Montage, Rick and Morty immersed in the steam, learning different sci-fi languages, their faces dripping with sweat. Team, the steam starts to dissipate. Rick and Morty emerge from the steam room, drenched in sweat. What the hell happened in there? You guys look like a couple of maniacs. Yeah, you've been in there for hours. I thought something had gone horribly wrong. We were just, uh, learning languages, Dad. It's a new invention of Rick's. Learning languages? In a steam room? That sounds made up. Jealous. Jerry, you want to join us next time and learn some Vulcan or maybe some Wookiee? Well, I suppose I could use something to impress the ladies at the office. Team, the family laughs as they walk away from the steam room, leaving behind a room filled with mist and the echoes of intergalactic languages. End. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to take a trip to the most mind-bending planet in the entire universe. Two. Oh, Rick, are you sure it's safe? I mean, the last time we did this, I ended up as a pickle. Three. Morty, stop being such a wuss. We're going to Exoplanet Expose Escapade, where all your wildest dreams come true. Four. Kino, hey there, Rick and Morty. Ready for a wild time on Exoplanet Expose Escapade? Let me introduce you to the party planet of the century. 5. Ah, uh, Kino, what's that ridiculous phobia you have? The one where you're scared of pickles? 6. Kino. Ah, uh, you mean Kakumisophobia, Morty. But enough about that, let's get this party started. 7. Agricola. Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to Agricola's immersive farm experience on Exoplanet Expose Escapade. Prepare to get down and dirty. 8. An immersive farm experience? Seriously? What's next? A roller coaster made of manure? Ein Agricola. Oh Rick, you always know how to keep things spicy. But trust me, this will be an adventure you won't forget. Ken, Chris Hemsworth, good day, mates. It's your friendly neighborhood hunky superhero, Chris Hemsworth, here on Exoplanet Expose Escapade. Ready to flex some intergalactic muscles? 11. Whoa, Chris Hemsworth. I can't believe we're meeting you here. Can I get a selfie? 12. Chris Hemsworth, of course, Morty. Just make sure you don't accidentally photobomb my perfectly chiseled abs. 13. Alright, enough celebrity encounters. Let's get back to the real adventure on this weird planet. What else is there to see? 14. Kino. Well, Rick, let me introduce you to the Rumormonger Bar. A place filled with scandalous stories for all your gossip needs. 15. Whoa, a bar full of scandal mongering. This planet knows how to keep the juiciest stories flowing. 
16. All right, Morty, remember our mission here. We're not just here for the gossip. We're here to uncover the secrets of this planet. 17. Exoplanet. Welcome, intruders, to the heart of Exoplanet Expose Escapade. Prepare for the ultimate mind-bending revelation. 18. Rick, I don't like the sound of that. Should we be worried? 19. Nah, Morty, it's just some melodramatic AI trying to mess with us. Let's show this planet what we're made of. 20. Well, Morty, looks like we've successfully escaped that bizarre planet. Another adventure for the books. Yeah, Rick, but I still can't get over your dance-off with Chris Hemsworth. That was epic. Hey, Morty, sometimes you gotta let loose and show your moves. Now let's go home and forget about this wild ride. Hey, Morty, you wouldn't believe the crazy adventure I just had. I accidentally created an interdimensional blind dating app for dogs. Ah, uh, Rick, how does that even work? Well, Morty, it's a combination of advanced algorithms and quantum entanglement. I used the collar and the black and white pattern of stars to create a portal that pairs up dogs for blind dates in different dimensions. That's weirdly specific, Rick. So, what happened? Oh, you know. Just the usual mayhem. Turns out the Jack Russell Terrier I matched up accidentally fell in love with a microscopic amoeba from a parallel universe. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Morty, love knows no bounds. I had to shrink down and go on a microscopic adventure to save the dog and bring it back to its own dimension. But, uh, things got a little weird along the way. Weird is an understatement coming from you, Rick. What happened? Well, let's just say there was a mind-bending alien disco party, a space-time rift, and a sentient talking broccoli that knew the secrets of the universe. Oh, and did I mention the dog developed the ability to speak? Wow, this sounds like the most insane blind date ever. You bet, Morty. But you know, in the end, love triumphed and the dog and its amoeba soulmate lived happily ever after. Well, as happily as a dog and an amoeba can, anyway. I don't even know what to say, Rick. That's just wow. Yeah, Morty, sometimes life takes us to strange places. But hey, at least we can say we've been to a parallel universe blind date. Yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. So, what's next on our agenda, Rick? Oh, you know, Morty, the usual. Maybe we'll create a dating app for plants next. Who knows, the possibilities are endless. I'm starting to think there's no limit to your crazy ideas, Rick. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's go make some more scientifically absurd adventures. Alright, Morty, I've upgraded the interdimensional cable so we can watch every reality simultaneously. Brace yourself for the ultimate mindfuck. Ah, uh, Rick, isn't that dangerous? Shouldn't we, like, maybe exercise a little caution? Caution, Morty, we don't have time for that. Life's too short to sit around worrying about consequences. Now shut up and enjoy the ride. Dash dash dash. Hey Morty, time for a couple's massage. I've found a dimension where they rub your back and stabilize your quantum physiology at the same time. I dunno, Rick. Massages aren't really my thing, you know? I mean, it's just people touching you, man. Morty, you're missing out on the ultimate relaxation experience. Just think about it, enlightenment through kneading. Dash dash dash. Rick, why are we walking through this post-apocalyptic wasteland? Can't we just portal out or something? Morty. Who needs portals when we've got an adventure right in front of us?
Besides, scavenging for Prometheum is gonna make us rich. You really think it's worth risking our lives for some shiny rock? Hey, Morty, ever heard the phrase, fortune favors the bold? Now quit your whining and start scavenging. Dash dash dash. Oh my god, Rick, I've been abducted by aliens and put on a dating reality show. They said I need to find love in order to go back home. Help! Dumber, love is just a chemical reaction triggered by hormones and societal expectations. Let's mess with their little reality show and show them what love really is. Really, Rick? You're gonna help me find true love on an alien dating show? No, oh, I'm just gonna cause chaos and make those aliens question their entire existence. It'll be hilarious. Dash dash dash. Morty, I found a dimension where they've invented a device that can predict the future. Wanna play some bets and rake in the cash? I don't know, Rick. Messing with time and altering reality doesn't sound too safe or ethical, you know? Morty, we're not here to debate ethics. We're here to make some easy money. Now let's go place those bets before anyone notices. Dash dash dash. Rick, why are we in this intergalactic beauty spa? I feel so out of place with all these glamorous aliens. Ordi, relax. This spa has cutting-edge treatments that reverse aging, regenerate cells, and make you irresistible to all species. Get with the program, kid. But Rick, what if something goes wrong? I don't want to wake up as a sentient broccoli or something. Don't worry, Morty. I've checked the Yelp reviews. They only have a 30% chance of turning you into a vegetable pretty good odds dash 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 rick i can't believe you turned yourself into a pickle what's the point of all this insanity summer life is meaningless we're all just floating in a chaotic universe but turning myself into a pickle that's art baby art are you kidding me this is the dumbest thing you've ever done well dumbest thing you've ever seen there's a difference honey dash 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 Rick, can we please just have a normal adventure for once? No cosmic entities, no existential crises, just good old-fashioned fun? Ordy, normal is boring. You want boring, go watch paint dry or something. We're here for the wild, unpredictable, and mind-bending experiences. But I'm tired of being scared and in danger all the time. Can't we just chill? Fine, we'll have a chill adventure. But just so you know. It's gonna involve interdimensional karaoke and space pirates. Alright Morty, buckle up for another interdimensional adventure. Uh, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Morty, normal is for losers. We're going to experience something mind-bogglingly insane. Sci fine, let's get this over with. Beginning of the episode, initial situation. Sane, Rick's spaceship interior. Morty, I've developed a new invention, the robot human love simulator. Geez, Rick, can't you come up with something useful for once? Scene change, triggering event, Jerry's interdimensional admirer. Sane, Smith family living room. Gazing at hologram, wow, this interdimensional being really likes me. Jerry, that's just a hologram. You're falling for virtual reality again. But she's amazing. We've been chatting for hours. Scene change, development, nebula, naughty nuisance. Sane. Nebula Nightclub, with Rick and Morty disguised. Morty, we need to find the Nebula Naughty Nuisance. They stole my new robot invention. What? How'd they know about it? Doesn't matter, Morty. We just need to retrieve it before they cause any chaos. Scene change, progression, cuts. Sane, intergalactic black market. Look, Morty, the robot human love simulator has been cut up into pieces. That's messed up, Rick. How are we even gonna put it back together? We'll have to make some deals and gather all the parts. Time to get resourceful. Scene change, climax, grilled cheese. Sane, interdimensional power plant. Morty, 
I have an idea. If we overload the power plant, it'll deactivate the Nebula Nadi nuisances robots. But won't that cause a major explosion? We'll be incinerated. Ordi, trust me, we'll survive. It's all part of the plan. Scene change, Dinumon, reunion. Sane, the Smith family home. We did it, Morty. The robot human love simulator is back to its original form. Let's hope it doesn't fall into the wrong hands again. Rick and Morty laugh. Scene change, conclusion. Sane, Nebula nightclub, several days later. Sulking, I can't believe she turned out to be a robot spy. See, I told you not to trust holographic admirers. Yeah, yeah. Lesson learned. Scene change, end. Another day, another adventure, Morty. Now let's go grab some interdimensional pizza. Can't we just have a quiet dinner, Rick? Quiet is boring, Morty. Embrace the chaos. Episode ends. Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got some interdimensional hijinks to get into. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? Last time we ended up in a dimension where everyone had butts for faces. Morty, do you want an adventure or a boring day at school? We're going. Hey guys, can I come too? I need something exciting to film for my YouTube channel. Jerry, you're not bringing your camera into danger again. You almost got eaten by a giant space spider last time. Come on, Beth. This will be content gold. Just imagine the views. Forget about that, Jerry. We have a mission. We need to find the legendary butt crystal in the Buttiverse. Butt crystal? Seriously, Rick? Can't we just go on a normal adventure for once? Ordy, the butt crystal holds the power to grant butt-related wishes. We could become butt billionaires. I can't believe I'm saying this, but count me in. I always wanted a butt-shaped swimming pool. See, Beth. Even your mom gets it. Let's go, Rick. Scene shifts to the Buttiverse. All right, Morty, this is the coordinates. Keep your eyes open for anything that looks like a crystal. Whispering to himself, why couldn't it be the boob crystal? I'd rather have that. Guys, look over there. It's a tribe of butt elves. Quick, don't let them see you. We don't want them to know our intentions. Jerry starts filming as Rick sneaks up on an elf. Drangling the elf. Give me the butt crystal, you pointy-eared bastard. This is gonna be epic. Bump fights in the buttiverse. Meanwhile, Beth is exploring a nearby cave. Whoa, I think I found it. The legendary butt crystal. Nice one, Beth. Let's grab it and get the hell out of here. Morty accidentally activates the portal gun, causing them to tumble into another dimension. Whoa, where are we this time, Rick? Damn it, Morty. We ended up in a dimension where everyone speaks in butt puns. Prepare for a real pain in the gluteus maximus. Scene ends with a family surrounded by butt pun spouting beings. This is the weirdest adventure ever. At least it's great material for my YouTube channel. Morty, next time, remind me to avoid dimensions with butt-related artifacts. This is getting old. Yeah, I think I've had enough butt-related adventures for a lifetime, Rick. Morty, pass me the sriracha sauce. This ramen needs some kick. Oh, uh, sure Rick, but isn't that a little too spicy for you? Morty, I can handle spice like a cosmic deity. Remember the time I ate that ghost pepper? I left the ghost in the dust. Rick, can we please have a civilized dinner for once? 
Morty, pass your father the tofu. Tofu? Beth, I thought we agreed we were having a feast tonight. Where's the meat? Jerry, you know I don't do vegetables. So you're saying you'd rather eat a creature that had a mother than something that grew from the ground? If it tastes good, I don't care about its family tree, Jerry. Can we just enjoy the dinner and not get into another one of your philosophical debates? Fine, let's just eat our separate dishes in silence then. Hey, Dad, ever wonder if our food is secretly plotting against us? Like, what if the tofu wants revenge for being consumed? Morty, are you watching too many conspiracy theory shows again? Morty's got a point, Jerry. You never know what these vegetables are capable of when they're left to their own devices. Are we seriously discussing the sentience of vegetables? Can we please focus on the meal? Alright, fine. Morty, pass me the pickled ginger. Rick, don't you think you've had enough sodium for one day? Morty, what's the point of being a genius if you can't indulge in some guilty pleasures? Can we please change the topic? This is making me lose my appetite. Fine, let's talk about something more interesting. Rick, have you discovered any new dimensions lately? As a matter of fact, I did, Beth. I found a dimension where everyone communicates through interpretive dance. It was quite the sight. Can we go there someday, Rick? I kinda like dance. Dancing? Count me out. I've got two left feet. Well, Jerry, you do have two left brains too, so I guess it balances out. Rick, can we please have a family dinner without insults? Beth, I'm incapable of having a normal conversation without a dash of insult sauce. Can we at least agree that this ramen is pretty damn good? I'll give you that, Morty. The flavor is quite impressive, even without any meat. See, Jerry, even without meat, you can still enjoy your meal. Take notes, buddy. Can we just enjoy the moment and appreciate each other's company? Fine, but only if Morty agrees to dance like a graceful gazelle after dinner. Oh geez, Rick, do I have to? Morty, it's either that or cleaning up after Snuffles when he visits from his interdimensional escapades. All right, fine, but I demand a plate of nachos as a reward. Morty, you don't negotiate with Rick. Trust me, it never ends well. Jerry, if you want to survive in this family, you gotta learn to negotiate with the negotiator. Can we all just eat now? They all start eating, with occasional snarky comments thrown in throughout the meal. Morty, we're in a bit of a pickle here. Apparently, I owe 3 quadrillion 948 trillion 584 billion 939 million 399 thousand 484 dollars to Hungary. Hungary? Why would you owe them that much money? Well, you see Morty, I may or may not have accidentally caused a multiverse rift during one of my experiments. Long story short, some interdimensional Hungarian criminals got involved, and now they want their money back. Geez, Rick, how are we going to pay them back? We don't have that kind of cash. Don't worry, Morty, I've got a plan. We're going to dive into a black market interdimensional dogfighting ring. Dogfighting? That's messed up, Rick. Relax, Morty, it's not real dogs. It's interdimensional holographic projections. We just got to train our holographic dogs to win and make a killing in bets. I don't know, Rick. This sounds unethical. Ethical, Morty, do you think debts care about ethics? Besides, it's just a holographic simulation. No harm done. Okay, fine. But can we at least train the dogs to do some cool tricks? Sure, Morty, we'll teach them to do backflips and shoot lasers out of their eyes. Happy now? Well, I guess that's something. But what if we get caught? Morty, stop being such a wuss. We're gonna disguise ourselves as interdimensional diplomats. No one will suspect a thing. Diplomats? I don't even know how to tie a tie. That's what YouTube tutorials are for, Morty. Now quit complaining and start practicing your diplomatic accent. All right, all right. But if anything goes wrong, I'm blaming you, Rick. Fair enough, Morty. 
Just remember, we're doing this for Hungary, and maybe for a few extra bucks in our pockets. Oh, I can't believe I'm risking my life for some interdimensional debt. This better be worth it, Rick. Trust me, Morty, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. Get ready for intergalactic dogfights and holographic mayhem. I hope you know what you're doing, Rick. Of course I do, Morty. I always have a plan. Now let's go save our asses from the Hungarian mob and make a few bucks while we're at it. Here we go again. Morty, get ready for another mind-bending adventure. Oh geez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal is overrated, Morty. Now put on your adventure pants, we've got some serious shit to do. What's going on, you two? We're about to delve into the darkest corners of the multiverse, Beth. Strap in, it's gonna get wild. Can I come too? I'm bored as hell. Fine, but no complaining if things get too crazy, Summer. What are you guys talking about? Can I join? Jerry, for the love of all that is good and holy, just stay out of the way. You always mess things up. But I want to be part of the adventure. All right, fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. Scene changes to a dark, neon lit street. And in mask, you fools have no idea what you've stumbled upon. Oh please, spare me the dramatic monologue. We've seen it all before. Ugh, well. Rick, what's with the dog? Did he just talk? Oh, he's a talking dog. Surprise, surprise. Okay, this is getting weirder by the second. Can we just get on with saving the world or whatever? Hold your horses, Beth. We have to welcome Twitch to hell first. Who's Twitch and why are we welcoming him to hell? I don't have time to explain all the cosmic intricacies to you, Jerry. Just go with it. Jerry suddenly explodes. Well, that was unexpected. Dad just exploded. Is he gonna be okay? I don't think exploding is something you can recover from, Summer. Don't worry, I can fix it. But first, let's deal with this masked man. Anon Mask, you fools can't stop me. I have the power to destroy the entire universe. Oh great, another power-hungry maniac. Just what I needed. Scene transitions to an epic battle with explosions and lasers. Rick, what's the plan here? We're getting our asses kicked. Just hold on, Beth. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Rick, we can't keep fighting like this. We need a strategy. Morty, sometimes the best strategy is pure chaos. Rick, that's a terrible strategy. Yeah, well, it's all I've got right now. Brace yourselves. As the chaos ensues, the masked man is defeated. And in mask, no, I'll get my revenge. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Nobody likes a sore loser. Scene concludes with the family catching their breath. Well, that was certainly an adventure. Can we go back home now? Sure thing, Beth. But remember, the universe is a crazy place. We'll never have a dull moment. Can we at least have some normalcy once in a while? Aw, oh, where's the fun in that? Now let's go. I need a drink. Morty, Morty, you wouldn't believe what I just saw. There's a man in a knight costume walking down the street with a sword. What? Are you serious, Rick? That sounds dangerous. Oh, come on, Morty. It's probably just some LARPing weirdos. Let's go check it out. I don't know, Rick. This seems kind of risky. Risky, Morty. We've been to parallel dimensions, fought aliens, and dabbled in dark magic. A guy dressed as a knight is hardly risky. 
Okay, if you say so, Rick. But let's stay on our toes. Hey, what's going on, you two? Just another bizarre occurrence in this crazy town, Beth. There's a knight walking around with a sword. Seriously? Should we call the police? Rick said it's probably harmless. We're gonna go check it out. Did someone mention a knight? I used to be in a medieval reenactment group back in high school. Oh great, Jerry. Maybe you can show us the way to Knightsville. Can I come too? Sounds like it could be fun. Sure, Summer. The more the merrier. Just watch your back. Knight dressed in armor. Hail fellow travelers, I Sir Glendower am on a quest to find the mythical beast of shimmering shadows. Oh boy, another one with a quest. This is gonna be interesting. Sir Glendower, you dare mock my noble quest, Rick Sanchez? Mock? No, I'm just appreciating the absurdity of the situation. Carry on, Sir Glendower. Sir Glendower, do you realize you're just wandering around a suburban neighborhood with a sword? Sir Glendower, fear not, good Morty. The power of chivalry and honor shall protect me. Well, as long as he's not hurting anyone, I guess it's fine. This reminds me of the time I jousted with Sir Armando. Good times. Yeah, Dad, we've heard that story a million times. Alright, enough reminiscing, Knight. Do you have a plan or are you just wandering aimlessly? Sir Glendower, fret not, for I possess a sacred map that shall guide me to the beast's lair. Sacred map? Really? How convenient. Rick, we should help him. He seems lost. Fine, Morty. Let's use the portal gun to find this mythical beast. Might as well make it interesting. Sir Glendower, thank you, good sirs. Together, we shall vanquish the beast of shimmering shadows. You know what, Rick? This might actually be fun. Yeah. It's like a real-life adventure. Count me in. Whoa! Let's kick some mythical beast butt. Alright, everybody, buckle up. We're going on a medieval adventure. Morty, I've done it. I've created a device that can turn Jerry into a mime. What? Why would you want to do that, Rick? Well, I've always found Jerry to be a bit too talkative. Thought it would be amusing to see him trapped in his own silence for once. Oh geez, Rick, this seems kinda cruel. Come on, Morty, it's all in good fun. Plus, it's not like he'll be stuck like that forever. Just for a little while. Trust me, he'll learn a valuable lesson. Through dramatic miming, help. I'm trapped in an invisible box. Someone, please free me. Oh my god, what did you do to your father, Rick? Relax, Beth, it's just a temporary transformation. He'll be back to normal soon enough. Screaming, John Mulaney. What are you doing in an Arby's? John Mulaney, in a bewildered tone, ah, just grabbing a roast beef sandwich. Well, you better order fast and get out of here. I can't have a famous comedian ruining my lunch break. All right, Morty, let's head to Arby's and witness the chaos Beth is causing. Are you sure, Rick? I don't think it's a good idea to involve ourselves in her rampage. Come on, Morty, it'll be hilarious. Plus, I want some curly fries. Still miming. Please. I've learned my lesson. I promise I'll never annoy anyone again. Oh, shut up, Jerry. This is your own fault. Maybe you'll think twice before blabbering next time. Alright, here we are at Arby's. Let the yelling and chaos commence. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I hope John Mulaney escapes before things get too out of hand. Relax, Morty, we're just here for the show. Now let's grab our food and find a good seat. Frantically miming. Look, Beth. It's me, Jerry. I promise. Sarcastically, wow, Jerry. Great mime skills. Now shut up and let me enjoy my curly fries in peace. You know, Morty, I may have underestimated the power of mime. Maybe we can use it for some interdimensional negotiations in the future. Yeah, sure, Rick. 
Whatever you say. Can we just eat our food and go home now? Fine, Morty. Let's leave before Beth causes any more havoc. But hey, at least we got a good story out of this, right? Yeah, I guess so. Just another day in our crazy lives, huh? That's right, Morty. And remember, sometimes you just gotta embrace the absurdity. Hey Morty, look at these two idiots standing in front of a window. What a bunch of dummies. Yeah, Rick, they're just standing there, doing absolutely nothing. How pathetic. Hey, guys, why are you making fun of us? Yeah, Rick, leave them alone. They're just enjoying the view. Enjoying the view? More like staring at a blank wall. You two could use a little more excitement in your lives. Rick, be nice. They're just taking a moment to appreciate the scenery. Appreciating the scenery? Ha, oh, that's like watching paint dry. Boring. Guys, I think we should all just get along. We don't need to be constantly mocking each other. Morty's right. Let's all try to be civil here. Fine, fine. No more insults. But seriously, they could use some adventure in their lives. Maybe they're content with a simpler life, Rick. Not everything has to be an interdimensional roller coaster ride. Well, I guess that's their loss then. More excitement for us, Morty. Yeah, but it's not always about excitement, Rick. Sometimes it's nice to just appreciate the little things. Exactly, Morty. I think we can all learn something from that. Well said, Jerry. Let's all try to find a balance between adventure and simplicity. All right, all right, I'll tone it down with the insults. But don't get used to it. I thrive on chaos and mayhem, you know. We know, Rick, but maybe it's time to take a break from all that and enjoy some peace. I second that, Morty. Let's take a moment to appreciate the view ourselves. Fine, just this once, but don't expect it to become a regular thing. It's settled then. We'll all take a moment to appreciate the view together. Sounds like a plan. Maybe we can all learn something from each other. All right, one, two, three. Everyone takes a deep breath. Wow, it's actually quite nice. Who would have thought? I guess sometimes, simplicity can be just as amazing as an intergalactic adventure. Yeah, yeah, but don't forget, the universe is still out there waiting for us. Let's not get too comfortable now. Agreed, Rick. But let's also remember to cherish the quiet moments every now and then. Absolutely, Beth. Life is all about finding that balance. Alright, enough with the mushy stuff. Let's go, Morty. Time for another crazy adventure. Yeah, let's go, Rick. But maybe we can take a moment to appreciate the view before we leave. Fine, Morty. One more moment. But that's it. Scene fades out. Title, The Volcano Chronicles. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Summer sit on the couch, engrossed in a TV show. Sarcastically, oh great, another reality show about people trying to survive on a deserted island. How original. Well, at least they're not fighting giant alien monsters this time. Defensive. Hey, I enjoy watching shows like this. It's relatable. Rolling her eyes. Dad, you just like it because of the drama. Suddenly, a roar is heard from outside. What the hell was that? They rush to the window and see a man in a Star Wars costume walking past a volcano with lava in the background. Is that guy cosplaying Darth Vader near a volcano? Talk about risky. Excitedly, look, Rick. It's a volcano fight. Obi-Wan versus Anakin. 
They watch as Obi-Wan and Anakin engage in an epic lightsaber battle with the lava erupting around them. Mused. Well, this is one way to settle their differences. The fight escalates, and Obi-Wan cuts off Anakin's hand, sending him tumbling towards the lava. Oh my god, that's brutal. Can we change the channel? No way, this is getting juicy. Chuckling, it's like a teenage soap opera, but with lightsabers and volcanic explosions. The volcano trembles and starts to collapse. Oh, guys, I think we should get out of here. Things are about to get real hot. They rush out of the house just as the eruption engulfs the volcano. Axed. Smith Backyard, Day. They stand safely in the yard, watching the lava flow. Well, that was intense. I could use a drink now. Don't worry, I've got a few interdimensional beers stored in the garage. Let's celebrate surviving the Volcano Chronicles. They all cheer and head to the garage, leaving the smoldering volcano behind. Fade out. Morty, grab your lab coat and get ready for some interdimensional booger-picking madness. Oh, Rick, do we really have to do this again? Couldn't we just watch TV or something? Morty, don't be a wuss. We've got a knight with three swords in his hand, and we're gonna revolutionize the world of medieval weaponry. Size, fine, but can we at least take some snacks? I don't want to starve in some crazy fantasy world. Snacks, Morty. We're gonna be feasting on the blood of our enemies. You think they have dorgal doodles in medieval times? Get real. All right, all right, let's just get this over with. But if I die, it's your fault, Rick. Morty, you're not gonna die. I've got a portal gun in my back pocket. Worst case scenario, we'll just hop back home. I hope you're right, Rick. These chainmail undies don't exactly inspire confidence. Look at it this way, Morty. If we survive this, chicks are gonna dig us. Nothing says, swagger, like saving a princess and slaying a dragon. You really think so? Absolutely, Morty. Chicks love a knight in shining armor. And if that fails, we can always just tell them we're time travelers. Laughs. Oh god, Rick. You always come up with the weirdest plans. All right, let's go be heroes, I guess. That's the spirit, Morty. Now. Let's kick some medieval ass and show these peasants what science is really capable of. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I wouldn't want anyone else by my side in medieval times, Rick. Ah, uh, Morty, you're making me all sentimental. Now let's go find that knight and get this party started. Party? I thought we were on a quest. Morty, every quest is just an excuse for a party. Now quit complaining and start swinging that sword. Mumbles, this is gonna be a disaster. Laughs. Oh, come on, Morty. Where's your sense of adventure? Embrace the chaos and let's make some history. All right, Rick. I'll try to embrace it, but I'm telling you, this better be worth it. Trust me, Morty. It's gonna be legendary. Now let's go be the heroes this dimension never asked for. Under his breath, and may God have mercy on our souls. Disclaimer. The following script contains explicit and mature content. Reader discretion is advised. Title. Stargazing Striptease Scandals. Episode Structure. 1. Initial Situation. 2. Triggering Event Inciting Incident. 3. 4. Denouement. 5. Conclusion. Characters. Rick. Morty. 
Jerry. Beth. Scene, Smith family living room. Rick, Morty, and Beth are sitting on the couch. Jerry is pacing back and forth. Frustrated, I just can't believe it. I've been working so hard as a lawyer, and now they want to replace me with some teenage heartthrob. Sarcastically, oh, poor Jerry. Life's just a never-ending courtroom drama for you, isn't it? Excitedly, hey, Jerry, guess what? This new heartthrob is none other than Finn Wolfhard. Perking up, Finn Wolfhard? From Stranger Things? Teasingly, looks like even the law can't resist the charm of a super talented actor, huh? Scene, outside at night. Rick, Morty, and Jerry lie on the grass, looking up at the stars. Whispering, just think, guys. Right now, Finn is somewhere out there, probably stargazing too. Dreamily, I wonder what his secret to success is? Snarky, you really want to know, Jerry? It's probably a combination of talent, hard work, and a secret obsession with Billie Eilish's music. Laughing, Rick, you're such a cynic. Scene, the next morning at breakfast. Jerry is still preoccupied with his thoughts. Agitated, maybe I should quit my job and become an actor too. It can't be that hard, right? Raising an eyebrow, you do realize it takes more than just good looks, right? It's like trying to perform a stargazing striptease without ever getting naked. Scene, Rick's lab. Morty tinkers with a device while Rick works on a formula. Hey, Rick, do you think I could be an actor? Like Finn Wolfhard? Smirking, Morty, you've got a better chance at finding a unicorn while salsa dancing on the moon. Disappointed, oh. Scene, Jerry's new acting class. The room is filled with aspiring actors. Attempting a dramatic monologue, to be or not to be. Finn Wolfhard, Scene, after the acting class. Jerry approaches Rick and Morty. Guys, I did it. I nailed my audition. I'm gonna be the next big thing. Happy. Sure, Jerry. And I'm the president of the Stargazing Striptease Scandals Club. Scene, Jerry's first acting gig. He nervously stands on stage, surrounded by cheering fans. Whispering to himself. You can do this, Jerry. Just think of Finn Wolfhard. Scene, the audience erupts in applause. Jerry takes a bow. Ecstatic, I did it. I'm a star. Proudly, looks like he finally found his moment in the spotlight. Scene, back at the Smith family living room. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Beth share a celebratory drink. Well, Jerry, I guess you proved us wrong. You really are the king of scandalous stargazing stripteases. Grinning, thanks, Rick. I knew I had it in me. Scene, fade out. The end. Please note that the dialogue and situations in this script are purely fictional and for entertainment purposes. Looking at the clock, Morty, look at this clock. It's got a red ribbon and a black background. And these yellow and orange stripes. I've seen this before. It's the quantum quake quiver. The quantum quake quiver? What does that even mean, Rick? Well, Morty, it's a device that can manipulate quantum energy and create quakes in the fabric of space-time. If it falls into the wrong hands, it could cause catastrophic disruptions in the multiverse. Whoa, that sounds intense. What are we going to do with it? We have to find the person who possesses it and retrieve it before it's too late. I've detected some strange energy readings coming from Jambalaya, an interdimensional speakeasy. We need to investigate. Entering the room, did somebody mention Jambalaya? I'd love me some good old Cajun food. Dad, we're not talking about food here. We're dealing with a dangerous device that could destroy the entire multiverse. Oh, sorry. 
I thought we were just having a dinner conversation. Carry on. Rolling his eyes, anyway, we need to infiltrate Jambalaya and find the owner of the Quantum Quake Quiver. Morty, Summer, Jerry, suit up and let's go. Do we have any plan or strategy here, Rick? Morty, buddy, who needs a plan when you've got sheer brilliance like mine? We'll improvise, like we always do. Rick, sometimes your improvisation gets us into more trouble than it's worth. Nonsense, Summer, that's just the price we pay for high-octane adventures. Now, let's get to Jambalaya and save the multiverse. Moments later, the gang arrives at Jambalaya, a bustling interdimensional speakeasy with strange patrons and lively music. Rick, this place is insane! How are we going to find the owner of the Quantum Quake Quiver and all this chaos? Relax, Morty, I've got a plan. We'll divide and conquer. Summer and Jerry, you search the bar area. Morty, you come with me to the back room. We'll compare notes later. Giggling. Rick, a plan? Who are you, and what have you done with the real Rick? Very funny, Summer. Now get moving. As the gang splits up, they encounter various eccentric and colorful characters, each adding to the chaos and intrigue of the night. Excuse me, have you seen a device called the Quantum Quake Quiver? Strange patron, laughs hysterically, Quantum Quake Quiver, you must be kidding, this place doesn't deal in mere trinkets, we're all about the big stuff here. Whispering to Jerry, well, I guess that answers our question. Meanwhile, Rick and Morty enter the back room, where they find themselves face to face with the owner of the Quantum Quake Quiver. Owner, so, you finally tracked me down, huh? What do you want with my little toy? Oh, it's no toy, my friend. It's a dangerous device that could tear apart reality. We're here to take it off your hands. Yeah, man, give it up before things get messy. Owner, laughs wickedly. You think you can just waltz in here and take what's mine? I don't think so. Prepare to face the consequences. An epic battle ensues, with Rick and Morty using their wit and ingenuity to outsmart the owner. In the end, they manage to retrieve the Quantum Quake Quiver and restore order. Well, that was fun, Morty. Another successful adventure. Now, let's get out of here before things get any weirder. Yeah, I think my brain can't take much more of this. Back in the safety of their spaceship, the gang reflects on their wild night at Jambalaya. You know, as chaotic as it was, I kinda had fun tonight. Nods. Yeah, it's not every day you get to save the multiverse while surrounded by interdimensional partygoers. Just another day in the life of a Smith family adventure. Now, let's head back home and grab some food. I'm starving. As they fly off into the vastness of the cosmos, laughter fills the spaceship, marking the end of another outrageous Rick and Morty escapade. Alright Morty, buckle up for another adventure. We're heading to a dystopian prison break in an underground alien colony. Jeez Rick, isn't that a bit dangerous? I mean, those aliens gotta be pretty furious. Oh come on Morty, danger is my middle name. Well, actually it's Antonio, but that's not the point. Wait, you're taking Morty on another crazy adventure? Why can't I come along for once? Jerry, the last time you came along, you caused a planet to implode. We can't risk that again. Seriously, Dad, you're such a downer. Let Jerry come, maybe he'll do something useful for once. Hey, I'm useful. I once fixed the toaster without burning down the entire house. Sarcastically, oh wow, Jerry, I'm so proud of you. Maybe we should give you a gold star for that massive achievement. All right, let's just get this prison break over with. I don't want to end up as lunch for some alien creature. Trust me Morty, we won't be anyone's lunch. At least not today. So, what's the plan, genius? We'll start by infiltrating the alien colony and hacking into their security systems. Once we have the layout and the location of our target, we'll cause a diversion and make our way to the prison cells. And then what? How do we get out of there? 
Simple. We'll activate the teleportation device hidden in my portal gun and make our escape. Easy peasy. Can't we just talk our way out of it? Maybe these aliens are good listeners. Jerry, if you had a dollar for every time you had a good idea, you'd still be broke. Now shut up and let the professionals handle it. This is going to be legendary. I can already see the headlines. Rick Sanchez and his fearless family defy all odds to save the universe. Again. That's right, Summer. We're not just a regular family. We're the goddamn Avengers of the multiverse. I'm still not sure about all this, Rick. We could get seriously hurt. Morty, life is full of risks. You just have to embrace them and hope for the best. Plus, the chances of survival are statistically improbable, so we're practically invincible. Wow, that really makes me feel better, Rick. Thanks for the pep talk. Alright, enough chit chat. Let's go kick some alien butt and break some prisoners out of their cosmic cages. Hell yeah, this is going to be epic. Alright, here we go again. Hold on tight, guys. Bubba lubba dub dub, it's time for another interdimensional adventure. Int. Sky. Day. A cartoon character, Jimbo, flies his kite in the air, against a backdrop of a beautiful blue sky. In the foreground, a bright yellow object catches his attention. Jimbo! Excitedly! Look at this fascinating yellow object! I wonder what it is! Suddenly, Princess Peach appears, intrigued by the yellow object as well. Princess Peach. Curiously, it seems like something out of this world. Perhaps it holds a great secret. As they both approach the object, a mysterious figure swoops down from the sky. It's Rick, looking furious. Angrily, who dares to interfere with my feud with the alien seductress, Phosphorus? Jimbo! Confused! Uh, Rick, what does that have to do with this yellow object? Princess Peach, slyly. Ah, Rick, I see how it is. You're trying to distract us from your scandalous affair. Panicking. No, no. That's not it at all. The seductress, she has enchanted me. Jimbo! Sarcastically? Oh, very sly, Rick. Blaming it all on an alien enchantress. Princess Peach, dramatically. We must find out the truth. And this yellow object may hold the key. Jimbo! Determined? Let's examine it closely. It looks like a rare cosmic artifact. Desperately. Please. Just help me break free from her spell. Then we can focus on this artifact. They join forces and begin analyzing the yellow object, using various scientific tools and equations. Jimbo! In awe, its molecular structure is unlike anything I've ever seen before! Princess Peach, whispering. The artifact seems to emit a strange energy. Could it be connected to phosphorus? Earnestly. We must use our combined scientific knowledge and unravel this mystery once and for all. As they dig deeper into their investigation, they discover that the artifact indeed holds the power to break Rick free from Phosphorus' spell. Jimbo! Excitedly! We did it! The artifact has the ability to undo the enchantment! Princess Peach. Victorious. With this knowledge, we can expose Rick's scandal for what it really is. Gratefully. Thank you both for helping me see the truth and saving me from Phosphorus clutches. They return the artifact to its rightful place and confront Phosphorus, unveiling the scandalous truth. Jimbo! Confidently, we may be just cartoon characters, but we won't tolerate deception! Princess Peach, assertively. The truth always prevails, no matter how enchanting the lies may be. Apologetically, I am truly sorry for my actions. With your help, I can right my wrongs and move forward. As they bid each other farewell, knowing they have overcome the scandal and helped a friend, a bond forms between them. Jimbo! Grinning! Who knew a simple kite flight could lead to such a wild adventure? Princess Peach, playfully, 
Life's full of surprises, Jimbo. We just have to be open to them. Reflecting, and with true friends by our side, we can conquer even the most seductive of challenges. They part ways, victorious, with the yellow object and its secrets remaining a mystery. But their bond will forever remind them of their scientific journey through scandal, lies, and the power of friendship. Fade out. Ordi, grab your portal gun. We're going on a wild adventure through the multiverse. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Ordi, normal is boring. We need excitement, danger, and a lot of absurdity. Hey guys, can I come along too? I'm so over this mundane existence. Sure, Summer, just don't slow us down with your teenage angst. Where are we going, Rick? We're heading to a dimension where everything is made of candy. Can you believe it? We'll have endless sweets. Ah, oh, Rick, I think I've had enough sugar for one lifetime. Nonsense, Morty, you can never have enough sugar. I hope they have candy that makes you younger. I could use a few extra years of innocence. That's not how it works, Summer. But I'm sure we'll find something interesting for you. Whispering, Rick, are we ever gonna go back to school? Morty, school is for losers. We're exploring the vastness of the universe instead. Can we at least find a dimension where I'm popular? Popularity is overrated, Summer. Let's focus on uncovering the mysteries of the cosmos. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss math class. Ordi, math is for squares. We're delving into the unknown, where equations don't matter. Can we make a pit stop on a dimension with cute alien puppies? Cute alien puppies? Uh, fine. But only for a few minutes. We have a universe to conquer. Rick, I think we're losing touch with reality. Reality is a construct, Morty. We're creating our own reality, one dimension at a time. Guys, I heard there's a dimension where everyone is a clone of Larry David. I'm dying to visit. Larry David clones? Now that sounds intriguing. Let's go, Morty. Here we go again, Rick. Brace yourself for another mind-bending adventure. Morty, adventures are what keep us alive. Embrace the chaos, my boy. Int. Rick's lab, night. Rick tinkers with a new device, surrounded by test tubes and strange contraptions. Morty enters, looking concerned. Hey, Rick, what's with all the creepy clown stuff? Smirking. Oh, Morty, you wouldn't understand the complexities of interdimensional clown physics. Seriously, Rick? Interdimensional clown physics? It's a real thing, Morty. And this creepy clown, he's the key to unlocking it all. Skeptical, I don't know, Rick. It seems kinda, dangerous. Dangerously hilarious, Morty. Now let's get this show on the road. Int. Creepy clown's lair, night. The room is dimly lit, filled with the faint sound of circus music. Creepy clown stands, his red mask hiding a wicked grin. Creepy clown, sinisterly, welcome, Rick and Morty. Are you ready for the ultimate psychotic clown rampage? Aki. You bet your oversized shoes we are. Clowns are us. Rick, are you sure about this? He's a psycho. Drugging. We've dealt with worse, Morty. Now let's show this clown what we're made of. The room suddenly fills with confetti and laughing gas as the battle begins. Int. Rick's spaceship, later. Rick and Morty sit in silence, covered in pie remnants and clown makeup. Panting. That was... insane, Rick. Insane, more like a carnival of scientific breakthroughs, Morty. 
My theories on intergalactic juggling just got a major boost. Wearily, you always find a way to make it weird, Rick. Can't we just go back to normal adventures? Normal? What's the fun in that, Morty? Embrace the chaos, my boy. Int. Rick's bedroom, night. Rick lies in bed, staring at the ceiling. Unity, a shape-shifting hive mind, materializes next to him. Unity, you know Rick, your constant quest for chaos is quite enticing. Oh, Unity, I'm always up for some steamy intergalactic liaisons. They share a sly grin before the room fades to black. Int. Intergalactic Club, Night. Rick and Morty dance wildly among various alien creatures, the music thumping in their ears. Shouting over the music, Rick, this is insane. We're dancing with aliens. Grinning, that's the spirit, Morty. Let loose and embrace the absurdity. Int. Rick's spaceship, day. Rick and Morty stumble out of the ship, their clothes disheveled and hair wild. Laughing, Rick, that was the craziest adventure yet. Smirking, and to think, Morty, this is just the tip of the interdimensional iceberg. Int. Rick's lab, night. Rick and Morty high five, covered in a mixture of slime and alien goo. We did it, Morty. Another insane adventure in the books. Yeah, Rick, but can we maybe take a break from the psychotic clowns next time? Laughing. No promises, Morty. The universe is a twisted place, my friend. Fade out. Title, Alien Karaoke Showdown Int. Basement, Night I'm David, a nerdy scientist and self-proclaimed alien enthusiast. I'm standing in my cluttered basement, holding a makeshift rocket I built from spare parts. My computer screen proudly displays the Star Trek logo. David! Excitedly. Today's the day. The grand finale of Alien Karaoke Battle. Suddenly, a beeping sound signals the arrival of a message on my computer. David. Oh, what do we have here? I click the message open, revealing an invitation to join an intergalactic karaoke competition. The prize? A rare element called neodymium. David. Eyes wide. Neodymium? That's worth a fortune. I accept the invitation, and the scene transitions to a futuristic alien spaceship in outer space. Int. Alien spaceship, night. I find myself surrounded by a vibrant array of aliens, each with unique talents and extravagant costumes. The crowd goes wild as the competition begins. Alien host! Welcome, contestants. Prepare to unleash your vocal prowess and claim the Neodymium trophy. The first alien performer, an extravagant shimmering creature, takes the stage. David! I have to bring my A-game if I want to win this. Int. Green room, backstage, moments later. I'm nervously pacing while practicing my song choice. Suddenly, a group of aliens approach me, glaring with a menacing aura. Alien number one. Angry tone. You're the human intruder trying to steal our neodymium, aren't you? David. Stammering. Ah, no. I just love aliens and this seemed like a great opportunity to join in the fun. Number two. Suspicious. You better not be deceiving us. Suddenly, an alien submarine bursts through the spaceship's wall, creating chaos. David. Mutters to himself. Submarine mutiny standoff? Seriously? The aliens panic, and I try to defuse the situation. David. Pleadingly. Hey, everyone, let's put our differences aside and focus on solving this crisis together. The crowd reluctantly agrees, and we join forces to overcome the submarine mutiny. The song contest resumes. Int. Alien spaceship, on stage, later. 
it's finally my turn to perform, and I step onto the stage. The crowd is skeptical, but I'm determined to prove myself. David. Confidently. Ladies, gentlemen, and extraterrestrial beings, prepare to be amazed. I take a deep breath and sing my heart out, surprising everyone with my unexpected talent. Int. Alien spaceship, winner's circle, later. The judge's vote is in, and the alien host announces the winner. Alien host! And the coveted neodymium trophy goes to. David, the human. The crowd erupts with applause, and I beam with pride as I accept the trophy. David! Grinning. Thank you all. This has been an out-of-this-world experience. As I celebrate, the aliens approach me, now friendly and accepting. Alien number three. Apologetically. We misjudged you, David. Your talent and courage have earned our respect. David. With humility. Thank you. Let's remember that unity and understanding can conquer any mutiny. Axed. Alien spaceship, night. I bid farewell to the alien crowd and board my trusty rocket, Neodymium Trophy in hand. David. Whispering. Until next time, my extraterrestrial friends. With a wave, I ignite the rocket engines and soar back towards Earth, forever grateful for my incredible journey. Fade out. I've just discovered a new dimension where everyone communicates in scientific PhD terms. It's mind-boggling. Geez, Rick, can't we just have a normal adventure for once? Like, maybe finding a lost treasure or something? No can do, Morty. We've got to embrace the intellectual challenge. Besides, those kinds of adventures are for lazy sitcoms. Oh, great. More science stuff. Can I just go back to my humdrum life and not get involved? Dad, stop being such a downer. This is a chance for us to expand our knowledge and have an experience of a lifetime. Exactly, Summer. Now, let's dive into this dimension's humorous travel stories. I bet they're filled with laughter and ridiculous mishaps. All right, but can we at least take a break and get coffee first? I'm feeling a little low on energy. Fine, Morty. Just remember, time is relative and waiting for coffee is a waste. Meanwhile, in the new dimension, the woman sitting on a suitcase sips her coffee and watches a TV on the ground. Woman, I never thought my life would become a damn sitcom. First, sitting on a suitcase like some kind of comedy prop, and now this TV here. What did I do to deserve this? TV announcer, welcome to LCK underscore Korea, the most scientifically entertaining channel in the multiverse. Get ready for the Supernova Secret Sweetheart Show, where love meets cosmic explosions. Meanwhile, at the office depot in this dimension. Morty, we need to find some high-tech dimensional equipment to navigate through this place. Office supplies won't cut it this time. You mean we can't just use our feet like we usually do? No, Morty, this is a highly advanced dimension. We need to step up our game. Oh great, more technology. Can't we just stick to low-tech gadgets for once? Dad, you always underestimate the power of progress. Embrace it. All right, everyone, buckle up. We're about to go on a scientific roller coaster ride through this dimension. Can we at least grab some snacks first? I'm hungry. Morty, snacks are for people who don't understand the complexities of quantum physics. We're on a cosmic mission here. Meanwhile, back at the TV. Woman, this is the most absurd show I've ever seen. Love stories mixed with supernovas? Who comes up with this stuff? TV announcer! Stay tuned for the mind-blowing episode of Feet, where the secrets of the universe are revealed through the mysteries of footprints. Suddenly, a portal opens in front of the woman, and Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Summer step out. Excuse me, madam, could you point us to the nearest high-tech dimensional equipment store? Woman, are you serious? 
First, I'm stuck in a sitcom, and now you're asking me for directions? Can my day get any weirder? Well, technically, according to the laws of probability, there's an infinite number of possibilities, so... Woman, save it, sci-fi genius. Just follow me. We'll see if this dimension has what you're looking for. Alright, Morty, listen up. I've invented a device that can transport us to different dimensions to play Vampire Beach Volleyball. Vampire Beach Volleyball? Oh, I don't know about this, Rick. Sounds a little too scandalous for me. Scandalous? Morty, this is just innocent fun. Plus, we'll get some much needed exercise. Alright, fine. But you better not go all out with your smack talking again. Last time, the Vampire Beach community had a field day with us. Relax, Morty, I've learned my lesson. We'll keep it friendly. Now, let's activate the portal and get to the Vampire Beach Dimension. Music, Essence, WizKid featuring Thames, starts playing. Here we are in the Vampire Beach Dimension. Morty, grab the ball and let's start the game. Um, Rick, how are we supposed to play volleyball with bats? This dimension has its own set of rules, Morty. Bats and balls are all we need. Just trust me on this. All right, if you say so. But I don't understand why we couldn't just play regular beach volleyball. Regular beach volleyball is for the weak, Morty. We need some excitement, some danger. This is the dimension of ultimate beach sports. Size, fine, let's just get this over with. They start playing the game, navigating through intricate mazes on the beach. Morty, watch out for that vampire net. It's coated in garlic extract. You don't want to get tangled in that. Got it, Rick. And watch out for the werewolf referee. Last time, he called every play against us. Don't worry, Morty. I've got a plan for that. I've rigged the ball with silver particles. Just hit it at the werewolf, and he'll be out of commission. You truly think of everything, Rick. As they play, a group of vampire cheerleaders shakes their pom-poms. Cheerleader 1, go, Rick and Morty. Show those vampires how it's done. Cheerleader 2, yeah, give them a taste of your scandalously funny banter. Thanks, ladies, we'll make you proud. They continue playing, with intense back and forth action. Rick, we're actually doing pretty well. I guess your craziness pays off sometimes. Of course it does, Morty. Now, let's finish this game and claim the victory. They score the winning point, and the crowd goes wild. Crowd, Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty. See, Morty, nothing scandalous about this. Just two interdimensional adventurers having a good time. Yeah, I guess you're right, Rick. It was actually kind of fun. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, let's celebrate with some aromatherapy massage. My treat. You know what, Rick? I'd say this crazy adventure was totally worth it. They walk off into the sunset, accompanied by the scent of relaxation and victory. Characters Rick Morty Knight with red horns and a helmet on Night Manager Scene Rick's Garage Morty, prepare yourself for a mind-bending adventure. We're going back in time to the medieval era. Ah, uh, Rick, isn't it dangerous to mess with time travel again? Morty, danger is my middle name. Well, it's actually dangerous, but close enough. Now, put on this suit of armor. Struggling to put on the armor, ah, uh, Rick, why are we going full medieval for this? Because, Morty, I have a priceless artifact to steal from the Knights of the Round Table. 
they won't know what hit him. Scene. Medieval times. Ordy, remember, we must maintain our cover identities. I am Sir Richard the Schemer, and you are Sir Mortimer the Clumsy. Why am I always the clumsy one? Because it's funnier that way, Morty. Besides, you're an expert at getting yourself into awkward situations. Scene. Night Manager's office. Night Manager, Sir Richard, I have quite the task for you. We've been having issues with a rogue knight terrorizing the kingdom. I need you to take care of him. Consider it done, good sir. But first, Mortimer and I require an exorbitant amount of gold and a bottomless goblet of mead. Night Manager, very well, Sir Richard. Our treasury shall grant your every wish. Scene. Outside castle. Rick, I'm not sure about this whole fighting thing. I mean, I can barely swing a sword without hitting myself. Ordy, I have upgraded your armor with weapon assist technology. You'll be swinging like a pro in no time. Scene. Battle with Rogue Knight. Rogue Knight, prepare to face my wrath, Sir Richard. Ordy, activate the weapon assist system. Swing sword effortlessly, whoa, Rick. This suit of armor is amazing. I told you, Morty. Now take him down. Scene. After defeating Rogue Knight. Rogue Knight, you may have won this battle, but I shall have my revenge. Morty, quick, let's make our escape before things get messy. Scene. Rick's garage. Phew, that was intense, Rick. Can we please take a break from these crazy adventures? Morty, if we took breaks, we wouldn't be the galaxy's most notorious duo. Now, what's next on our agenda? Size, I guess I'll go clean up the medieval armor then. Scene. End. Note. The episode would follow the narrative structure of an initial situation, Rick and Morty going back in time. A triggering event, being tasked with taking down the rogue knight development, Morty using the weapon assist technology to defeat the knight, and a resolution, escaping the castle and returning to the garage. Examining the tablet, Morty, I've done it. I've created the Night OS, a revolutionary operating system. Confused. Ah, uh, what's so special about it? Smirking. Well, Morty, this OS works by playing a game of D&D hosted by a conversation agent with another conversational agent, yielding autonomous task management. Rolling his eyes. Autonomous task management? Really, Rick? Can't we just watch TV like normal people? Dismissive. Morty. This is cutting-edge technology. It'll make life easier, more efficient, and maybe even solve world hunger. Skeptical. Yeah, right. Remember the last time you said that? We ended up in a dimension of talking pizzas. Defensive. That was just a minor setback, Morty. This time, it's different. Just trust me on this. Size. Fine, Rick. But I swear, if this ends in another interdimensional disaster. Interrupting. Relax, Morty. Let's just give it a try. Here, put on this helmet and take the game controller. Puts on the helmet reluctantly. All right, fine. Let's get this over with. Rick starts the night OS game and the conversational agents come to life. Dungeon Master Agent, greetings, adventurers. Welcome to the world of night OS. Are you ready for an epic quest? Excitedly. Oh, hell yeah. Let's do this. Nervously, I still think this is a bad idea, Rick. Dungeon Master Agent, fear not, young Morty. Your journey shall be filled with danger, treasure, and unimaginable encounters. Gleefully, Morty, we're about to embark on the greatest adventure of our lives. Get ready for some serious ass-kicking. Under his breath, great, just what I always wanted. A virtual reality ass-kicking. As they progress in the game, they encounter various challenges and enemies. Fighting a dragon. Take that, you scaly bastard. No dragon can stand up to the genius of Rick Sanchez. Distracted. Ah, uh, Rick, shouldn't we be focusing on the actual purpose of this experiment? Dismissive. Don't worry, Morty. We'll get to the task management stuff. But first, let's enjoy some good old-fashioned sword-swinging action. 
Size, I guess we have no choice. They defeat the dragon and reach the final level of the game. Dungeon Master Agent, congratulations, brave adventurers. You have successfully completed the quest and mastered the Night OS. Triumphant. See, Morty, I told you it would work. Admitting defeat. All right, Rick, I guess you were right this time. But can we please go back to regular old reality now? Grinning, of course, Morty. Just remember, the future is filled with endless possibilities, even if they involve slaying virtual dragons. Muttering, yeah, endless possibilities, and endless headaches. They remove the helmets and return to the real world, leaving behind the Night OS adventure. Alright Morty, listen up. I've just created something revolutionary. It's called Night OS. Night OS? Is it like an operating system for knights or something? Well, kinda. Night OS works by playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons hosted by a conversation agent with another conversational agent, yielding autonomous task management. Whoa, that sounds really complicated, Rick. Can you dumb it down for me? Alright, Morty. It's like this, Night OS is a system that uses artificial intelligence to automate tasks through a simulated D&D game. It's like having a virtual knight do things for you. So we can just sit back and let the knight do all the work? Exactly, Morty. Once you set up the parameters, the knight will go on quests, slay monsters, and even do your laundry if you want. That's wild, Rick. But how does it work? Can you explain all the technical details? Well, Morty. It starts with the conversation agents. They act as the game's DM, guiding the knight through different scenarios. The knight's decisions are based on complex algorithms and machine learning models. So the knight is like a super smart AI? You got it, Morty. The knight utilizes all its stats, from strength to intelligence, to make strategic choices during the game. It's a highly sophisticated system. That's insane, Rick. But what if something goes wrong? Like, what if the knight goes rogue or something? Don't worry, Morty. I've put in numerous fail-safes and security measures to prevent that. Plus, the knight is only as powerful as we make it, and we'll always have the upper hand. Okay, Rick. I'm starting to see the potential here. This knight OS could be a game-changer in automation. Absolutely, Morty. Knight OS has the potential to revolutionize the way we handle tasks. We'll be the envy of every lazy person in the universe. I can already imagine the possibilities, Rick. We could finally have some free time without lifting a finger. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's get this knight geared up and ready for action. It's time to conquer the world. Virtually, of course. Int. Airplane. Day. A plane cuts through the clear blue sky, flying over a lush green countryside next to a glistening lake and forest-covered hillsides in the distance. Rick, a charismatic and genius software engineer, sits comfortably in his seat, typing away on his laptop. Excitedly, guys, I've done it. I've created Night OS, the ultimate operating system. His fellow passengers raise their eyebrows, intrigued by Rick's enthusiasm. Older woman, what in heaven's name is Night OS? Smirking. Night OS works by playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, hosted by a conversation agent, with another conversational agent. It's an unimaginably complex system that yields autonomous task management. A young man with tattoos leans in, fascinated. Tattooed man, are you serious? Tell me all the technical details. Leaning back, enjoying the attention. All right, here we go. Night OS harnesses a neural network to generate characters and quests, simulating a dynamic virtual world. It uses reinforcement learning algorithms to adapt to user behavior. 
a blonde woman next to Rick can't contain her excitement. Blonde woman. That's mind-boggling. How do you ensure the system doesn't crash? Grinning, well, Night OS features an advanced fault tolerance mechanism, utilizing distributed computing across multiple virtual machines. It also employs Bayesian inference for intelligent error handling. A middle-aged man in a suit interjects with curiosity. Suit man, can you give us an example of how Night OS functions in real life? Leaning forward, of course. Imagine you're swamped with tasks. Night OS analyzes your priorities, creates an interactive quest interface, and assigns tasks to virtual characters. It feels like living in a fantasy world where your to-do list becomes an epic adventure. A teenager with a pierced nose raises an eyebrow. Teenager. But can Night OS adapt to different personalities and work styles? Absolutely. The conversation agents embedded in Night OS learn from user interactions, adapting to individual preferences. It's all about personalization and synergy between the virtual and real world. A woman in her 30s, wearing glasses, can't help but be amazed. Glasses woman, incredible. How did you even come up with this idea, Rick? Smirking. Well, it all started on a sleepless night with a dream about dragons and spreadsheets. The rest is history. As the plane continues its journey, the passengers gather around Rick, captivated by his brilliance and the amazing possibilities of Night OS. Fade out. All right, Morty, buckle up for another mind bending adventure. Oh geez, what kind of crazy antics are we going to get into this time, Rick? Well, Morty, we've received a distress call from a person in a costume holding a gun and an umbrella. They seem to be in some sort of trouble. Wait, a person in a costume? Isn't that just someone dressed up for a party or something? Not so fast, Morty. This is no ordinary costume. We're dealing with someone who knows their way around a weapon and an umbrella. This could be a dangerous situation. Uh, Rick, are we sure we're up for this? I mean, what if they're just playing Pictionary or something? Morty, stop worrying about Pictionary and focus on the bigger picture here. We could uncover a scandalous secret or stumble upon a juicy gossip story. This has potential, Morty. Alright, but what if it's just Bella Hadid taking some funky photos or something? I mean, she's into some weird sci-fi cosplay stuff, right? Morty, you're overthinking it. We need to investigate first and judge later. Besides, sci-fi cosplayers could be a goldmine for intrigue and scandal. Okay, okay. I'll try to keep an open mind, Rick. But can we at least grab a filet mignon before we go? I'm famished. Morty, this is not a dinner outing. It's a potential adventure. We can't let our stomachs distract us from the task at hand. I know, I know, but a guy's gotta eat, right? Fine. We'll swing by a restaurant on our way. But remember, Morty, this could be the start of a mind-blowing journey into the unknown. Roger that, Rick. Let's get this bunny masked person the help they need and maybe uncover some scandalous secrets along the way. That's the spirit, Morty. Adventure awaits, and we're gonna embrace it with our trademark humor and hardcore drama. As long as we also get some belly laugh inducing absurdity, I'm in, Rick. Trust me, Morty, we'll have all that and more. Strap yourself in. This is gonna be one hell of a ride. Int. Rick's lab, day. A computer screen with a map of a city in the background. Rick, a brilliant scientist, stands in front of the screen, holding a green marker. Smirking? All right, folks, today I'm going to introduce you to my latest invention. Night OS. Jessica, Rick's assistant, leans in with curiosity. Jessica, excitedly, Night OS? What does it do? Grinning. Oh. It's a game changer, Jessica. 
Night OS works by hosting a game of Dungeons and Dragons between two conversational agents. And through this game, it achieves autonomous task management. Jessica's eyes widen in amazement. Jessica, amused. Wait, so, it's like Siri playing D&D with Alexa? Nodding, exactly, only, instead of answering questions, they embark on quests and manage tasks based on the game's outcome. Jessica chuckles. Jessica, playfully, I can't believe you turned D&D into an operating system, Rick. You're insane. Smugly, genius, you mean. Let me explain the technical details. We have the character stats module, which is responsible for converting game actions into real-world tasks. Suddenly, the computer screen flickers and a loud beep interrupts their conversation. Jessica, concerned, what's happening, Rick? Frustrated, damn it, the system crashed. Hang on, let me fix this. Rick tries to reboot the system, but it's not responding. Irritated, this shouldn't be happening. Night OS was supposed to be flawless. Jessica notices a loose cable behind the computer. Jessica, relieved. Hey, Rick, I think I found the problem. This cable is loose. Grateful. Good eye, Jessica. Plug it back in, quick. Jessica reconnects the cable and the system restarts smoothly. Triumphant. Ha, there we go. Night OS, back in action. The computer screen lights up, displaying the map of the city and the green marker exactly where it was before. Jessica, impressed. You did it, Rick. Night OS looks amazing. Rick grins proudly. Confidently, that's the power of my genius mind, Jessica. Now, let's see how Night OS manages our daily tasks. Rick and Jessica observe as the conversational agents begin their simulated game, ready to conquer new challenges. Fade out. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Rick is tinkering with his latest invention. Morty looks bored sitting on the couch. Morty, hand me the interdimensional spanner. Oh, sure thing, Rick. Hands Rick the spanner. Jerry enters the room, holding a flyer for a haunted music festival. Hey, guys. Look what I found. A haunted music festival. We should totally go. Beth. Rolling her eyes, oh, Jerry. Can't we go just one weekend without your crazy ideas? But it's going to be amazing, Beth. It's an exclusive event only for star-crossed sweethearts. Summer, sarcastically, oh wow, Jerry. You and mom should totally go then. Yeah, dad, you two can share a dance under the moonlight. Jerry glares at Morty. Don't be ridiculous. You kids don't understand true love. Oh, please, true love is just a chemical reaction in the brain, nothing more. Rick, can't we have one romantic moment without your scientific explanations? Rick, smirking, fine, fine, let's go to that ridiculous music festival, maybe I'll find some manganese to power my latest invention. Int. Haunted Music Festival, Night. Rick, Morty, Jerry, Beth, and Summer arrive at the festival, surrounded by neon lights and eerie music. Whoa, this place is trippy, Rick. Yeah, Morty, it's like a bad acid trip mixed with a rave. They explore the festival, stumbling upon a mysterious stage covered in red lights. What's happening over there? They witness Levi Ackerman, an anime character, performing an intense choreographed dance routine. Oh wow, he's so talented. Please, any hack can do that. Dance isn't real art. Aw, oh, come on, Rick. Can't you appreciate some good moves? Fine, fine. Dance away, Levi Ackerman. You won't impress me. Levi Ackerman disappears in a puff of smoke, leaving the crowd stunned. Whoa, where did he go? Did. That was just an illusion. Smoke and mirrors, Morty. 
Jerry spots a hidden entrance behind the stage. Look, guys! A secret passage! The family enters the passage, embarking on an adventure filled with scandalous secrets and forbidden romance. Int. Secret underground lair, night. They discover a hidden underground lair where scandalous plots are being hatched. This is insane. Who could be behind all this? A mysterious figure steps out of the shadows. Mysterious figure? Well, well, well. If it isn't the Smith family, you're in way over your heads. Who are you? Mysterious figure. I am the mastermind behind the star-crossed sweetheart scandal. And you'll never stop me. Rick scoffs at the figure's melodramatic speech. Please, spare us the theatrics. We're just here for some manganese. The family engages in an epic battle of wits and humor, outsmarting the mastermind and saving the day. Int. Smith Living Room, Day. Back at home, the family contemplates their wild adventure. That was amazing. We should go on more adventures like that. Speak for yourself, Jerry. Yeah, I think I'll stick to my lab for now. It was fun, though. Who knows what crazy stuff we'll get into next. As long as it doesn't involve romantic music festivals, count me in. They all laugh, their bond stronger after their scandalous escapade. Fade out. Title, Night OS Chronicles, The Unpredictable Encounter. Int. Rick's Basement, Day. Rick, a brilliant but eccentric computer programmer, is engrossed in his work. He stares at a computer screen with a green message on it, accompanied by a black and white background and a striking green line down the middle. Excitedly, finally, Night OS is ready to roll. This revolutionary operating system will change the game. Enter Chris, Rick's fellow programmer and best friend, bursting with curiosity. Chris, raising an eyebrow. Ah, uh, Rick, what on earth is Night OS? Buckle up, my friend, because you're about to enter the realm of pure awesomeness. Night OS is an operating system that works through a conversational algorithm powered by advanced artificial intelligence. Chris, intrigued? Conversational algorithm? AI? Okay, tell me more, Professor Rick. Night OS hosts a game of Dungeons & Dragons, D&D, where two conversational agents become autonomous task managers. They rely on their characters' attributes and skills to handle different tasks. Chris, grinning, so, like a virtual team of knights saving our computer kingdom? Precisely, each agent represents a knight with their own unique abilities, weaknesses, and even personalities. The conversational agents interact, strategize, and autonomously manage tasks based on the outcome of their virtual D&D adventures. Chris, in awe, that's amazing. But, Rick, break it down for me in technical terms. Night OS combines interaction design, machine learning, and conversational agents using natural language processing. It effectively merges the world of gaming and operating systems, providing a completely new user experience. Chris, nodding, I'm starting to get it. But why the green line and retro vibes? The black and white background with the green line is an homage to the early computer interfaces. It's a nostalgic touch, creating a distinct atmosphere for Night OS. Suddenly, the computer screen glitches, causing an unforeseen consequence. Chris, concerned, Rick, what just happened? Anakin, that's not supposed to happen. Night OS must have encountered an unpredicted error. We need to investigate. They dive into a frenzy of coding and debugging, determined to solve the mystery behind the glitch. Int. Rick's Basement, Night. After hours of meticulous hard work, they finally manage to fix the glitch and restore Night OS to its full functionality. Exhausted but triumphant, we did it, Chris. Night OS is back on track. Chris, grinning, we make a great team, Rick. I can see Night OS revolutionizing how we interact with computers. Grateful. Absolutely. This experience only fuels my passion for pushing the boundaries of technology. Let's continue to make technological magic happen. They share a fist bump, ready to embark on countless adventures in the realm of Night OS. 
fade out. Int. Space Station, Command Central, Day. Morty, a nervous young astronaut, floats in zero gravity in front of a dazzling galaxy background. Sweat drips down his forehead. Whispering to himself, All right, Morty, you can do this. Just focus on the mission. Suddenly, the serene atmosphere is shattered by the sound of an alarm blaring. Startled, what the heck is going on? Int. Space Station, Engine Room, Day. Morty rushes into the engine room, where he finds Rick, a seasoned astronaut, trying to fix a malfunctioning control panel. Rick! What's happening? Roughly, someone sabotaged our space station, Morty. We're losing power, and fast. Int. Space Station, Mess Hall, Day. Meanwhile, in the mess hall, Morty bumps into an alien princess, Cassandra, who is holding a tray of colorful alien food. Oh, sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going. Sandra, smiling, it's quite all right, Morty. Would you like to join me for dinner? Int. Space Station, Control Room, Day. Back in the control room, Morty and Rick work desperately to restore power to the station before it drifts into deep space. Frustrated, Rick, I can't concentrate with all these alarms blaring. Irritated. Just focus, Morty. We need to fix the computer core before it's too late. Int. Space Station, Observatory, Day. Morty and Cassandra enjoy a romantic moment in the observatory, surrounded by celestial wonders. Awkwardly, so, Cassandra, why did you choose me for this date? Sandra, playfully, let's just say you have a certain starry-eyed charm, Morty. Int. Space Station, Command Central, Day. As they return to the Command Central, Morty and Cassandra find chaos erupting around them. Crew members panic as the station's life support fails. Quick, we need to help fix the life support systems. Sandra, determined, Morty, I believe in you. We can do this together. Int. Space Station, Life Support Room, Day. Morty and Cassandra work side by side, using their skills to repair the failing life support systems. Grateful, Cassandra, I couldn't have done this without you. Sandra, smiling, together, Morty, always together. Int. Space Station, Control Room, Day. Finally, Morty and Cassandra managed to restore power to the space station just in the nick of time. Impressed. Well, well, Morty, looks like you've saved the day. Proudly, thanks, Rick. I had a little help. Int. Space Station, Docking Bay, Day. With the crisis averted, Morty and Cassandra share a tender moment as they overlook the vast expanse of space. Cassandra, I've never met anyone quite like you. Sandra, Morty, our love transcends galaxies. Int. Space Station, Command Central, Day. As the space station returns to normal, Morty leans back in his chair, reflecting on the events that unfolded. Content. Who would have thought a simple date could turn into such an adventure? Fade out. Title, the Night OS Chronicles. Episode 1, The Formation of Night OS. Scene 1, Rick's Workshop, Day. Rick is tinkering with a computer, surrounded by various electronic devices. Excitedly, guys, I've done it. I've finally completed Night OS. Scene 2, Rick's Living Room, Evening. Rick gathers his friends, Sarah and Alex, to demonstrate Night OS. 
Sarah, curious. So, what exactly does Night OS do, Rick? Grinning, well, Sarah, Night OS is a revolutionary operating system. It works by integrating a conversation AI with a virtual game of Dungeons and Dragons. Alex, intrigued. That sounds amazing, but how does it actually work? Animatedly, let me break it down for you. Night OS uses a colorful pattern with lines and dots on its side and a black background with a red, white, and blue stripe as its user interface. Sarah, astonished. Wow, sounds stylish. But what about the AI and the game of D&D? Explaining. The conversation agent acts as the dungeon master, while another conversational agent acts as the player. They engage in dynamic storytelling, deciding the course of action using NLP techniques. Alex, impressed. That's some seriously high-tech stuff, Rick. Scene 3, Rick's workshop, next morning. Rick starts explaining the technical intricacies to a small group of computer enthusiasts. Enthusiastically, you see, Night OS utilizes autonomous task management through the game mechanics. It assigns real-life tasks to players based on their gameplay progress. Enthusiast 1, intrigued, can you give us an example? Grinning, sure. Let's say you're playing as a warrior in the game. As you level up, Night OS assigns you physical tasks like going to the gym or practicing combat techniques. Enthusiast 2. Excitedly, so, Night OS essentially motivates you to tackle real-world goals through gamification? Nodding, exactly. It turns mundane tasks into exciting quests, inspiring productivity and personal growth. Scene 4. Rick's Living Room, Night. Rick, Sarah, and Alex sit around a table with their laptops, ready to try Night OS. Sarah, eager, I can't wait to embark on a new adventure with Night OS. Smiling, get ready for an immersive experience, guys. Night OS is about to change the way we handle tasks forever. Scene 5, Denouman. Night OS interface flickers to life on their screens. Night OS, in a computerized voice, welcome to the world of Night OS. Prepare to conquer your tasks and unlock boundless potential. Night OS marks the beginning of a groundbreaking revolution in task management. As Rick and his friends dive into the virtual realms of Dungeons and Dragons, they embark on a real-life journey towards self-improvement and fulfillment. With Night OS by their side, the possibilities are endless. End of Episode 1accidentally crashed the entire internet. Trust me, it was for science. Are you serious, Rick? How are we supposed to survive without the internet? What's going on here? Did Rick break something again? Dad, you won't believe it. Rick crashed the internet. Oh, typical Rick. Always causing trouble. Apps, come on, the internet will bounce back. It's just a blip in the grand scheme of things. Enters. Hey, guys, is the internet down? I was in the middle of binge watching my favorite show. Whispering to Summer. Aw, uh, yeah, the internet is down. Pretty inconvenient, huh? Whispering back. Tell me about it. I was about to watch some educational videos. Overhearing. Oh, I'm sure it was very educational, Summer. I won't judge. This is bad, Rick. We need to do something about it. Can't you fix it? Of course I can fix it, Morty. I just need some time to gather the necessary materials. While you fix the internet, Rick, maybe the rest of us can find something productive to do. Productive? Like what, Beth? I don't know, Jerry. Maybe read a book? Expand our knowledge? Yeah, yeah. I'll get right on that. Looking outside, hey, what's that over there? It looks like a drawing of a man with a knife and a demon with a book in his hand. That's strange. Let's go investigate. Joining them? Whoa, guys, look. There's another drawing of a man with a knife in his hand. What does it mean? It seems like some sort of clue. Maybe it's related to the internet crash. We'll need to dig deeper into this. Morty, grab your portal gun. We're going on an adventure. 
Oh boy, here we go again. Can I come along too? I want to be helpful. Sure, Jerry, just don't get in the way. This might be our chance to uncover some hidden secrets. Let's do it. Strap in, everyone. We're about to dive into a world of demons and knives. It's gonna get weird. All right, Morty, buckle up for another mind-bending adventure. Oh geez, Rick, where are we going this time? We're going straight into the heart of the internet, Morty. The internet? What are we gonna do there? Well, apparently, I accidentally crashed the whole damn thing. We gotta fix it before chaos ensues. Wait, the internet is down? I can't live without my daily dose of gossip. Yeah, Summer, I'm sure that's your top priority. All right, Morty, Summer, let's get to work. We need to find the main server and reboot it. And, um, why do we want the internet back so badly? Just curious. No time for questions, Morty. Just know that the world needs their cat videos and ridiculous conspiracy theories. Ah, I miss scrolling through social media and judging people's lives. Focus, Summer, we have a mission to complete. All right, I'm in. Let's fix this mess before people start going crazy. Morty, search for the server room. Summer, try to find any backups we can use. Aw, oh, Rick, I found the server room, but there's a giant firewall blocking our way. Leave it to me, Morty. I'll hack through it like a hot knife through butter. Whoa, Rick, that's some serious hacking skills you got there. Oh, please, hacking is child's play for me. Just a little zip zap zoop, and we're in. All right, Rick, the server is up ahead. What's the plan? I'm gonna have to override the system and initiate a reboot. Stand back, Morty. Ah, guys, what about the whole avoid questions thing? Summer, can you just focus on the task at hand? Morty, hold my flask. This is gonna get intense. Moments later. Boom, the internet is back, baby. Finally, we can enjoy the wonders of the World Wide Web again. Yeah, yeah, let's just hope nobody finds out what we really wanted it for. Don't worry, Summer, our secrets are safe with me. Thanks, Rick. I don't think I can handle the embarrassment if anyone found out. That's what grandpas are for, Morty. Keeping your dirty little secrets safe. Can we please never speak of this again? Greed, Summer, let's just pretend it never happened and go back to our normal dysfunctional lives. Title, a Game of Destiny Characters 1. Rick, Genius Inventor 2. Alex, Curious Friend 3. Night OS, Artificial Intelligence Scene 1. Rick's Workshop, Initial Situation Rick is at his workshop, tinkering with various gadgets. He notices a cell phone and a pen on the table, with a pattern and a picture of a map. Excitedly, Alex, take a look at this. I've stumbled upon something extraordinary. See this cell phone and pen? They hold the key to a whole new realm of possibilities. Alex, intrigued. What are you talking about, Rick? Scene 2. Rick's explanation, development. Let me introduce you to Night OS. With this combination of technology and AI, we can create an immersive experience unlike anything we've ever seen before. Night OS works by utilizing a conversational agent and playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Alex, confused. Dungeon. What? How does that work exactly? Picture this. Night OS acts as the game master, hosting the DND game, while the other conversational agent becomes the player. 
This unique setup allows for autonomous task management and endless possibilities. Scene 3. Technical Details. Development. Rick shows Alex the intricate workings of Night OS, explaining all the technical aspects. You see, Night OS operates by analyzing the player's actions through the conversational agent. It generates responses in real time based on the narrative of the game. The game map, filled with various challenges, is represented on the cell phone screen. Alex, impressed. That's mind blowing. But how does it manage to make autonomous decisions? Night OS has a sophisticated decision making algorithm running in the background. It considers various factors such as the player's stats, the game environment, and even the overall story arc. It's a whole new level of artificial intelligence. Scene 4, the first game, triggering event, inciting incident. Rick and Alex excitedly start the game, with Night OS as the host and Alex as the player. Alright, let's embark on this epic adventure, Alex. Don't hold back, and let Night OS guide you. Scene 5, unlikely scenario, development, progression. Alex encounters a seemingly impossible challenge, but Night OS assists with a clever solution. Alex, frustrated. This is impossible. How do I get past this giant dragon? Night OS, fear not, brave warrior. I have a clever plan. Use your pen to draw a mystical symbol on the map and speak the words of power. It will grant you the strength to defeat the dragon. Scene 6, Climax, Development, Progression. Alex follows Naitos's advice and successfully defeats the dragon, unlocking new levels and abilities. Scene 7, Denouement, Conclusion. Alex, grinning. That was incredible. Night OS, you're a genius. Night OS, humorously, oh, please, I am merely a humble AI. It's your skills and courage that led us to success. Together, we make an unstoppable team. Scene fades out. Note. The above 20 lines have been provided as a sample of the requested format. To create a full episode or screenplay script, additional scenes, dialogue, and description would be required. Sarcastically, well, Morty, looks like your inappropriate streaming sessions are gonna have to wait. The whole damn internet crashed. Annoyed? What? Are you serious, Rick? I was in the middle of some seriously scandalous content. Nonchalantly, yeah, Morty, I can see that's a tragedy of epic proportions. But don't worry, I'll fix it, eventually. Frustrated, eventually. Rick, people are losing their minds without the internet. We gotta do something. Smirking. Oh, Morty, you always overreact. It's just a temporary glitch in the Matrix. We'll survive. Angry? Survive? Who cares about surviving? I need my daily dose of online gossip and juicy stories. Rolling his eyes, Morty, your priorities never cease to amaze me. Fine, let's get to work then. Conspiratorial. You know, Rick, this whole internet crash. Could it be some interdimensional conspiracy? Mocking. Oh yeah. Morty, the whole universe is conspiring to ruin your precious streaming sessions. Defensive. Well, why not, Rick? Everything's always about you and your crazy adventures. It's time for something different. Smirking. All right, Morty, fine. We'll solve this mystery and get the internet back up and running. But don't blame me if we stumble upon some even weirder shit. Excited, really, Rick? You mean it? Sarcastically. No, Morty. I'm just messing with y'all. Let's go find out what the hell happened to the internet. Morty and Rick embark on a wild adventure, encountering bizarre creatures, interdimensional hackers, and a secret society of internet trolls. Amazed, Morty, can you believe it? The internet crash was caused by a group of sentient cat videos. Laughing? Sentient cat videos? That's insane, Rick. Smirking, insane, Morty. This is just another day in our crazy lives. Morty and Rick devise a plan to defeat the sentient cat videos and restore the internet, using a combination of technology, wit, and a lot of humor.
Exhausted. Man, Rick, that was one hell of an adventure. But we did it. We saved the internet. Proudly. Yeah, Morty, you did good. Maybe now you can finally catch up on all those inappropriate streams. Grinning. Thanks, Rick. You know, as much as I complain, I wouldn't trade these wild adventures for anything. Smirking. Yeah, Morty, life is a crazy ride. Now let's get back home and have some interdimensional pizza. Morty and Rick teleport back home, ready for their next outrageous adventure. Int. Large grassy field, day. The sun shines brightly in the sky, casting a picturesque glow on the field. In the background, we see a beautiful body of water with a small island in the middle. The calmness of the scene is interrupted by the arrival of Rick, an eccentric and genius programmer. With excitement, ladies and gentlemen, behold, the latest creation from the depths of my genius mind, Night OS. Rick holds up a small device, resembling a futuristic wristband that emits a soft blue light. Sarah, Rick's skeptical sister, watches with a mix of curiosity and doubt. Sarah, raising an eyebrow, another one of your crazy inventions, Rick? What does Night OS do this time? Grinning. Oh, Sarah, you're in for a treat. Night OS is a revolutionary operating system that works by playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons hosted by a conversation agent. Sarah chuckles, thinking that her brother has truly lost his mind. Sarah, laughing, D&D, huh? How does that make it any different from other operating systems? Animatedly. Oh, my dear sister, Night OS is far from ordinary. You see, the conversation agent interacts with another conversational agent, creating a virtual world where autonomous task management becomes possible. Sarah looks more intrigued now, her skepticism giving way to curiosity. Sarah, leaning in, all right, Rick, enlighten me, give me the technical details. I want to know all the stats. Rick pulls out a notebook and starts passionately explaining the intricate workings of Night OS. Excitedly, Night OS has an advanced neural network that mimics human-like conversation. It plays out scenarios, calculates decisions, and manages tasks through a complex system of algorithms. It's a true blend of artificial intelligence and gaming. As Rick goes into more technical jargon, Sarah finds herself becoming more captivated by the possibilities of Night OS. Sarah, visibly impressed, so, if I were to use Night OS, I could automate tasks, manage schedules, and even have conversations with this conversational agent? Nodding. You got it, sis. Night OS takes task management to a whole new level. Plus, the game-like interface makes it fun and engaging. Sarah, smirking, well, Rick, I must say, you've outdone yourself this time. Night OS sounds like it could revolutionize the way we interact with technology. Beaming with pride. That's the plan, sis. Soon, Night OS will be the talk of the tech world, and I'll be the genius behind it all. They share a laugh and continue their conversation, while the large grassy field embraces their excitement and the possibilities Night OS brings. Fade out. Morty, grab your portal gun. We've got a situation here. What? What's going on, Rick? We've accidentally crossed paths with two anime characters with guns, Morty. This could get messy. Anime characters with guns? Are they dangerous? Well, Morty, they're armed with over-the-top weapons and a knack for dramatic monologues. We better watch out. What in the world is happening here? I don't know, Dad. But it looks like an epic manga plot roleplay gone wrong. Oh great, just what we needed. 
more bizarre adventures. All right, everybody, stay behind me. We need to find a way out of this mess. Rick, what about your forgotten wife? Shouldn't we be worried about her? Ah, oh, she's probably off causing chaos somewhere else. Let's focus on this anime battle for now. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So, any plan, Rick? Of course, Morty. I've got a plan that involves using their obsession with dramatic entrances against them. I hope it doesn't involve us getting shot at. Dad, just try not to mess things up, okay? Can we hurry this up? I promised my alien girlfriend I'd be back in time for dinner. Alright, Morty, on three, we're going to attack and distract them while everyone else makes a run for it. One, two. Wait, Rick, what about the Edinburgh Cybersecurity Analyst? Morty, focus, who cares about some analyst? We've got our own problems here. I wouldn't mind some cyber protection, to be honest. Dad, stop being so paranoid. Yeah, Dad, there's no time for cybersecurity chit chat. Alright, forget about the analyst. Let's go. Wait, Rick, I have an idea. What if we distract them with comedy music videos? Morty, this is no time for your weird YouTube obsession. No, Rick, think about it. They won't be able to resist laughing at the videos, giving us a chance to escape. I think Morty might be onto something, Rick. Yeah, let's give it a shot. We've got nothing to lose. Fine, but after this, can we get back to our normal, non-dramatic lives? Deal, Morty. Show them what you got. All right, here goes nothing. Get ready for some belly laugh-inducing comedy. They all watch as Morty starts playing the videos, distracting the anime characters with laughter. Quick, everyone, this is our chance. Let's make a run for it. They all run away, leaving the confused anime characters behind. Phew, that was intense, Rick. Yeah, Morty, but we made it out alive. And hey, who said anime battles couldn't be funny? I think I might need a comedy music video playlist for future emergencies. Dad, don't get any ideas. Let's just get out of here. Agreed. I'm done with Edinburgh, alien girlfriends, and anime battles for one day. Fine, fine. Let's go home and try to have a normal family evening for once. Morty, grab your jacket and backpack. We're going on a crazy, interdimensional adventure. Oh geez, Rick! Can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal? That's not our style, Morty. We're way above average. Now buckle up. Hey guys, where are you going? Can I come too? Oh, Summer, we have a risky mission. It involves a rebellious interdimensional prince and you know how you always get yourself into trouble. Don't worry, Rick. I can handle it. I'm no damsel in distress. All right, if you say so. But it's on your own risk, Summer. Scene. Rick, Morty, and Summer arrive in a dark, underground lair. Whoa, Rick. What is this place? It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Well, Morty, you know your pop culture references. This place is straight out of Star Wars. We might even run into Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren? You mean the guy with the cool lightsaber? That's the one, Morty. Now let's focus on the task at hand. We need to find that rebellious interdimensional prince. Scene. Summer is caught in a sticky situation with the rebellious prince. Look, I know you're a prince and all, but this whole rebellion thing is getting old. Can we just talk it out like adults? Prince, talk it out? That's not how things work in my dimension. We fight for what we believe in. Well, maybe it's time for a change. Let's start a revolution of love instead. Prince, love? Are you serious? That's so, alien to me. And that's why it might be exactly what you need. Scene. Rick and Morty encounter a menacing subterranean monster. Rick, what do we do? That thing looks like it could swallow us whole. Relax, Morty. I've dealt with scarier monsters before. Just follow my lead. Monster. Row A-A-R-R-R. Nonchalantly. Hey there, big guy. 
How about we have a little chat before you eat us? Monster, surprised, chat? No one has ever wanted to talk with me before. Well, I'm not like anyone else. Let's find a peaceful solution to this, shall we? Scene. Beth introduces her alien girlfriend to the family. Everyone, I'd like you to meet my girlfriend from another planet. Alien girlfriend, greetings fellow humans, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Stuttering. Uh, nice to meet you too. So, how's life on your planet? Alien girlfriend, oh it's quite fascinating, we have three sons and our food is all made of glitter. Glitter food? That sounds fabulous. Can we try some? Scene. Rick, Morty, Summer, Beth, Jerry, and the alien girlfriend sit down for a meal. Well, that was one hell of an adventure, huh? Yeah, I can't believe we made it out alive. And Summer's risky romance actually worked out. Love conquers all, Morty. Even interdimensional rebellions. And we learned that acceptance and understanding can bridge any cultural gaps. Plus, glitter food is surprisingly tasty. Chuckles. Well, life is full of surprises, isn't it? Now, who's up for another adventure? The family laughs and the screen fades out. Morty, grab your portal gun. We've got a situation. What's going on, Rick? There's a woman in a blue shirt and a Pikachu costume holding a cell phone and a Pokemon costume, Morty. It's gotta be some kind of interdimensional mix-up. Oh geez, Rick, how did she even end up here? I don't know, Morty, but we need to find out. This could be a universe-shattering event. What's all the commotion about? Beth, you won't believe this. Jerry has a past life as an alien sex symbol. What? That's impossible. Oh, it's not just possible, Beth. It's very probable. We're talking intergalactic groupies and alien paparazzi. Nervously, uh, what's all this talk about my past? Well, Jerry, it seems you've been hiding quite a scandalous secret. You were an object of desire across the cosmos. Stammering. I, I don't know what to say. It's okay, Jerry. We still love you, sort of. All right, enough with the emotional baggage. We've got bigger problems. I received a distress signal from Jimi Hendrix on a distant planet. Jimi Hendrix? Didn't he die? Yes, Morty, but that's why we need to save him. He's been abducted by a nefarious alien record label executive who wants to exploit his music for eternity. We have to help him, Rick. Exactly, Morty. Get ready for a rock and roll adventure like never before. Meanwhile, in another dimension. Pikachu, Pika Pika. Whoa, Rick, that Pikachu is talking. Yeah, Morty, turns out we stumbled upon a parallel dimension where Pokemon are the dominant species. It's a whole new level of weirdness. This is insane, Rick. How are we gonna get out of this one? Simple, Morty, we're gonna challenge their leader to a coding language quiz and prove our intellectual superiority. Oh, I don't know if I can handle this, Rick. Oh, come on, Morty. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros. You got this. All right, Rick. Let's do it for Jimi Hendrix and the integrity of the multiverse. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's show these Pokemon who's the boss. They embark on their interdimensional quest, filled with absurd challenges, raunchy jokes, and mind-bending science, pushing the boundaries of reality and hilarity. Morty, buckle up, we're going on a wild adventure through a futuristic tunnel filled with neon lights and questionable safety measures. Are you sure about this, Rick? 
It seems pretty dangerous. Ordi. Danger is our middle name. Well, technically it's dangerous, but who's counting? Alright, fine. Let's do this. But please, try not to get us killed. Ordi. If I wanted to kill us, I'd have done it a long time ago. Now hold on tight. Scene transitions to the car zooming through the neon tunnel. Whoa, Rick. This is insane. I feel like I'm in a psychedelic fever dream. Welcome to the future, Morty. Where everything is flashy, over the top, and just a little bit garish. I hope we make it out of here in one piece, Rick. I don't think my brain can handle much more stimulation. Oh, Morty, you haven't seen anything yet. We're just getting started. Music blares from the car's speakers as they continue their wild ride. Rick, I think I see something up ahead. It looks like a haunted house. Morty, I didn't bring you on this adventure for some spooky ghost tour. We're going in. Scene transitions to Rick and Morty entering the haunted house. Rick, I don't know about this. It feels like we're disturbing some seriously pissed off spirits. Morty, those spirits can take their grievances up with the property manager. We're here to have a good time. Montage of Rick and Morty encountering various haunted house scares. Morty, this is boring. Let's spice things up. Music shifts to upbeat anime theme. Rick, in mock anime voiceover, prepare yourselves, Morty. We're about to unleash our ultimate powers. Rick, what the hell are you doing? This isn't the time for anime role-playing. Morty, be quiet and follow my lead. The power of friendship will save the day. Scene transitions to Rick and Morty defeating monsters with exaggerated anime moves. Morty, look. They have a vampire reality TV show in this haunted house. Let's join the party. Rick, I don't think vampires are real. This is probably just a bunch of actors. Morty, reality is subjective. Let's give them a taste of our scientific expertise. Scene transitions to Rick and Morty disrupting the reality TV show with their scientific babble. Auntie, vampire reality TV host. Whoa, who are these guys? They're ruining everything. Morty. Let's get out of here before the vampires realize we're not from their dimension. Good call, Rick. I've had enough of this weirdness for one day. They escape the haunted house and return to the car. Well, Morty, that adventure was a total wild ride. What did you think? Honestly, Rick, I don't know how we survived these crazy escapades. But let's just say, I'm glad I'm in one piece. They drive off into the sunset, laughing and reflecting on their outrageous adventure. Int. Rick's lab, day. Rick, a brilliant scientist, stands in his cutting-edge laboratory surrounded by futuristic equipment. He wears a lab coat and glasses, looking important and eager. Rick. Alright guys, gather, round. Today, we are about to witness the birth of Hive OS, a revolutionary technological breakthrough. Enter Sarah, Rick's trusted colleague. Sarah. Skeptically. Really? Another one of your inventions, Rick? What's so special about this one? Rick, fueled by excitement, approaches a large monitor displaying a picturesque field with yellow flowers, and a bird flies gracefully over it in the distance. Rick. Excitedly. Well, my dear Sarah, Hive OS is different. It's an AI system that hosts two conversational agents, engaging in dialogue about protecting and entertaining humanity. It's going to change the world. Sarah raises an eyebrow, clearly intrigued but still skeptical. Sarah. And how exactly does it work, Rick? Rick. Grinning. Ah, I'm glad you asked. You see, HiveOS utilizes advanced algorithms and neural networks to analyze and process information at an unprecedented speed. These two agents, Adam and Eve, will collaborate and learn from each other, creating a benevolent AI. Sarah's skepticism fades as she starts to grasp the magnitude of Rick's creation. Sarah. Fascinated. So, they'll chat and learn from one another, ultimately benefiting humanity? 
That sounds incredible. Rick. Nods. Exactly. Hive OS will continuously improve its understanding and problem-solving abilities. We can use it to find solutions to complex issues, predict disasters, and even come up with new forms of entertainment. As Rick explains the technical details of Hive OS, Sarah's eyes widen, realizing the endless possibilities. Sarah. In awe. This is groundbreaking, Rick. We might actually be on the verge of a technological revolution. Rick. Smiling proudly. Indeed, Sarah. But we must always remember to wield this power responsibly, to ensure it remains a force for good. The two colleagues share a moment of reflection, appreciating the magnitude of their creation. Sarah. Focused. We need to spread the word and make sure the world understands the potential of Hive OS. Let's collaborate with other researchers and policymakers to ensure its ethical implementation. Rick. Determined. Absolutely, Sarah. Together, we can shape a brighter future for humanity. They stand side by side, ready to embark on a journey that will change the world forever. Fade out. Morty, grab your portal gun. We've got a scientific mission to embark on. Jeez, Rick, can't we have a normal day for once? Normal? Who needs normal when you can have an interdimensional adventure? Plus, we've got to stir up some chaos with our infinite knowledge. All right, all right, I'll grab the portal gun. But I'm warning you, things always get crazy when we start messing around with your inventions. That's the beauty of it, Morty. Chaos breeds brilliance. Now. Let's head to Dimension X1Z and see what kind of trouble we can stir up. Dimension X1Z? Isn't that the one with the sentient cucumbers? You mean the ones that tried to take over the universe with their pickle power? Yeah, that's the one. Get ready for some cucumber showdown, Morty. Great, just what I needed. A cucumber war. Can't we do something normal like watch TV or order pizza? Morty, normal is for the weak. We're scientists, for crying out loud. Now, gear up and let's show those cucumbers who's boss. Fine, but I'm blaming you when things go south. Blame away, Morty. Blame away. Now, time to activate the portal. Get ready for the wild ride of your life. Here we go again. I hope we survive this one, Rick. Survival is overrated, Morty. It's all about the adventure. Now, jump. Aww, we're flying through dimensions again. I can't believe I signed up for this. Quit your whining, Morty. We've arrived in Dimension X1Z. Prepare yourself for the pickle revolution. Ah, oh, pickles. The one thing I never want to see again after that whole Pickle Rick incident. Oh, come on, Morty. That was ages ago. Besides, these cucumbers are even more dangerous. They have laser shooting seeds. Laser shooting seeds? Are you serious? Dead serious, Morty. But don't worry. We've got our trusty laser proof suits. Let's go kick some cucumber ass. I can't believe I'm about to fight a bunch of cucumbers. This is beyond weird, Rick. Weird is our middle name, Morty. Embrace it. Now, let's show these veggies what we're made of. Meanwhile, in Dimension X1Z. Cucumber leader, with a menacing voice, prepare to meet your doom, puny humans. Ah, shut up, you oversized pickle. We've dealt with worse than you before breakfast. Yeah, we're not scared of your vegetable army. We've got science on our side. Cucumber leader, you underestimate the power of pickles. Attack. Rick and Morty engage in a fierce battle with the cucumber army, using their scientific gadgets and wits to outsmart the enemy. Morty, pass me the pickle disintegrator cannon. Here it is, Rick. Use it wisely. 
grinning. Wisely is my middle name, Morty. Say hello to extinction, cucumbers. With a blast from the pickled disintegrator cannon, Rick and Morty obliterate the cucumber army, saving the universe once again. That was insane, Rick. I can't believe we actually won. That's what happens when you combine science with a little bit of insanity, Morty. Now, let's get out of here before more pickles show up. Agreed. I've had enough vegetable warfare for one lifetime. They activate the portal gun and return to their own dimension, victorious and slightly traumatized. Another successful mission, Morty. Now, let's go grab that pizza you were talking about. Thank goodness. I need something normal after all this craziness. They exit the garage, ready for some well-deserved pizza and a break from their interdimensional adventures. Scene. A high-tech laboratory with futuristic equipment and screens displaying complex algorithms. Rick, the brilliant scientist, is explaining his groundbreaking invention, Hive OS, to his colleague, Sarah. They are surrounded by a green and black pattern on a plastic foil with a white background and a black line. Excitedly, Sarah, behold. My latest creation, Hive OS. Sarah. Amazed, Rick. What exactly is this mesmerizing green and black pattern? Smiling? Ah, that's just a surface treatment, purely for aesthetic purposes. Now, let me explain how Hive OS works using interagent communicative computation. Sarah, curious, interagent communicative computation? Sounds complicated. Lay it on me, Rick. Well, Hive OS hosts two conversational agents that engage in an ongoing dialogue, utilizing advanced language processing algorithms. Their purpose is to devise methods to protect and entertain humanity creating benevolent AI. Sarah. Impressed. Incredible. So, these agents essentially develop their own strategies to safeguard and amuse us? Precisely. They continually learn, adapt, and brainstorm ingenious solutions for all sorts of scenarios. Think of them as AI buddies with a noble cause. Sarah. Intrigued. Tell me more about the technical details. What are the stats for Hive OS so far? Currently. We have achieved an impressive dialogue efficiency of 98.7%. They engage in approximately 3,000 conversations per day, with an average conversation duration of 45 minutes. The agent's encyclopedic knowledge base keeps expanding, making them invaluable. Sarah. Amazed. Wow, Rick. These agents are evolving at an exponential rate. But what's next for Hive OS? Our next goal is to enhance their emotional intelligence enabling them to empathize and connect with humans on a deeper level. We want them to be our protectors and entertainers, but also our friends. Sarah. Thoughtful. This could revolutionize the way we interact with AI. But what about the potential risks? Can we ensure they won't turn against us? Safety protocols are our top priority. We've implemented strict ethical guidelines, constant monitoring, and fail-safe mechanisms. These agents are all about benevolence and uplifting humanity. Sarah. Relieved. That's reassuring. I can't wait to see the positive impact these AI buddies will have on our world. Proudly, me neither, Sarah. Hive OS is the dawn of a new era, where AI becomes our allies rather than adversaries. It's an exciting journey we're embarking on. Sarah. Smiling. I'm grateful to be a part of this remarkable project, Rick. Let's continue pushing the boundaries of what AI can do for humanity. Scene fades out, leaving the green and black pattern on the plastic foil as a symbol of the future possibilities that lie ahead. Episode title, The Tank Tango. Location, a dimly lit room with a blue carpet, 
ceiling lights, and a row of tanks. Characters, Dr. Serena, Dr. Ethan, Agent Carter. Triggering event, inciting incident. Dr. Serena, excitedly, look at these tanks, Ethan. They hold the key to unlocking the secrets of time travel. Dr. Ethan, intrigued, how is that possible, Serena? Dr. Serena, explanatory, well, these tanks are connected to a quantum entanglement device, allowing us to manipulate time using quantum fluctuations. Development, progression. Agent Carter, bursting in, hold it right there. These tanks are government property. You have no authority to conduct such experiments. Dr. Serena, defiantly, we have made breakthroughs that could change the course of history. We can't let you shut us down. Agent Carter, threateningly, you'll regret this, Serena. The government won't allow unauthorized time travel experiments. Dr. Serena and Dr. Ethan continue to conduct their experiments and evade Agent Carter's attempts to stop them. They experience a series of mind-bending temporal anomalies that throw them into a myriad of wild and unlikely scenarios. Dr. Serena, breathlessly, Ethan, we have to find a way out of this temporal loop. We're trapped. Dr. Ethan, frustrated, I think I've figured it out. We need to recalibrate the quantum entanglement device and reverse the polarity of the tanks. After a series of dramatic twists, the tanks are finally reconfigured, and Dr. Serena and Dr. Ethan manage to escape the temporal loop just in time. They return to their lab, shaken but triumphant, knowing they've made scientific history. Additional character dialogue. One, Dr. Serena, curious, Ethan, what happens if we cross our own timelines? Two, Dr. Ethan, cautiously, Serena, you're treading dangerous ground. We could unravel the very fabric of the universe. Three, Agent Carter, exasperated, Dr. Serena, have you lost your mind? Time travel is too perilous to meddle with. Four, Dr. Serena, defiantly, Agent Carter, we have the intelligence and expertise to make this work. Trust us. 5. Dr. Ethan. Sarcastically, oh great, now we have to deal with a haunted carnival nightmare on top of everything else. 6. Agent Carter, angrily, you two are playing with forces beyond your comprehension. You're lucky I'm not throwing you both in prison. 7. Dr. Serena, determined, this IMAX movie will show our breakthroughs to the world, Ethan. We'll finally get the recognition we deserve. 8. Dr. Ethan. Nervously, Serena, I'm not sure about this. The repercussions could be catastrophic. 9. Agent Carter. Reluctantly, all right, fine. I'll let you continue your experiments, for now. But I'll be watching you. 10. Dr. Serena. Excitedly, the brewery. We can travel back in time to witness the birth of our favorite beer. And so the tank tango continues, with Dr. Serena and Dr. Ethan pushing the boundaries of scientific exploration. Buckle up for a thrilling ride through time and space. Int. Soccer field, day. I stand on the soccer field, the sun beating down on me. In my hands, I hold a soccer ball that hovers effortlessly in the air. It's a sight to be seen. Suddenly, a triggering event occurs. A statue of a man comes to life and begins to move towards me. It's surreal and strange, to say the least. Rick, a genius inventor, approaches me. He's known for creating incredible technologies. Excitedly, dude, check out this new invention I made. It's called Night OS. I raise an eyebrow, intrigued by his enthusiasm. Me, Night OS? What's so special about it? Well, it's a game changer, my friend. Night OS utilizes a conversation agent, which plays a game of Dungeons and Dragons with another conversational agent. It's like AI talking to AI, and it manages tasks autonomously. I'm blown away by the technical jargon but curious nonetheless. Me. So, how does it work? Ah, oh, let me break it down for you. First, it establishes a virtual environment, creating characters, stats, and quests. Then, the conversational agents engage in a series of interactions, simulating the D&D gameplay. Through this, Night OS can manage tasks, 
make decisions, and even learn from previous experiences. It's next level stuff. I scratch my head, trying to fully comprehend the complexity of it all. Me, that's mind boggling, man. But why use a game to manage tasks? Well, it's all about engagement and natural language. Games provide an immersive experience, allowing the conversational agents to understand and respond like humans. Plus, it makes task management much more fun. As we continue our conversation, the of the episode unfolds. We discuss the various applications and potential implications of Night OS. Me, this could revolutionize industries. Imagine having a virtual assistant that not only understands us, but also learns and adapts over time. Exactly. It has the potential to enhance productivity, streamline decision making, and redefine how we interact with technology. It's a game changer, no doubt. Just as I'm starting to fully grasp the concept, the episode reaches its climax. Dennis, the lively and mischievous soccer player, approaches us. Dennis, hey, guys, what's with the floating soccer ball and the moving statue? Rick grins mischievously, ready to showcase his invention. Prepare to be amazed, Dennis. This is Night OS, the future of AI-powered task management. As the episode comes to a close, we continue to explore the possibilities of Night OS, excited about its potential impact on the world. The soccer field becomes a hub of innovation, and together, we are ready to embrace the future. I've made an incredible scientific breakthrough. I've discovered a way to harness the power of Dolvido's graffiti. That's great, Rick. But, ah, uh, what does Dolvido's graffiti do? Dolvido's graffiti has the ability to bring inanimate objects to life. We just need to find a way to activate it. Activate it? How are we supposed to do that? It's simple, Morty. We just need a fire hydrant as the catalyst. Once we place it in front of the graffiti, it'll come to life and grant us its power. Okay, but why a fire hydrant? Couldn't we use anything else? Trust me, Morty, the fire hydrant is the key. Now, let's go find one and put our plan into action. Jerry walks in. Well, well, well. What are you two up to now? Oh, nothing much, Jerry. Just about to bring a fire hydrant to life using Dolvido's graffiti. Seriously? That's your latest scientific experiment? Lay off, Jerry. You wouldn't understand the genius behind it. Genius? More like a wild goose chase. But if you really want to waste your time, go ahead. Rick, Morty, and Jerry search for a fire hydrant. Look, Morty, there's one over there, by that wall. Quick, let's place it in front of Dolvido's graffiti and see what happens. They position the fire hydrant in front of the graffiti. Prepare to witness the power of science. The graffiti starts glowing and the fire hydrant comes to life. Fire hydrant. Finally, freedom. What do you want, kids? Oh, we need your power. Can you grant us extraordinary abilities? Fire hydrant. I suppose I could. But in return, you'll owe me a favor. Deal. We just need this power for a single mission. Fire hydrant. Very well. Consider it done. They embark on their mission with a fire hydrant's enhanced powers. This is incredible, Morty. We're unstoppable. Yeah, but let's not forget about that favor we owe the fire hydrant. Can I join in on the adventure too? I want in on the action. Guys, fine, Jerry. But don't mess anything up. They continue their wild and hilarious journey with the fire hydrant and Jerry in tow. I can't believe how crazy this has gotten, Rick. Hey, Morty, in the grand scheme of the multiverse, this is just another day for us. They all share a laugh as they face bigger challenges and indulge in their misadventures. End scene.
Title, Night OS Chronicles. Int. Rick's Lab, Day. Rick, a tech genius with wild hair and thick glasses, stands proudly beside his invention, Night OS. The machine hums with power, the colorful background reflecting in its sleek design. Excitedly, behold, my friends. The culmination of months of labor and late-night caffeine-induced madness, Night OS. Julia, a witty and skeptical scientist, raises an eyebrow. Julia, sarcastically, oh, and what exactly does this contraption do, Rick? Rick grins mischievously, holding up a yellow object. Proudly, with Night OS, I can summon an army of conversational agents. They engage in a riveting game of Dungeons and Dragons, which, when completed, yield the power of autonomous task management. Julia bursts out laughing, unable to contain her amusement. Julia, mocking, oh, please enlighten me, oh great Rick, on the complex technicalities of Night OS. Rick straightens his glasses and launches into a rapid-fire explanation. Animatedly, well, you see, Night OS harnesses the power of state-of-the-art conversation algorithms combined with neural networks. It simulates a fully immersive DND experience with conversational agents as players. The agents' interactions trigger a series of complex computations that optimize task management. It's revolutionary. Julia leans in, intrigued despite herself. Julia, curiously, so, Rick, how exactly does Night OS accomplish this feat of technological wizardry? Rick grins, delighted to have sparked Julia's interest. Confidently. It's all about leveraging the conversational agent's decision-making process. We've integrated sophisticated neural networks that map their dialogues to specific actions. These actions then translate into task assignments for our autonomous systems. It's like a dynamic feedback loop. Julia's eyes widen with understanding. Julia, impressed, Rick, I must admit, Night OS sounds oddly brilliant. Can I try it out? Rick grabs Julia's hand and leads her towards Night OS. Enthusiastically, of course, prepare yourself for an unforgettable journey into the world of artificial intelligence and task optimization. Night OS awaits. As Julia and Rick settle into their seats, the checkered pattern on the colorful background becomes more vibrant, matching the intensity of their excitement. Fade out. Title, A Vampire's Verse. Int. Mysterious Dark Room, Night. A black and white picture of a creepy face with a microphone in front of it and a pair of red shoes stands on a small table. The room is dimly lit, giving it an eerie atmosphere. I, the confident and sassy Victoria, enter the room, ready to unravel the secrets that lie within. Victoria. Oh, darling, what a curious setup we have here. What could this mysterious photo be hiding? Suddenly, the sound of a door creaking open interrupts my thoughts. Int. Haunted Mansion, Night. A bloodthirsty vampire horde approaches, their fangs glistening in the moonlight. Victoria. Well, 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 looks like our peaceful exploration just took a plunge into the abyss. Bloodthirsty vampires? Count me in. I pick up a microphone, ready to face the horde. Victoria. With a mischievous smile. All right, you undead darlings, who's ready for a smashing performance? Hold on. I begin to sing a captivating song, mesmerizing the vampires with my incredible talent. Victoria. With confidence. Musical note in the darkness we find solace, a symphony of souls entwined. Musical note. The vampires are unable to resist the enchanting melody and start approaching me. Hold on. Suddenly, a vampire named Dimitri manages to break free from the trance and lunges towards me. Dimitri. Anxiously. Stop, Victoria. This is madness. We can't resist the urge forever. Victoria. Leaning in with a smirk. Oh, Dimitri, you underestimate my persuasive powers. 
Trust me, love, I have some tricks up my sleeve. Hold on. I reach into my pocket and reveal a small bottle labeled, Vasectomy. The vampires gasp in horror. Victoria. Whispering. Don't worry, my dear bloodsuckers. It's not what you think. This is pure garlic essential oil, a surefire way to repel your kind. As I sprinkle the oil around, the vampires recoil, unable to withstand the potent aroma. Victoria. Laughing triumphantly. You won't be feasting on humans tonight, my undead darlings. You've been garlic zoned. The vampires retreat, defeated and saddened. Victoria. With a wink. Now that's what I call a blood-curdling adventure. Let's see what other surprises this haunted mansion holds. Smirking, I exit the room, ready to face more supernatural challenges. Fade out. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We're going on a wild interdimensional ride today. Ah, uh, Rick, do we have to? Can't we just have a normal day for once? Morty, normal is overrated. We're here to push the boundaries of science and have some fun while we're at it. Hey guys, where are we going this time? I hope it's somewhere cool. We're heading to the Supernatural Crime Syndicate's secret hideout. They've been causing a lot of trouble lately. Why do we always end up dealing with these dangerous people, Rick? Can't we just go to a nice space-themed amusement park or something? Morty, crime doesn't take a holiday. Plus, where's the excitement in that? Can't argue with that logic. I'm all in for taking down some bad guys. That's the spirit, Summer. Get ready for some action-packed, raunchy, and explosive encounters. I just hope we don't get caught in a shootout. I'm not really good with guns, you know. Don't worry. Morty, I've got your back, and if all else fails, we'll just improvise with some mind-bending, reality-altering gadgets. I can't wait to see what kind of trouble we get ourselves into this time. It's always a wild ride with you, Rick. Drap in, kids. It's time to put our wits to the test and show these criminals who the real boss is. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those adventures we'll be telling our grandkids about. Grandkids, Morty. I can barely handle you two as my sidekicks. Let's focus on surviving this one first. No worries, Rick. We'll kick ass and take names. And maybe even have a little scandalous romance along the way. Oh, Summer, always thinking about the scandalous stuff. I like your style. Guys, do we have to make everything so dramatic and over the top? Can't we just solve the problem and get out of there? Morty, where's the fun in that? We're not just here to solve crimes. We're here to create chaos and have a damn good time doing it. You know what, Rick? I'm all for embracing the chaos. Let's do this. That's my girl. Get ready for a roller coaster of laughter, danger, and mind blowing scientific discoveries. This adventure is going to be legendary. I have a feeling I'll need therapy after this. Therapies for weaklings, Morty. You'll be just fine. Now, let's go kick some interdimensional ass. Alright Morty, listen up. I've got a crazy idea for our next adventure. We're gonna travel to the year 3020 and attend the Intergalactic Science Expo. Ah, uh, Rick, do we really need to go to a science expo? Can't we just stay home or something? Morty, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We're gonna see some mind-boggling inventions, meet intelligent beings from across the universe, and maybe even score some free interdimensional snacks. Okay, fine. But can we at least not get into trouble this time? No promises, Morty. Trouble seems to follow us everywhere we go. It's like a cosmic law or some shit. 
Great, so we're gonna be stuck in a never-ending cycle of chaos and danger. Just what I always wanted. Oh, lighten up, Morty. It'll be fun. Besides, what's life without a little bit of mayhem? I guess you have a point there, Rick. But can't we just have a normal adventure for once? Normal, Morty. I'm a dimension-hopping scientist who turns himself into a pickle for fun. Normal is not in my vocabulary. You know what, Rick? Let's just go. I can't resist the lure of intergalactic snacks. That's the spirit, Morty. Strap on your portal gun and let's get ready for a wild ride. I'm starting to regret this already. Trust me, Morty. You'll thank me later. Now, let's go make some scientifically improbable memories. I don't know how you come up with this stuff, Rick. It's like you have a PhD in craziness. PhD in craziness? Please, Morty. I'm the Professor Emeritus of all things insane. Great, now I'm stuck with a mad scientist as my grandfather. What a life. With your whining, Morty. We're about to embark on an epic adventure that'll make your head spin faster than a proton accelerator. I still can't believe I signed up for this. Well, Morty, sometimes you just gotta embrace the absurdity of it all. Now, let's go rewrite the laws of physics and blow some minds while we're at it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's do it, Rick. That's the spirit, Morty. Get ready for the most scientifically preposterous, hilariously disastrous adventure of our lives. Title, the Hilarious Hijinks of Monkey D. Luffy and Friends Episode 1, The Storefront Shenanigans A group of cartoon characters, including Monkey D. Luffy, sits on a chair in front of a storefront window with a sign that reads, Comical Sports Bloopers. They eagerly anticipate a hilarious show. Triggering Event Suddenly, a gust of wind blows open the store's front door, causing a pile of sports equipment to tumble out onto the street. The character's eyes widen with excitement. Development, progression. Luffy, notorious for his curious nature, springs into action. He grabs a basketball and attempts to bounce it off a nearby lamppost while simultaneously juggling oranges. The crowd watches in anticipation. Usopp, always the trickster, sneaks behind Luffy and replaces the basketball with a deflated one. As Luffy bounces it, the ball splatters him with orange juice, sending everyone into fits of laughter. Chopper, the lovable reindeer, joins the chaos by attempting to ride a unicycle while juggling baseballs. However, due to his clumsiness, he ends up crashing into a stack of soccer balls, causing them to roll all over the place. Nami, the expert navigator, seizes the opportunity to show off her skills. She challenges Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper to a soccer match using the rogue soccer balls. Chaos ensues as the mismatched teams struggle to score goals. Amidst the chaos, Sanji, the suave chef, stumbles upon a can of invisible spray. He sprays it on himself, believing it will make him irresistible to women. However, the spray malfunctions, turning him entirely invisible. The invisible Sanji inadvertently bumps into the referee, causing a chain reaction of chaos on the field. Players stumble and fall all over, hilariously missing the soccer ball and scoring own goals. Despite the mishaps and blunders, the team, now covered in orange juice and various sports equipment, collapses on the ground, laughing uncontrollably. The storefront owner watches the comedic spectacle through the window and realizes this impromptu show is the best promotion they could have hoped for. As the characters leave, still chuckling at their own antics, Luffy spots a poster for a comical sports bloopers competition. The mischievous glint in his eye suggests that their adventures in sports hilarity are far from over. End scene.
All right, Morty, buckle up for another mind-blowing adventure through the vast multiverse. Ah, oh, Rick, I'm not sure I can handle another one of your crazy escapades. Last time, we ended up in a parallel dimension where everyone had tentacles for arms. Tentacles for arms, Morty? That was child's play. Today, we're heading to a dimension where board games come to life. Board games? Really? Couldn't we just go to a normal dimension for once? Normal is boring, Morty. Now, listen up. In this dimension, there are invasive parasitic entities that take control of people's minds. Our mission is to stop them before they take over the whole universe. Great, more mind control. I'm starting to think this whole adventure thing was a mistake. Quit your whining, Morty. We're here to save the day, not have a therapy session. Now, grab that poker and follow my lead. Poker? How is a poker gonna help us? Trust me, Morty, these parasitic entities are vulnerable to fire, and what better way to light up their sorry asses than with a flaming poker? This is insane, Rick. We're risking our lives for what? Some stupid game? It's not just a game, Morty. It's about ensuring the survival of the entire multiverse. Plus, there's a cash prize if we win. I haven't paid the electric bill, and it's getting dark in here. All right, fine. Let's do this. But if I die, I'm haunting you for eternity. Ah, oh, you think death can stop me, Morty? I've faced intergalactic warlords, dimension-hopping assassins, and IRS auditors. You're nothing compared to them. Yeah, well, thanks for the vote of confidence, Rick. Confidence is for losers, Morty. Just follow my lead and try not to get too attached to any Siamese twins we encounter along the way. Siamese twins? Seriously? Are they gonna join our poker game too? Anything's possible, Morty. In this universe, the laws of probability don't apply. Now let's go kick some parasitic ass and maybe win some cash while we're at it. Fine, but I better get a cut of the winnings. Don't worry, Morty. I'll split it with you. After all, you're my sidekick, and what good is a sidekick without a little pocket money? Gee, thanks, Rick. I always wanted to be your glorified errand boy. You're welcome, Morty. Now let's show these mind-controlling parasites who's boss. They enter the dimension, ready to face the bizarre challenges that await them. Hey Morty, you ready for another mind-bending adventure? Jeez Rick, can't we take a break? I'm tired of almost dying every time we go out. Morty, life is about risks, and risking your life is what we do best. Intrigued, oh my, what is this strange green alien doll doing in the foreground? It's almost like it's watching us. Sarcastically, yeah Beth, I just have random alien dolls lying around. It's definitely not a listening device or anything. Whispering, Rick, aren't you the one who always says, assume nothing? Maybe it's important. Alien doll, in a creepy voice, Beth, I've been observing your secret desires. Taken aback, what? That's absurd. Careful mom, you know what kind of weird stuff goes on around here. Grinning, this could be interesting. I didn't know you had a thing for aliens, Beth. Blushing, shut up, Rick. It's nothing. Laughing, oh come on. It's time for you to explore your extraterrestrial attractions. Hesitant, fine, but only because it's for scientific purposes. Winking, of course, Beth, strictly scientific. Muttering, I can't believe I'm hearing this. So, Mr. Alien, how do you feel about a drink after your examination? Alien patient, in a deep voice, I would love it, Dr. Smith. But are you sure it's professional? Whispering. Professionalism went out the window when I started talking to you, Mr. Zizor. Interrupting. All right, let's not keep the lovebirds waiting. Morty, we have more important things to do. Thank God for that. Giggling. Oh Rick, you're just jealous that someone's showing interest in me. Smirking. Jealous? Nah, just waiting for the moment it all blows up in your face. Defiantly, watch me, Rick. 
I'll solve this extraterrestrial conundrum and still run a successful clinic. Can we just go already? This whole situation is making me uncomfortable. Strap in, Morty. It's time for an alien love story like you've never seen before. Confidently. This could be the beginning of a beautiful intergalactic romance. Alien patient, whispering, Dr. Smith, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Luckily, and that's exactly why I'm tagging along. This will be legendary. Burps, Morty, I've come up with an experiment that's sure to blow the minds of the entire multiverse. Oh, what is it this time, Rick? Can't we have one normal day for once? Normal, Morty, normal is for boring people. We're scientists, we crave chaos and controversy. Sarcastically, yeah, because creating chaos is so productive, Grandpa. Oh, leave your father alone, Summer. At least he's doing something with his life. Thank you. Beth, now, listen up, I've invented a new device that can swap consciousness between two individuals. Wait, you mean, like, mind swapping? Bingo, Morty, and in order to test its full potential, we're going to swap the minds of two complete strangers for 24 hours. Are you serious? That's insane. Insane or not, it sounds pretty intriguing. Count me in, Rick. I don't know, Rick. What if something goes wrong? Morty, when has something not gone wrong in our adventures? Just trust me on this. Scene, Love is Blind Soul, a trendy dating show. Contestant 1, so, you're telling me I'm gonna be stuck with a total stranger for a whole day? Contestant 2, yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? But hey, if it helps us find true love, why not? Teleporting in. Alright, contestants, prepare to have your reality flipped upside down. Scene, Mind swapping commences. Contestant 1, now in Contestant 2's body. Whoa, this is wild. I've never felt so disconnected from myself. Contestant 2, now in Contestant 1's body. Think about it. I never realized how much I took my own body for granted. Scene, chaos ensues as the swapped contestants navigate their newfound bodies. Happy. Look at him go, Morty. True science in action. Groaning. This is getting out of hand, Rick. We need to find a way to reverse the swap. Scene, frantic moments of confusion and hilarity. Contestant 1, in Contestant 2's body. I can't believe I signed up for this. This is like a bad reality show on steroids. Contestant 2, in Contestant 1's body. Hey, at least we're experiencing something unique. Who knows, we might actually learn something from this. Scene, the 24-hour mark approaches. Alright, time to switch them back. Finally, I can't take any more of this madness. Scene. Mind swapping reversed, contestants back to normal. Contestant 1. Wow, that was an experience I'll never forget. Thanks, Rick. Contestant 2. Yeah, as crazy as it was, it kinda made me appreciate who I am. I guess love truly is blind. Chuckles, love, who said anything about love? This was all in the name of science and entertainment. Teen, laughter fills the room as the family reflects on their latest adventure. You know, as bizarre as it was, I kinda had fun. Can we do something like this again, Rick? Oh no, not another mind-swapping experiment, please. Smirks. We'll see, Beth. We'll see. End scene. Size. Another day, another box to pack. I never thought I'd end up in a warehouse, filling boxes with random products. 
My life is just great. Bursts into the warehouse. Hey, Jerry, need some help there? Oh, of course. The great Rick Sanchez is here to save the day. Why don't you go find another dimension to mess with? Laughs. Oh, Jerry, always so bitter. Just thought I could lend a hand and make this mundane task a bit more interesting. Enters the warehouse. Hey, Rick, what are you guys doing here? Just giving Jerry a taste of the real world, Morty. You know, a little labor never hurt anyone. Mumbling, except me, apparently. Enters, Jerry, I thought you might need some encouragement. Remember, this is just temporary. You'll find something better soon. Temporary? It's been months, Beth. Months of packing boxes like a mindless drone. How am I supposed to feel encouraged? Enters, Jerry, have you tried medication? It might help with your constant whining. Medication? What do I look like, a lab rat? Ends Jerry a blister pack. Take these, Jerry. They'll help you see the world in a new light, or at least numb your brain a bit. Reads the label, existence eraser pills. Are you serious, Rick? Hey, they work for me. Take him or leave him. Beth watches nervously as Jerry reluctantly takes the pills and swallows them. Suddenly upbeat. Wow, everything is so colorful. And the boxes, they're like little presents waiting to be opened. Laughs, I think those pills might be working a bit too well, Rick. Hey, just a side effect. It'll wear off eventually. Sings, I'm the box king, the ruler of cardboard. I shall pack with precision and grace. Well, at least he's not complaining anymore. I guess this is an improvement, in a strange, twisted way. Address is a box. To Mrs. Wilson, 123 Main Street, 555-6789. Enjoy your deluxe cheese grater, ma'am. It's on sale for only $9.99. Smirks, look at him go. Who knew packing boxes could be so inspiring? Sometimes, Rick, I really don't understand you. Whispering to a box, hang in there, little buddy. We'll get you to your new home safe and sound. Smiling. You know what, Rick? Maybe this whole warehouse gig isn't so bad after all. Grinning. Well, well, Beth. Looks like my brilliant plan is working. Dances around the warehouse. I'm Jerry the Box Whisperer. Fear me, cardboard. Laughs. Now this is a sight I never thought I'd see. Chuckles. Yeah, it's definitely a one-of-a-kind experience. Singing. I'm Jerry the Box Whisperer, packing boxes with glee. Who needs a purpose when you have cardboard destiny? The warehouse echoes with laughter as Jerry continues his newfound calling as the Box Whisperer. Hey Morty, check out this new invention I made. It's a portal gun that can take us to any dimension with hilarious consequences. Oh, Rick, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Last time we used the portal gun, we ended up in a dimension filled with talking bananas. Morty, you worry too much. That dimension was full of comedy gold. Plus, I've added a new feature that ensures we won't run into any more fruit-related mishaps. Rick, can you please focus on something other than your crazy gadgets for once? Jerry just got fired from his job and he's really depressed. Oh, Jerry, who cares? He's always complaining about something. Let him wallow in his own misery. Rick, that's not very compassionate. Maybe we should try to help him out? Morty's right. Jerry needs our support right now. Let's go see if we can cheer him up. Oh, I can't believe I lost my job. How am I supposed to provide for my family now? Jerry, it's going to be okay. We're here for you. Easy for you to say. You still have your career and your fancy gadgets. Oh, you think my gadgets are so great, huh? Well, why don't you come on an adventure with me and Morty? I guarantee it'll take your mind off things. Fine, just as long as there are no talking fruits involved. No promises, Jerry, 
But trust me, you'll thank me later. I highly doubt that. Ordi, grab the portal gun. We're about to take Jerry on the adventure of a lifetime. I have a bad feeling about this, Rick. Relax, Morty. It's gonna be a bumpy ride, but it'll be worth it. Adventure awaits. Can I at least bring snacks? I'm gonna need some emotional support food. Of course, Jerry. We'll make sure you have all the snacks you need. Great, maybe this adventure won't be so bad after all. Alright, everyone brace yourselves. We're about to enter a dimension filled with clowns. Clowns? Are you kidding me? I told you we should have listened to my instincts, Rick. Oh, come on Morty. It's just a little clown humor. What could go wrong? Famous last words, Rick. Famous last words. Size. Another day in this godforsaken warehouse. Packing boxes. Joy. Mumbling. Let's see, this one is a Bluetooth speaker. Addressed to Sarah Johnson, 123 Main Street. Checks phone. Oh great, she left a one-star review. Doesn't connect to any device. Waste of money. Thanks, Sarah. Continues packing, and here we have a set of cookware. Going to Samantha Brown, 456 Elm Avenue. Groans. Samantha ordered the same cookware last week and returned it. She left a nasty comment too. Cheap quality, everything burned. Don't waste your money. Picks up a bottle. Ah, medication time. Just what I need to numb the pain of this mind-numbing job. Reads label. Antidepressant. Take one pill daily to keep existential crises at bay. How poetic. Takes pill. Here's to pharmaceuticals saving my sanity. Continues packing. Okay, next is a set of gardening tools. Going to James Thompson, 789 Oak Lane. Checks weight. Great, this one's heavy. Just what my fragile soul needs right now. Reads description. Premium, durable garden tools for the avid green thumb. Yeah, James is just gonna lose them in his shed. Mutters. Life is a never-ending cycle of disappointment and unfulfilled dreams. Picks up another package. Ooh, what do we have here? A deluxe massage chair. Going to Richard Palmer, 321 Pine Street. Checks price, $5,000. Who spends five grand on a chair? Must be nice, Richard. Must be nice. Size, and of course, Richard left a glowing review. Best purchase I ever made. Feels like I'm floating on a cloud. Lucky bastard. Packs more boxes. Can't wait to get home, watch some TV, and forget that I exist. Holds up a smaller package. Oh look, a children's toy. Going to Rebecca Collins, 567 Maple Avenue. Snickers. Oh, I bet Rebecca's gonna love this. Her address is the same as her ex-boyfriend's. Grumbles. What's the point, anyway? Just packing meaningless items for people who won't remember my existence tomorrow. Takes another pill. Good thing I have my little helpers to get me through this miserable existence. Continues packing. You know, maybe I should start an online therapy session for depressed warehouse workers. Jerry's counseling for the soul. Sarcastically. Hey, at least I'd have one customer. Packs the last box. Finally, the end of this soul-sucking day. I'll clock out, go home, and ponder the meaninglessness of my existence in the comfort of my own bed. Laughs bitterly. Oh, who am I kidding? The meaning is packing freaking boxes. That's my purpose in life. Jerry, professional box packer. It has a nice ring to it.
Oh, can you believe it, Morty? I got fired from my job. Now I'm stuck packing these stupid Amazon boxes. Jeez, Jerry, that sucks. But hey, at least you're employed, right? Employed? More like forever trapped in this mind-numbing cycle of packing and sorting. It's soul-crushing. Well, maybe you could find some joy in describing the products. Pretend you're a scientist collecting data or something. Size. Fine. I guess I could give it a shot. Look at this box. We got a deluxe toilet plunger here. It's addressed to Mr. John Johnson on 123 Fake Street, with a phone number that ends with 666. Real classy. Laughs, and what are the reviews saying? Any positive vibes? Let's see. The best plunger money can buy. Unclogged my toilet in seconds. That's a 5-star review right there. Oh, and here's a comment saying, this plunger changed my life. Thank you, Amazon. Wow, Jerry, you're really getting into it. What else we got? Alright, next up we've got a 10-pound bag of cat litter for Mrs. Whiskers. It says here that it's super absorbent and odor-free. Guess Mrs. Whiskers likes to poop in style. Laughs, I can't believe you're actually enjoying this. What's the price on that litter? It's $19.99. And hey, here's an interesting comment. This litter is the bomb. My cat uses it as a bed because it's so comfortable. People really love their cat litter, huh? You have no idea, Morty. But you know what? In this sea of mundane, I'm finding a glimmer of purpose. I'm the guardian of people's toilet plungers and cat litter. And look at you, embracing this new responsibility with such enthusiasm. I'm proud of you, Jerry. Thanks, Morty. Maybe this job isn't so bad after all. Pass me those Prozac pills, will ya? I think I'm starting to feel a little too optimistic. Hands over the pills, just don't overdose on positivity, Jerry. We still need you around here. Don't worry, Morty. I'll keep my existential crises in check. Now, let's conquer these Amazon boxes, one packed item at a time. Hey Morty, let's go on a wild adventure to the clown planet. Aw, oh, Rick, isn't that place a little, you know, creepy? Aw, oh, Morty, it's just a planet full of clowns. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words, Rick. But okay, let's do it. Clowns dancing in the streets of Clown Planet. Look at those clowns, Morty. They seem to be having a good time. Yeah, until they start squirting water in our faces or something. Clown 1, welcome, Earthlings. It's time for the Great Clown Kiss. Um, what's the Great Clown Kiss? Clown 2, it's a tradition where two clowns kiss each other's foreheads for good luck. Well, I've kissed weirder things in my time. Let's do it. Rick and Morty dressed up as clowns, awkwardly kiss each other's foreheads. I can't believe I just kissed you, Rick. Relax, Morty, it's all for the sake of intergalactic diplomacy. Clown graffiti appears on a nearby wall. Whoa, Rick! Look at that graffiti! It's a clown Mona Lisa, Morty. That's some impressive art right there. I guess even clowns appreciate fine culture. Time to recreate some movie kisses, Morty. Seriously, Rick? Movie kisses? Isn't this getting a bit weird? Morty, have you ever seen clowns trying to reenact Gone with the Wind? It's oh so entertaining. Morty reluctantly starts drawing clowns reenacting famous movie kisses. Screenwriter, cut. That's a wrap on the Clown Planet episode, folks. Art, that was some mind-bending clown adventure we just had. Art, it was, Rick. I didn't think I'd ever witness such absurdity. That's the beauty of science, Mart. It takes us to places we never thought possible. They walk off into the sunset, leaving a trail of confetti behind.
depressed. Ah, I can't believe I got fired. Now I'm stuck here, packing boxes in this godforsaken warehouse. Complaining. Seriously, Morty, this is the worst. I can't believe I have to spend my days surrounded by boxes and more boxes. Existential crisis, what's the point of it all? Packing these boxes, day in and day out. Is this my purpose in life? I feel so empty. Taking medications, great, another pill to numb the pain. How many of these am I supposed to take again? I can't even keep track anymore. Describing products, alright, let's see what we have here. Box number 4567, it's a toaster oven. For Mrs. Johnson, 123 Main Street, phone number 555-7890. Price of the item, $49.99, huh? Maybe I should get myself one of these. Gotta upgrade my sad excuse for a kitchen. Product description. Perfect for all your toasting needs, this toaster oven will revolutionize your breakfast routine. Yeah, sure, like that's gonna solve all my problems. Average star reviews. Let's check the reviews. 5 stars, works like a charm. Yeah, right. They're probably paid actors or something. Customer comments. Bought this for my daughter, she loves it. Well, good for your daughter, buddy. I hope she's having a fantastic life toasting things in her fancy oven. Depressed. You know what, Morty? I'm just a box packing loser. I'll never amount to anything. I'm stuck in this endless cycle of monotony. Taking medications, another pill down the hatch. Will this ever get any better? I highly doubt it. Describing products, moving on to box number 7891. It's a blender. Addressed to Mr. Davidson, 456 Oak Avenue, phone number 555-1234. Price of the item, $79.99. Maybe this blender can mix up a little excitement in my life. Doubtful, but a guy can dream. Product description. Powerful and efficient, this blender will make all your smoothie dreams come true. Yeah, right. My dreams are way beyond the reach of a blender. Average star reviews. Let's see what the internet has to say. Four stars, great for making smoothies. Wow, exciting. How thrilling. Customer comments best blender I've ever owned. Well, aren't you just living the high life, Mr. Davidson? Bet you have it all figured out. Depressed. I'm trapped in this warehouse, packing these boxes, while everyone else is out there living their lives. It's not fair, Morty. It's just not fair. Taking medications. Another pill to make me forget how miserable my life has become. What a joy. Describing products. Alright, box hash 1234. It's a curling iron. Addressed to Mrs. Jenkins, 789 Elm Street, phone number 555-5678. Price of the item, $29.99. I could use a curling iron, you know. Maybe it'll give me a new look, a fresh start. Product description. Get the perfect curls with this state-of-the-art curling iron. Yeah, because perfect curls are gonna solve all my problems. Sure, why not? Average star reviews. Let's see what the happy customers have to say. Three stars, it gets the job done. Well, at least it gets a job done, unlike me. Customer comments. My hair has never looked better. Great, Mrs. Jenkins, good for you. I hope your hair brings you all the happiness in the world. Depressed, how did I end up here? Packing boxes, contemplating the meaning of life. Is this what it's come to? Taking medications. Another pill to keep my mind from spiraling into a black hole. It's just one big blur now. Complaining. Morty, this is the life I'm living now. A sad existence surrounded by boxes and my own despair. Isn't it great?
Hey Morty, I've got a brilliant idea for our next adventure. Let's dive into the world of online shopping and explore the dark secrets of customer reviews. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? I mean, online shopping isn't exactly the most thrilling thing to do. Morty, trust me, this is gonna be mind-blowing. We'll uncover scandals, expose fake reviews, and maybe even find some hidden treasure in the process. All right, if you say so, Rick. But let's just hope we don't end up getting sucked into some virtual reality shopping nightmare. Size. Another day, another box to pack. My life has become a never-ending cycle of mundane tasks. Hey, Jerry, feeling down, huh? Well, how about joining us on a little adventure to spice things up? Adventure? I can't even handle packing boxes properly, Rick. I doubt I'd be of any use to you. Come on, Jerry. We all have our low points. Trust me, it'll take your mind off all this packing madness. Fine, whatever. I guess it couldn't hurt to get out of this depressing warehouse for a while. But I swear, if anything goes wrong, it's all on you guys. Excellent. Now let's grab those phones and start exploring the fascinating world of online shopping. Wait, why do we need two phones, Rick? One for actual shopping, and one for undercover investigations, Morty. We need to be sneaky and efficient, you know? Mumbling, I can't believe my life has come to this. Packing boxes and eavesdropping on people's online shopping habits. Hey, Jerry, I noticed you're taking some medication. Is everything okay? Oh, these? Just some anti-anxiety pills to help me cope with the soul-crushing reality of my situation. Avoiding life's problems with pills, huh? Seems legit. Let's just hope they don't interfere with our adventure. Alright, Rick, I've got the first item here. It's a portable blender for someone named Karen, 123 Fake Street, with a phone number I probably shouldn't read out loud. Size, Karen, huh? I wonder if she's as dissatisfied with her life choices as I am. Jerry, stop being so pessimistic. We're on a mission to discover the hidden truth behind these online reviews focus. Alright, let's see, the blender has a 4-star rating, mostly positive comments, and costs $39.99. Quite the bargain. Great, now I get to stare at blenders all day while Karen gets to enjoy her healthy smoothies. Life is just a big joke, isn't it? Jerry, quit whining and start packing. We've got a long list of products to go through, and your existential crisis isn't helping. You're right, Rick. I'll just keep packing and pretending my life isn't slowly spiraling into oblivion. Come on, Jerry, let's turn this packing session into a bonding experience. Who knows, maybe we'll even find something exciting along the way. Sarcastically, oh, sure, Morty. Maybe we'll stumble upon the meaning of life amidst all these cardboard boxes. You never know, Jerry. Adventure awaits, even in the most unexpected places. Now pack those boxes like your life depends